The alarm clock had been ringing for some time. Hey. Get up or you'll be late. Mom was sitting on my bed and trying to wake me up. I covered myself with a blanket over my head. You can go now, I'm getting up. I told mom to leave. Don't think that I'll believe in your fairy tales, if you don't get up right now, I'll whip you. Pulling off part of the blanket from me, she shouted. Stop sleeping already. He got up quickly. Stop. Don't pull. I shouted. I'm not wearing anything. Hey. She said in surprise. Are you sleeping naked? I immediately threw a pillow at her. None of your business. Get out. After a while, we were already sitting at the table and having breakfast. Zheng Lan, you're a high school student now. Well, yes, and what? Your dad promised to come over today to celebrate your transition, right? Yeah. I replied dryly, but in my mind I was happy. He didn't forget to celebrate my transition. Mom sighed heavily and added. He finally agreed to come home. I decided not to voice my thoughts. However, it's hard to believe, but I didn't even think about celebrating my transition. But back to the point, the only reason my father broke up with her was because she was too demanding. In the old days, dad was a man known in the martial arts world as a Tyrannosaurus Rex. But she asked too much of him, and in 10 years she made him as thin as a stick. She's just a devil. I'm afraid that no man in the world would dare to live with her except me. Her own son. Between my thoughts, I gathered myself and was already leaving the house. That's it. I'm going to school. I said loudly, and was about to go, when suddenly. Stop. Wait, Zhen Lan, could you do mommy a little favor? What? I turned around. Don't come tonight, stay at the nearest hotel, okay? Your father and I have a couple of important things to settle. Oh, shit. Be careful on the road. A little away from the house, I added. I'm not a fool, what are you going to do that I don't know? I came back to celebrate with my father, and what should I do now if you kick me out? Suddenly, I heard a devilish voice from behind me. Zheng Lan, come back here and repeat what you just said if you have the courage. I continued to walk calmly. Ah. Did she hear me? I need to hurry, otherwise this old woman will explode. An old woman? Hey you. Rude. I'll whip you. You're tired of living, aren't you? Haha. <laughs> she heard me again. I'm late, if you want to fight, then go and beat your father. With that, I quickened my pace. It was dangerous. It was dangerous, but fortunately I managed to escape quickly, otherwise I would have been already dead. Anyway, now I can go to school. A lascivious grin stretched across my face. Class president with big tits. Student council president with big tits. A teacher with big tits. My wonderful school life begins. Homeroom teacher with big tits. A transferred student with big tits. Famous and rich girl with big tits. There are so many cute girls here. Ha ha ha. Yes. I like. A blinding flash of light is coming from the school. A. What? Turning around, I saw a huge meteorite that was approaching me. Wait. No. I haven't even gone to school yet. I don't want to die here. However, a moment later, a huge explosion hit half of the city. Meanwhile, in the nest of ants, everything was calm, everyone was doing their own thing, and their duties. And in this incredible atmosphere, I appear. Straight from an ant's egg. Now I'm an ant. I lie on a piece of paper and watch how the ants workers drag different food into the anthill. There's nothing to do. Boring. Lunchtime. Having picked up a piece of food from one of the workers, I start eating. I was reborn into this world a week ago, but I haven't done anything yet. It's time to start living, I thought, getting off the leaf. Turning to the ant guard, I said. I'm going to take a walk for a while. Call the guards. It's good to be the ant king. While walking, I noticed several beetles accumulated under a tree. And who is this? Walking up to one of them, I held out the rest of my food. Do you want to? He began to eat it greedily. What do you think? Delicious? Will you accompany me? And I will feed you in return. What? Do you want more? Hmm. I thought about it. If I bring him to the anthill, he will surely be eaten. It looks like I'll have to intercept the worker ants already. Said Dunn. Approaching the workers, I began to say. Hey. There's no need to drag all this. Put it here and rest. The workers on my command put down the food and went to rest. I fed my pet. Eat it. You're my servant now. Climbing on this beetle, I commanded. Come on. Zheng Meng. Let's conquer the world. Suddenly, I noticed one of the worker ants. He was clearly panicking. What's wrong with this ant? Walking up to him, I patted him on the shoulder. 
Little ant, what happened to you? Tell me. The ant seemed to be crying. The fruit that was so hard to find suddenly disappeared on the way back. Oh hoy. I thought. It's my fault. What to do? Problem. He. You probably already took them, just forgot. I don't believe it myself. Really? The worker asked hopefully. Sure. Why don't you take a walk with me? Today there is no need to work anymore. Good. He replied calming down. You see? I'm good to you, so stop crying. Meanwhile, a battle was going on not far away in the forest. Big Mantis level 1st grade 7th. A magical beast. Fought with two girls. Kai Yutong. Age 14. Level 1. 3rd grade. Fei Lily. Age 12 years. A priest of the first level. A healer of the first level. Brandishing her sword, Yudin said. Lily, let's do it together. We will break through with noise. Got it. Lily answered and began to charge the staff with energy. Meanwhile, Yutong was distracting the mantis and when Lily was ready to strike, she jumped back. The mantis noticed the setup late. Do you want to dodge? It's too late. The charge of energy hit him directly. Leaving Lily. The girl commanded. Faster. Naturally, the mantis survived this attack, but the girls managed to escape. Walking through the forest, Yudin consulted the map. It's here somewhere. Yudin we haven't come yet? Maybe we should ask someone? Ask someone? It's better to go straight to the Valley of Medicines. Suddenly Yudin heard something. And? There is someone there. Lily, hide. A magical beast? I'm not sure yet, but the sound is getting closer. Looking behind a bush, their fear was immediately dispelled. This is. Ugh. Ants. I was riding on my faithful servant, accompanied by workers and soldiers. The weather is beautiful today, let's go on a trip to picturesque places. Hey. Why am I flying? Grabbing me, Yudin said. It's a huge ant, and it can talk. It's true. I began to carry out diplomacy. Girl, put me on the ground, and then I, Mr. Ant, will play with you. She just grinned. Funny ant. He's so small, but he already considers himself Mr. Ant. I got a little angry. These are not very polite words to say in the presence of a gentleman. Ant, you talk too much. And that's not your concern anymore, dear. Even an ant has its quirks. I moved on to threats. If you weren't a girl, I would. But they didn't let me finish. She instantly took out her sword and stuck it into the ground right next to my subjects. Yes? What would you do? Go on. E. I thought for a moment. She's got a real sword there. Haha. <laughs> Madam. I'm just fooling around. What can such a cute ant do? Damn. Where is my dignity? She kept mocking. Oh. Really? Has your expression changed so quickly? Do you want to play with me? Precisely. She clearly remembered. Taking a map out of her bag, she showed it to me. Do you know this place? It is marked on the map with a cross. Looking at the map, I was convinced. It's near the queen's main anthill. He. She asked for it, not my problem. Waving my paw, I pointed in the direction. It's over that slope. Over that slope? Excellent. You helped us, I will show mercy and let you go. With these words, she lowered me straight onto my riding pet and then turned to a friend. Lily, stop playing with them. I found out where the Valley of Medicines is. We have to get back to school before dark. Hearing this, I spurred the beetle. Wait. I shouted. Which school? Do you have a school here? Madam, take your time. Get down, please, wait. Little ant what's wrong? We need to come up with something quickly. Oh. I'm afraid you'll get lost. That's why I decided to guide you. Really? Thank you. Haha. <laughs> You're welcome. My thoughts were filled. A school in a fairy tale world? I'm really surprised. We need to find out as much as possible. Wow. What a beautiful place. A vast valley stretches out in front of us. Surrounded by a forest with mountains, it looked really exciting. Is this the legendary valley of medicines teeming with herbs? Wow. Medicinal herbs are everywhere. And there are even more herbs in that forest. See Yudin, the fruit of the second level. Watching all this, I didn't understand why such a noise. It's just rot. Addressing the girls. Hey, Miss Yutong, I need to tell you something. What is it, little ant? It's very dangerous here. You'd better stay away from this forest. Dangerous? The girl was surprised. Are there magical beasts in this forest? Waving my head, I said. This forest is located next to the main nest of the ant queen. Therefore, food-seeking ants can easily mistake you for food. The girl was even more surprised. 
What is the ant queen? Is an ant hill the main nest? I have no idea what you're talking about. I began to explain. Ants have four classes. These are queen ants, king ants, worker ants, and soldier ants. The queen of ants is the most important in the nest. As for the main nest. This is the territory of the queen of ants. The kings live in four sub-nests outside the valley to protect the main nest. Hmm. And what kind of ant do you belong to? I am the king of ants. The ant king is second in importance, so I'm better than the others. Oh, so you're the king? I am a knight of the first level of the third class, I am not afraid of some ants in the forest. This time I was surprised. What is a knight of the third class of the first level? Is it powerful? Ah, uh, I forgot, how can a bug like you know such things as specialties or level? Listen. Combat specialties can be divided into two. Soldiers who use magic power to improve themselves, and magicians who can control the elements. There are also many professions, such as healer, tailor, blacksmith. Let's talk about levels, there are 10 levels in total, each level has 10 classes. In total, 100 classes. Hmm. I thought about it, but decided to ask anyway. You say you're first level third grade? Madam, at what level am I? You? The girl asked in surprise, and added with a grin. Null. All my confidence seemed to be blown away. She's only level 1 herself, and she's already grinning. Wait till you see my real strength. Meanwhile, Lily gathered a bunch of herbs. I'm rich. Haha, <laughs> how many medicinal herbs? With all these herbs, we will be able to make enough medicines. Of course. Lily confirmed. I can. I looked at the mountain of herbs and fruits in amazement. How will you carry all this? Hee <laughs> hee. As for that, we have a spatial bag. As long as magic is used, it can store a large number of things. Isn't that convenient? And really, very convenient. Suddenly a sound interrupted our thoughts. The sound of trampling. It was a bad sound. Damn. I gave the order. Go ahead. The army of food seekers from the main nest is coming. Get on the rock faster. The girls were surprised. What? An army of food seekers? Maybe a big pile of ants? Meanwhile, my entire army has climbed onto the stone. Faster, faster. Lift me up. Phew, we had time. They were getting closer. The sought youth ant. A fifth grade magical beast. Come on Lily. There are also magical beasts among these ants. A fight broke out. Lily, get out your staff. We are not rivals to these ants, there are too many of them. I'll hold them off, and you take the herbs and leave. After loading her staff, Lily fired. Catch the flash drive. I'll be waiting for you on the hill. She ran away. Yudin was left alone against an entire army. For a while she fought back, but then she was knocked to the ground, a bunch of ants crawled on her, and was about to eat. Watching this, I was a little confused. Ahem. I have no choice. It's time for a real hero. Descending from the stone, I found a piece of stick, and taking it, I shouted loudly. Hey you. Who allowed you to get food on my territory? Get out of here. Suddenly, the whole heart of ant warriors turned on me. What did you say? Say that again. Damn. I obviously chose the wrong scenario. A huge ant bigger than me ten times looked straight into my eyes. What's gone quiet? Let's say it again. Clearing my throat, I decided to turn on diplomacy. Ahem. Could you give me this man? What if it doesn't? Are you going to fight me here and now or what? Eh? What are you? Mister. I was born just a week ago. How can I beat you? And you're so strong, I think you're the best fighter in the main nest, right? Haha. <laughs> I like you. There's something about you. Moving closer to him, I lowered my voice so that only he could hear. Actually, I have to tell you a secret. Oh. And what is it? Sexy caterpillars outside the valley, you know about them? He waved his head in the affirmative. Of course, and? They have recently appeared in the valley. Devoured a lot of trees. Oh. It's true? Then why didn't you eat them and leave them to me? Mister. I'm just a baby, not big enough to eat a caterpillar yet. Haha. <laughs> ha. Very good. Tell me, where can I find them? I'll get rid of them for you. They are located in the south of the forest. Haha. <laughs> Okay, you gave me the information so I'll hand this person over to you. Thank you mister. Servants. He commanded. Go ahead. The caterpillars are waiting. And the horde of ants moved to the south. Have a nice feast, gentlemen. I shouted to them on the road. Ugh. Easy. I said when they were far enough away. Just a little leader of the army of food seekers. I'm the ant king. You will be my first meal when I grow up. Hey. Wake up. 
The ants have escaped. Huh? Did you really pass out? Wake up and sing. I said, pushing her eyelids apart. Hey. Where are your pupils? Grabbing me, she almost tearfully said. Dirty ant, what are you doing? Hey, hey. It hurts. I saved you. And this is your gratitude? No shame or conscience. In short, I saved you, and I will not play nobility, show respect. What are you? And how did you save me? Don't forget. I am the Ant King, I can firmly wave my hand to make them go away. Hmm, then why were you afraid of them? Ahem. Clearing my throat, I said. These are minor details that can be overlooked. How could she possibly be so smart? Okay, it's my fault. I shouldn't have treated you like that. Sorry. That would be right away. I said with my head held high. The girl brought me back to earth and said. I have to go, take care of yourself. Bye, maybe we'll see each other again. But I was in no hurry to let her go. We followed her and I hummed happily. School. 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 Hey little ant, I'm going back to school, why are you still following me? I'm afraid there will be other dangers, so I will accompany you. So we came to the clearing where Lily was waiting. Yudin, I'm here. After a while we were already in the city. Hey enough. We are already in the city, go back to the forest. Haha. <laughs> I'm not coming back anymore. And you can't do anything to me. The girl blushed. Bastard, I'll kill him. Excellent. She said. You can go wherever you want, just don't follow me anymore. I'm not going to support you. I answered it. Stupid, when did I say that you have to support me? I'm not a stray dog, I don't need you to feel sorry for me. Get lost. Don't get bored. So after exchanging pleasantries, we parted. Meanwhile, in the estate where Yutong lived, the maid was cleaning. Sweeping the street, she suddenly stopped. She spoke aloud. What time is it? She's not even back yet. The sun was already setting when the girls returned home. Yudin kept looking around. A little ant? She asked. But when I turned around, I didn't see anything. Is he not following us? Really? Do you miss him? Lily asked. Let's go back and find him. Confused, Yudin replied. No way. I'm just afraid he's followed us again. If he hadn't saved me in Medicine Valley, I wouldn't have given a damn about him at all. They had just reached Yutong's house when suddenly a maid came around the corner. The Valley of Medicines? She asked. Have you been to the Ridge of a Hundred Worms? Uttering from surprise, Yudin asked. Lin Fei, why are you here? Didn't I tell you not to go there? Yudin folded her hands guiltily. Yesterday, the contract with the ball broke again, and the ball was badly damaged, so I was looking for herbs to make medicinal potions for Lily. This is not a reason to enter the spine of worms. Without a master and mistress, you become more and more capricious. And Lin Fei, it's not Yu Tong's fault. Lily said, peeking around the corner. Actually, it's me who wants to take the test and become a second level healer, so I ask her to go there with me and find some herbs. Oh? It's true? Then I'll forgive you this time. Don't ever go to the Ridge of Worms again, understand? Okay, Yudin replied. And when the maid left, she hugged Lily. Thank you, you're the best. At the same time, my small army and I were walking through the doorways. I was talking out loud. It's okay, I'll find a school without you. And with my talent and intelligence, I will definitely succeed in this world. Suddenly I noticed a girl in a hood hiding right in this alley. Oh yeah. And here are the beauties of the local world. Beautiful. Wait, can I have a word with you? I said it, but they ignored me, coming out from behind the corners, the girl crossed the fence and disappeared. Girl. Wait for me. Looking around the corner, I continued to talk. Miss, could you tell me the way to the nearest school? What? Where is she? After walking along the fence, I could not figure out where she had disappeared. But the solution found itself, I noticed the inscription. Dragon Seal School. Oh, that's what you need. I was standing at the gate of the school that had Dragon Seal School written on it and was full of anticipation. Haha. <laughs> I never thought I'd find it so quickly. I'm a real genius. Of course, the name of the school did not bother me, who needs it at all. I was still burning with what I hadn't had time to feel in my previous life. Lovely girls. I'm coming. I shouted, jumping on the window to inspect the audience. As soon as I managed to look inside, all I saw was an empty classroom. Naturally, I immediately felt offended. Damn. How can this be? It was difficult for me to hold back tears. Continuing to walk around the school, I no longer believed in anything and just wandered senselessly. School without girls is a real hell. I don't want to stay here another second. Zheng Meng, let's go home. 
I turned to my friend. We didn't even have time to go beyond the fence as I almost ran into a man. He looked like an alcoholic, but the expression on his face gave me another idea. A worried old man is looking at something, I urgently need to check. As soon as I climbed on the fence, which the old man was holding onto, my eyes almost popped out of their sockets. I saw a young girl who was probably training, because the sound she was making clearly hinted at this. She was wearing a blue shirt that was barely restrained by a rope, classic trousers, as well as an oddly shaped outer garment that covered only her arms and neck. Her hair was purple in color, as well as a patch over her right eye. Haha. <laughs> Baldas. At the same time, I said and the old man who was drooling. After that, I yelled even louder. Wow, a real beauty. And grandfather immediately paid attention to me. I just wanted to run towards my betrothed, but this old bastard prevented me by grabbing me with his lustful hands and closing my mouth. You're a stinky bug. What are you doing? Do you want me to get killed? He told me hiding from the girl's gaze. I was able to free myself a little from my grandfather's grip and say. What do you want? Let me go. Preoccupied. Did you call me preoccupied? I am the principal of this school. He answered me with an indignant face. Hearing his words, I immediately decided to take the bull by the horns and not lose my chance. Oh, director? I apologize for what I said. I was too excited. I said, but my words were like peas against a wall. The director paid attention only to the fact that the girl was missing and immediately began to pour accusations on me. It's all because of you, little bug. Well, I decided to try to keep a kind tone after all. She's already gone. And actually I'm not a bug. After my words, the director looked at me for a while. Then I looked again. He almost made a hole in me with his gaze, but his cry saved me. Does the bug speak a human language? My face. Or rather, my muzzle or whatever the ant has. In general, my face needed to be seen. Did you just realize that? Some stupid old man. Those girls weren't so surprised. I thought, then I looked at the sunset in the distance and started talking. Is it rare? When do magical beasts speak? To which I received an answer. As far as I know, a magical beast must be at least level 7 to speak human language. A magical beast that can speak without reaching the first level? You may be the only one on the whole continent. His words surprised me, because I still haven't fully understood the entire hierarchy of magical beasts of this world. Oh. Does that make me a super genius? I decided to ask and received a positive response from the pervert director, and then a counter question. By the way, why are you here? Where is your master? To which I immediately replied. The owner? I don't have one. I had just come out of the woods and was just walking back. I said, making the most sad and tired face. Why don't you stay here? I'll find you a place to live. Suggested by the director. Oh. That's very nice of you, director. Will you let me study here? I asked and got not an answer, but a question that made me as confused as possible. Why should a beetle study? After all, how can you ask this, I even know how to speak, but I decided not to be rude and calmly answer. Of course I want to get knowledge. To become a better ant. Grandfather's reaction was as strong as possible. His tears flowed like a stream and through his tears he spoke. So small, and such big goals. Say. What would you like to learn? I'll arrange it. Finally, I was able to convince him. Raising my hands in a gesture of supplication, I said. I don't care what to study, please enroll me in a class with the most beautiful girls. Apparently I hit the nail on the head because the director immediately got a blush on his cheeks. Haha. <laughs> I understand you, we are similar in this. Don't worry, I'll give you what you want. He said, which made me blush, too. Wow. Thank you very much, Mr. Director. I answered, confused. Grandpa turned his back to me and pointed his finger at himself. I'll take you to where you're staying, we'll fly. He said and I was a little surprised. Shall we fly? But I decided to ask my question right away. Can I take my friends? The director was a little surprised, but immediately answered. Sure. Where are your friends? Immediately after his question, I turned around and looked down where the bratba was waiting for me, after which I said loudly. Hey. Did you guys hear him? Get up. Now we can go. The director, seeing the number of my friends, was not that surprised, he simply had no words. Faster. Faster. Move it. I drove everyone sitting on the director's shoulder, while the others climbed on grandfather's feet. Hey. Hey, those on the left. Get out. Don't get on his ass. 
I shouted, because such a large formation needs to be controlled, otherwise who knows what thoughts the rest of the ants have. Grandfather just stood there and endured, waiting for us to finish. Hold on tight. If you fall, you will die. I said the last words to my team. Are all your friends here? Turning his head to me, my grandfather asked, to which I nodded affirmatively. The director made the most serious face and said in a confident tone. I'm taking off. Forward. After that, he rested his hand on the handrail and corrected himself from the place where he was standing. In just a few seconds we were already several dozen meters above the ground. I barely held on to the director's t-shirt with my little paws. Jerk after jerk, we were getting higher and higher. At one point, the director stopped. It was finally possible to catch my breath. Ha! Great view. He said, and only after that I noticed that we were already several kilometers above the ground. From here there was a really great view of the whole city, the river and the mountains in the distance. Hold on tight. I'm landing. The old man suddenly said and rushed forward through the air again. We were approaching the river very quickly, which a few seconds ago was a few kilometers away from us. A moment later, the grandfather was already on the ground. We're here. He said, looking at a huge tree with a door and a window that inspired fear. A huge number of crows were sitting on the bare branches of this tree. I was a little embarrassed and started to get indignant. Hey. No way. Will you let me live here? Grandfather apparently didn't care, he continued to stand his ground. It's creepy here, but the concentration of magic is the highest in the whole school. Previously, someone was kept here, but now it is abandoned and closed to outsiders. These words did not add to my confidence that I would be fine. What? Maybe we should go back. I offered, while the director, taking me with two fingers, began to lower me to the ground. Don't be afraid. That was hundreds of years ago. If there was a demon there, he would definitely have died. Really? I asked. Sure. I never lie. Grandfather spoke, removing all the ants from his body. I decided to trust him, after all, he promised to stick me in a class with cool girls. Okay then. I'll put up with one night. I said. Grandfather turned towards the city and said. Then I'll go. I'll pick you up tomorrow morning. Then he jumped with such force that dust rose around the place where he was standing. Okay, bye. I shouted after him. With all our ant crowd, we went inside the terrible tree. Inside it was an ordinary house, with shelves, cabinets, windows, chairs, a table. Even vases, cups and books were visible. And also, were without rodents. One of which was probably the main one. Turning their heads in the direction of the entrance, where I opened the door, they immediately interrupted the meal and scattered who were. That's right, otherwise I would have shown them where the crayfish hibernate. Good. It's much bigger inside than it looks from the outside. I said. The mice, who had been scared of me a second earlier and hid in their burrows, began to monitor the situation inside the tree. The big boss showed his nose and said. As. Saints. You scared me, bug. Then he came out of the hole, and the rest of the rodents followed his example. As he got closer, he continued. Get out. Get lost. This is not your place. I stood there with an indignant look, this mouse is clearly confusing something. What? I blurted out, to which the big boss replied. Don't you understand me? It's obvious you don't want to be nice. I got into a wrestler's stance and while my brothers were coming inside, I started talking. What? Do you want to fight with me? After that, I quickly got close to the mouse and grabbed his chest with my little paw. Just try it. I said confidently, henchman, get to work. Teach him his manners. This mouse screamed, throwing back my paw with his. We stood wall to wall. However, we had an advantage in numbers, which made the mice a little wary. The big boss, when he looked around, began to worry. What the hell? Where did this crowd come from? He declared. Suddenly, a bird flew into the broken window and began openly mocking the mouse. Apparently, the wound on the mouse's chest was just left by this bird. Come on. Don't be afraid. The mouse. The bird said, to which she received an answer from the mouse. What are you looking at? Come down and help. Raven. But the bird lifted its head proudly and declared. This ant was sent here by a strong man. I don't want to mess with him. Maybe you should pray for yourself. The mouse. The crows declared, but the mouse stood silently, not knowing what to answer. My patience ran out and I decided to interrupt them. Hey. Are you done yet? Are we going to fight or not? The mouse thrust her chest forward and declared. I don't want to compete with you in numbers. Why don't we fight one on one? 
Apparently considering me a weak link, the mouse felt more confident. Come on. And Solo. I'm not afraid of you. I shouted. Haha. What an idiot. Thought the big boss. Damn. Even the rat looks down on me. I thought, right before the start of the fight. I'll beat you up. He. Making an insidious face, the mouse declared in his head. Then she jumped in my direction with a scream. Take it. Lifting his paw higher, the rat hit with all his might at the place where I was standing a second earlier, because I could still dodge, which the rat told me. After that, she confirmed her rat status and started throwing debris from the floor in my face. While I was standing and trying to hide from the wreckage, the tail of the big boss flew into me. Despite the fact that he threw me a decent distance away, I still landed on my paws and prepared to launch my attack. As soon as I decided to attack, I was interrupted by the farting of this rat. It was difficult to breathe, just like just opening my eyes. Stinky. It's disgusting. I declared. This is called wisdom. Genius. The rat confidently declared, stopping farting and turning to face me. Damn it. What stinking wisdom. I answered. As soon as I could breathe normally and look, this big and dirty animal was already rushing at me. It's too late. Die. Nasty ant. My opponent screamed, hovering a couple of centimeters above me. The rat plopped down on me and it seemed necessary to rejoice, but he asked a question. How? How did it happen? The next moment, I was holding this stinking animal over my head. I think everyone knows that mice can lift weight many times more than their own. Then I said. Now it's my turn. The damage that you inflicted on me I will return tenfold. After the words, my paw began to glow blue, and the rat's face turned into a panic. You can say it briefly. The rat shat himself. Wait. I give up. You are welcome. Please don't. The big boss started begging for mercy. But no matter how much he pleaded, it was already too late. The next moment, a blue arrow of energy flew past his ear, then exploded behind his back. The rat plopped down on his ass and continued to scream. I give up. I give up. Thank you for not killing me. This time I was standing over him with my chest thrust forward. Ha ha ha. And how is that? Okay? I am merciful, so I will forgive you. The rat immediately clung to these words and jumped to her feet and declared. That's right. That's right. Ignoring him, I continued. Ah. Such talented and generous bugs like me appear very rarely. You don't want to be my servant. I was talking with my eyes closed, and the big boss showed his friends with his paw that it was time to leave. When I opened my eyes, I immediately said. Hey. Where are you going? The rat was obviously hoping that I wouldn't notice, but when she heard the question, she stopped and spoke. I just insulted you, how can I have the audacity to continue living here? The big boss was standing there, with a face full of sorrow. I already said I don't care, so what are you afraid of? Wouldn't you like to stay here? I declared. The rat was immediately inspired. Really? He said hopefully. Yes. Of course. Why would I lie? As a noble king, I declared. Suddenly, the rat almost cried and jumped into my paws, screaming. Boss. I'm all yours. You have to take me. The very next second, a raven flew into this house and began with its squeaky voice. Ha ha ha. Shame on you, mouse. My new subordinate immediately turned in the direction of the bird. Shame and shame? What are you going to do? He declared. The raven landed right in front of us. Okay, then look how you need to. The bird said in a confident tone. Oh. Another fight? Good. Come on. Let's get this over with quickly. I stood in Bruce Lee's stance, ready to repel any attack. The mouse was standing behind me, in anticipation of the raven's death. The next second, the raven fell at my feet and declared. Boss. Please take me too. There was no limit to my surprise, and the mouse declared it all. What a. So you don't have the guts to fight, and I'm ashamed and ashamed? After that, the raven immediately got to his feet and continued. Who said I was going to fight? I despise you for your escape. Boss. I'm so impressed with your punch. The raven embarrassed me. Oh. Really? I decided to dismiss him. The bird continued to bombard me with questions. Boss. What is your ability? She's so strong. It's not an ability. These are martial arts. I did not answer the raven's question, after which we started a dialogue about what martial arts are, since it turned out that the raven had never heard of such a thing. Stupid raven knows how to lick ass. I'll leave raven alone if I let that happen. No way. I need to find a solution. At this time, the rat was thinking. 
then she went to her hole, and her cheeks were covered with blush. It was this moment that Raven noticed, wondering in his head. What the hell? Why did he blush? The rat, going into his hole, said. Boss. Come here. I'll show you a great place. After passing through the hole, a beautiful room appeared to my eyes. It was a path towards the doors, in the center of which the dragon symbol was painted, and on the walls, around the door, there were a huge number of tree roots. The rat pointed a finger towards the door and said. Boss. Look. It's here. The rat walked down the corridor further, straight to the roots of the tree, stood near strange plants on which strange fruits and vegetables grew. Boss, it's here. Look. There's a lot of food here. Raven was immediately indignant. And I was still thinking how you got fat sitting at home. That's why. The rat did not tolerate a bad attitude towards himself. What? Did you call me fat? While they were arguing among themselves, I was examining the wall. Is that what he was talking about? I do not know what is there. Oh, come on. It's none of my business, so why should I bother? I said, looking around the room. I really didn't want to get into trouble the day before I got to school. Especially in a class with cool girls. Suddenly, a hole in the wall caught my attention. It looks like a tunnel, maybe it will lead me somewhere. It's too dark, I can't even see the end. Maybe it's better to leave? While I was standing and thinking what to do. The rat and the crow started a battle, and after another blow from the first, the crow flew clearly in my direction, hitting me and pushing me right into the hole. I fell head over heels down. To my surprise, the hole was very deep. I don't know how long it took until I landed, but the main thing is that I survived. Getting up on my paws, I shook off the dust and examined my wounds, which hurt insanely. I can't go back the same way, I'll have to wait for the mouse. I said, after examining the hole in the wall through which I got here. This is not how I imagine this place. While I'm here, I should look around. I was wandering around, looking for something interesting, when suddenly a skeleton caught my attention. It was a skull and ribs that looked like dragon bones. The whole structure hung on huge chains. In the center of the ribs was a pedestal on which a book shone. What an amazing place. I said in my head. The next moment, a raven and a rat were already behind me, who uttered in unison. Hey. Boss, are you okay? We've come for you. Ignoring my new subjects, I approached the pedestal. It was covered in gold and also contained precious stones. What a treasure it is. I was surprised, not knowing what to look at better, at the pedestal or the book that hung above it. I was standing right in front of a giant pedestal. My thoughts were filled with strange things. What is it? Where is it from here? The pedestal stood right next to the cliff, in which the skeleton of a dragon towered. It's a strange sight, it's obviously not for nothing. The rat and the raven were arguing behind my back, but I couldn't hear their voices very well. What happened to the boss? Rat asked thoughtfully, looking at me peering at the pedestal. He doesn't pay any attention to us, no matter how much we call him. Raven cast a contemptuous glance in his direction. And then, shaking his head, he said. Idiot. Can't you see that this place is part of something bigger? Looking at his interlocutor and examining his plump stomach, he decided to add. You sat in your house and ate all day. And now you can't even realize what's going on. There was a short pause, during which you could see how angry the rats were. Gas me fat one more time, and I'll knock all the feathers out of you. Their argument lasted for some time. I didn't hear much, and I didn't really get into it. What could be interesting in a dispute between a house rat and a skinny raven? Another thing is that the book was floating on a pedestal. At first it seemed to me quite ordinary. The cover was unremarkable, and the thickness did not inspire fear. Everything about her seemed perfectly normal, except for one detail. In the center of the book, where the title is usually located, there was a huge red stone circled in gold. He beckoned to me. It even seemed to me that I had fallen into hypnosis. My head was filled with interest and the desire to pick up the book. Did I dig up the ring of omnipotence? Haha. <laughs> I think it will be interesting. I think I even said it out loud. Without wasting any time, I jumped onto the pedestal and began to climb it like I was a climber. I never thought I could do this. Although what's there, now I'm an ant, and for them this is the norm. Phew, even though I cling to the walls so easily, in fact, it still takes effort to crawl. With grief in half, I crawled to the top. The book hovered just a jump away, right in front of me. It's a strange feeling, it's like I'm attracted to her. Is this normal? Spit? Without further thought, I jumped straight to her, spreading my paws, I flew to my desire. Haha. <laughs> this treasure is mine now. 
I shouted and even felt light at heart. I take it. I shouted, but when my hand touched the book, suddenly, it opened, as if by magic. A bright light was pouring out of her. That's all I saw while I was flying down from the pedestal. Yes, apparently its creator would never have thought that an ant would touch this relic. Such thoughts were spinning in my head while I was flying. And here is the first impact on the ground. The landing is not soft. I rolled head over heels on the ground, simultaneously making sounds of pain with each blow. Ah. Oh. Ugh. At the same time, the book that illuminated the whole room with light released a person into the wild. An old man in a bright white robe, with milk-gray hair that descended almost to the ground, appeared to our eyes. His snowy beard descended almost to his waist. Leaning on a staff with a pale white crystal, he floated in the air. Looking at him, the first thing that came to my mind was the thought of whether it was Gandalf by the hour. But no, all my suspicions were dispelled, the old man loudly introduced himself. I, the conjurer Fuluoan, this is the forbidden land of the sealed dragon. Who invaded this place? A magical aura surrounded him, it could even be seen in the air, it gave his words strength. After stating this, the old man froze for a moment. Glancing to one side of the room, then to the other, stroking his beard, he sighed. Ah. What the? Hello? Did someone activate the protection system? After looking around again, he summed up. No one? He was clearly looking for the intruder. Hello. He shouted even louder than before. Come out. Stop hiding. I know you're still here. And I'll find you anyway. I'll get mad if you don't come out right now. Continuing to peer into all corners of the room, he added. Me. I'm really angry. Meanwhile, I was passed out in the arms of my subordinates. Examining me, the thoughtful raven asked. Boss, are you alright? Get together boss. Added a rat holding me. After a couple of minutes I came to my senses, and the first thing I saw was the ass of this damn old man. He had been crawling on the floor for some time in the hope of finding the intruder. Come out. Don't hide. I can see you already. He was saying. A terrible sight, I could not even imagine that I would ever see such a picture. However, gathering all the courage in my fist, I got up and shouted loudly. Hey old man. Did you attack me from that book? And? Almost instantly, the old man was on his feet and turned his head to me. Who is it? Who is that there? Seeing no one, he was taken aback. Glitches or something? He asked aloud and was about to return to the pedestal, but I called out to him. Hey. What are you looking at there? I'm here. The old man finally lowered his eyes but his face betrayed all his frustration. Um. He said. A bug? Is the bug talking? Suddenly, he burst into tears, and wiping his tears with his sleeve, he spoke. I know I'm old. But I didn't think it was that much. I started hearing voices. He whimpered. But I decided to interrupt his self-flagellation. Hey. Old man. Stop crying. What are you whining about? I'm the one who got hurt, actually. The old man wouldn't stop whimpering, no matter how hard I tried. But I did not abandon the hope of bringing him to reason. Looking at him as if he was distraught, I repeated. Hey. Old man. I'm talking to you. Have you forgotten how to speak humanly? Whimper. I hear it again. What the hell? Stop. At one point he glanced at me. Hey. Wait. Am I not speaking a human language? And you say? I'm not crazy. Spreading my hands, I began to shout. No, you're not fucking crazy. Now spit it out did you hit me for nothing? The old man's face seemed numb. I'm actually quite old. Could a little bug like you talk to me a little more politely? This angered me even more. Speak a little more courteously? And who will be more polite to me? I'm not some kind of bug. I am the king of ants. And look at my wound. How are you going to make amends? I asked in all seriousness. The old man just blinked in surprise. Not fully understanding what was going on, he asked. Make amends? Okay. What do you want? Hmm. Let me think. Putting my paw to my chin, my gaze arbitrarily fell on the book that remained hanging on the pedestal. Pointing at her, I said. This. I want that book. Give it to me and so be it, I ask you. A book? The old man looked at me in surprise and then at the object on the table. And then, smiling, almost through laughter, he said. Excellent. Take it if you can. The old man's thoughts. Ha. Huh. He could have asked for anything, but he decided to ask her. That book is no joke. She's enchanted. He can't just take her. Grabbing the book from the table, he carefully handed it straight into my paws. This is a monstropedia, a real divine artifact. 
You definitely have a nose for such things, little ant. But taking a divine artifact is not so easy. After listening to him, I just grinned. Ha! Huh. Just a divine artifact? I'm able to get a bunch more of these. The old man grinned back. Oh, what an ambitious little ant. Get results first, and then chat. Put a mark on this book. He said, handing it to me. Hmm. Just look at this. Okay, I'll use the blood. Collecting the remnants of blood from my shelf, I put an imprint on the page of the magic book. And after a moment, she absorbed it, leaving only an empty space. Nothing seemed to have happened. However, after a couple of seconds, the book shone again. As if collecting all the information, a spot of magic circled over the floating book and then moved straight into me. Flying right into my forehead, it formed a stone in my forehead, just like the one on the cover of the book. She immediately fell to the ground. Apparently all the magic has passed to me? How is that? I asked in surprise. Did I do it? The old man seemed even more surprised. He even opened his mouth in surprise. How? How did it happen? What happened? This artifact can only belong to a person. And no one else. Something's wrong. He said loudly. Bug, bring me the monstropedia. I need to check something. No way. I answered, covering the crystal in my forehead with my paws. Do you want to break your promise? Hmm? The old man thought about it. Sorry. He said suddenly. I was rude, but this book can only be used by spellcasters. And if you take away such a powerful memory, it will be a huge loss for all mankind. Why don't you take something else instead? The old man was polite and courteous, he even extended his hand to me, hoping that I would accept it. But I was not a finger maid. Get lost. I said. Do you think I'm a fool? Only in your dreams. Spellcaster's right? A big loss? I can become a magician myself this night. You don't have to worry about me. Oh. The old man sighed heavily again and thought. His convolutions moved as if alive, and I could almost hear the grinding of gears in his head. And finally he said. If you recognize me as your master, then I will teach you. You? I said in surprise. It seemed impossible, I'm an ant, what kind of magician am I? You? I asked. Are you crazy? After these words, the old man almost fainted. And then he said menacingly. When I was alive, I had the rank of a demigod. Of course I can teach even an ant like you. I was surprised. What kind of demigod? When I was told about the classes of magicians, I did not hear about any demigods. Grandfather just smiled maliciously. Of course, this is much higher than the 10th level. The video was how he was filled with self-admiration. Oh, well. I said. You must be pretty damn good. It was a genuine surprise because I had no idea that there was someone above the 10th level. Haha. <laughs> the old man laughed. Of course, I was pretty damn strong. Kneeling down, I began to ask. Oh dear master, please take me Jen Lan as your disciple. Meanwhile, in my head I had only thoughts about one more step towards achieving my goal. The old man was smiling contentedly, rubbing his beard, he said. Well, I never would have thought that I would have a student one day. He looked very pleased, as if he had just had a hearty meal. And then I asked. Master, when can you start teaching me? This question really worried me. I'm an ant, damn it. Excellent. The old man said, and laughed and waved his staff. In an instant, he shrank to my size. As if it were nothing, he changed his size without even raising an eyebrow. We can start right now, he said. My surprise knew no bounds. He was the size of me, just like magic. Or is it more correct to say with the help of magic? It didn't matter now. Then, he looked at the raven and the rat that were sitting nearby. Hey you two. Come here. Follow me. He commanded the three of us. Rat was clearly surprised. How does he manage to speak the language of monsters? He asked. But Raven realized that talking was pointless. Never mind, he said. Just keep up. I walked beside the old man, and they stayed a little behind us. Master, where are we going? I asked, hoping to get at least some answer. You'll find out when we get there. For a while we walked along strange winding corridors. I was overwhelmed with the desire to learn more. And I couldn't resist. Master. And how did you manage to shrink to my size? Is this some kind of magic? The old man sighed heavily. Oh. Okay, I'll tell you now. The fact is, to be honest, I died a thousand years ago. During the war. Now I'm just a soul. Therefore, changing the size is not a problem for me. What? This is not the answer I expected to hear. So he's just a soul. Master, how did you die in the war? Weren't you strong? 
The old man chuckled. He liked my trade of learning new things. Haha. <laughs> he laughed. There were millions of strong heroes in my time. Death during the war was the norm for everyone. So how did you die? I asked. I saw those bones that stand at the pedestal in the first room. These are the remains of a magical dragon. Whom I tried to lure into print. He was the cause of my death. Wow, I was surprised. Then that dragon must have been very strong. The old man was even more amused. Haha. <laughs> yes. He had a huge magic power and a solid body, he had no equal in terms of level, so I lost. I was lucky because I reached the highest level. Thanks to this, my soul and legacy have been preserved. Meanwhile, we continued to walk and talk. Until suddenly the master stopped. Okay the conversation has already dragged on. We have arrived. The place we were going to was like an underground lake. Obviously it was not just a lake, the water in it was soaked with mana, it glowed as if it was some kind of nuclear reactor. Master, where are we? This is the core of printing. The old man replied. The seal that restrains the magical dragon. His flesh and soul form the spool. Pointing at him, he continued to speak. You just need to take your mates and jump in there. He said smiling. This way you will be able to purify your souls and rebuild your essence, so you will become magical beasts. Summing up, he nodded. Oh. I sighed. This is a very cool master. Although I didn't understand half of what he said, I understood one thing for sure, you just need to jump into this water. Looking at my comrades, I said. Now we can become magical beasts. The pleased raven said arrogantly. Mouse. We just started following the boss and are already pumping. Isn't it cool? Mouse was also clearly pleased. Naturally. After all, not everyone can become our boss. With these words, we unanimously decided to take a bath. Plopping into the pool, we felt the mana circulating around us and absorbed into the body. After sitting in the pool for a couple of minutes, I asked. Master, will this work for sure? The old man answered without a second's hesitation. Ho ho. Of course it will work. If you are talented enough, it will be easy to become a magical beast of at least the first level. So we continued to absorb energy. It's been about an hour. The old man sat down on the shore, and we had as much fun as we could. I swam from side to side. The mouse and the raven fell asleep. Looking at us, the old man thought. Each of them definitely has talent. They've been there for so long, but they can still absorb energy. Suddenly, the raven woke up. Purple mana surrounded his body. It was as if she was coming out of him. And so she formed a clot and went somewhere outside the cave. At the same time, the ghosts flying by smelled the smell of mana. Oh. And who is it we have here? It smells delicious. Is it true? Sniff. Really delicious. Where does this wonderful fragrance come from? The old man sitting on the shore thought. Why are the ghosts around so excited? Did any of them begin to evolve? He looked at us. His gaze landed squarely on the raven. Ah. Probably that one. I think it will become big. Shrouded in mana, the raven began to grow. Two horns appeared on his head, and the feathers grew and strengthened. It was no longer a raven. He became more like an eagle. Shrouded in mana, he looked very impressive. An evil ghost raven of the first level of the third class. A magical animal that controls ghosts. In his best form, he can reach the top of the sixth level. Skills. A ghostly beak. A ghostly flame. Ghost control. Haha. <laughs> Said the raven. I did it. He happily landed right next to the old man. Look boss. I did it. I did it. I became a magical beast. Oh, yes. I said, looking at this whopper. Mega good. The mouse woke up from these sounds and plunged into the water. And a minute later he surfaced. Heck. Raven. You scared me. Haha. <laughs> he laughed in response, you deserved it, there was nothing to sleep. Come on, hit me now? The mouse looked away resentfully. Well, wait and see how I'll become a magical beast and beat you upstart. The ghosts flew into the room where we were. Haha. <laughs> Found it. Oh, who is that? Raven asked. The master replied. Ah, it's perfume. Bit fields and tombs are full of death energy, can generate such creatures. They must have appeared because of the ghostly energy that you radiate. Give them some Kai power. You've become an evil ghost raven. So you can easily subdue them. Like this? With these words, the raven released some mana, and the ghosts became like tame animals. The raven stood happy and was already giving his spirits names. Now you're black, and you're white. He spoke, and the spirits were no less happy about it. 
The rat continued to sit in the pool with me, waiting for its transformation, with the words. Damn it. He stole all the glory. I decided to support my subordinate a little. Approaching the mouse from behind, I put my hand on his shoulder. He paid attention to me. Did you want something, boss? He asked. Aren't you brothers? Why do you care? We should be happy for him. See? I'm with you. I told him and the mouse broke into a satisfied smile, barely holding back tears. Literally in the next second, he said. Boss. These were words of anticipation, apparently something is happening. I decided to ask him what happened, and we immediately began to shine. Boss. I think I'm starting to evolve. After these words, my condition needed to be seen. Honestly, it even hurt, why am I the last? The mouse flew up a meter above the pool, and the radiance increased with every second. Literally before my eyes, my subordinate began to change his appearance and become big. It was hard to tell who he was becoming like. The next moment, a huge animal was standing in front of me. His description was as follows. Level 1 Class 3. King of Rodents. A magical rodent type beast born to be a king. In his prime, he is able to reach level 7 of class 1. Skills. Rodent control, escape, stone carving claws. My subordinate, looking at his new paws with claws, began to talk enthusiastically. I feel so strong. Haha. <laughs> I did it. Now I'm a magical beast too. Haha. <laughs> now you won't say I'm fat. Come on boss. I believe you can do it. The rodent spoke with great joy on his face, already supporting me. I continued to stand in the pool, trying not to show envy. Yeah. You're right. I think my turn is just around the corner. The rodent began to climb out of the pool with the words. Raven. Suck it. To which the bird replied. Mouse. You've become a magical beast too. But you don't think that I'm still the same weakling that I was before? Their dialogue marked the beginning of the duel. Shouting. So what? I can still beat you. The rodent rushed at the raven, attacking with its new claws. The spirits that Raven had subdued began to whisper. Who do you think will win? The black one asked, but the white one just mumbled in response, without saying a clear answer. Damn it. I'm the only one left. A lot of time has already passed. Why didn't anything happen? I'm ashamed to be called their boss. My disappointment was only due to ignorance of small details. Thinking I'm hopeless. With a heavy sigh, I said. Am I not endowed with talent? And at that moment, the old man completely dispelled my sadness. Haha. <laughs> Kid. There's nothing to worry about. The longer you stay there, the better your talent. At that moment, realizing the words of the teacher, all the sadness, as if by hand, was removed. Really? I exclaimed hopefully. Haha. <laughs> I knew it. I am the one who will command them all. There's no way I can be mediocre. Starting to rub myself with water from the pool, I already imagined how strong I would become. Temper your ardor. The old man declared, but he was thinking in his head. What kind of student did I take? Manage everyone? You? If it was that simple, I would have done it a long time ago. Suddenly, at the bottom of the pool, an eye opened. It was the soul of the magical dragon Bezidon. He paid attention to the surface of the water, let out a little air from the back hole to mark his appearance and thought. Swimming on my back in the pool, suddenly I heard the dragon farting, and then the movement of the water. What? What's that noise? I said. Turning around, I saw huge waves moving in my direction. Ah. God. Such a big wave. Master. Help. I shouted, swinging on the waves, almost like a professional surfer. The master took a nap at that time, but as soon as he heard my scream, thoughts appeared in his head. Zheng Lan is screaming for help, is something wrong? No. It's the smell of a magical dragon. Suddenly, the old man's eyes widened with fear. The duel between the rodent and the bird continued. What do you think? Not bad, huh? Are you giving up already? The mouse was talking, sitting on top of the raven. Ha. Dream, I won't lose for anything. The bird replied. The master stood in a daze and decided to interrupt their fight. Stop fighting. Find a place to hide. They paid attention to the old man, but did not take him seriously. Raven. Something happened? The rodent asked. Do you think I know? Get up. Prick. The raven shouted. At this time, I could no longer stay on the surface of the pool and began to sink. In the next second, the head of a huge dragon appeared out of the water. He was red in color, with red pupils and very sharp teeth, which, oddly enough, were not so many in his mouth. The image was completed by beautiful horns sticking out of the head. 
The master immediately flew into the air, increasing in size to normal. I hope they're all right. He thought. The dragon at this moment had already climbed out of the pool, turning his attention to the old man. Oops. He growled. Long time no see. The old man. With the most vicious face, the dragon continued. The old man was hanging in the air, right in front of the magical creature's face. A magical dragon. It's you. Since you're here, does that mean you've kept your soul as well as I have? The master decided to ask. Bearing his smile, the dragon began to speak in a growling tone. It was easy. You underestimated me. I survived despite a thousand years of imprisonment. That was just enough time for me to get out. But you surprised me. I'm glad you're here too. Finally, I will be able to take revenge on you for melting my flesh and imprisoning me for hundreds of years. In anticipation of revenge, the dragon looked at his abuser. Grandfather made a surprised grimace. Hmm. A magical dragon. If it wasn't for your evil deeds, you wouldn't be there. These words surprised the dragon. Angry? These people were too greedy. You wanted to take my scales and bones. The beast tried to justify himself. Yes. So they were all evil? And the guy you mauled, too? The master made a counter-argument. All people are greedy and dirty. Why not kill a few people? The master held out his hand in front of him, holding up two fingers. You leave me no choice. There's no need to talk anymore. The old man marked the beginning of the duel. We never needed to talk. The dragon decided to support him. In the next second, they both applied their techniques. Turn your soul into animals. Massacre of monsters. Waving his staff, the old man shouted. Turn the dragon's soul into a flame and destroy everything in its path. The dragon growled. Their techniques collided with each other. There was a huge explosion that raised a lot of dust into the air. The dragon decided to take advantage of these and, pushing off with his paw from the ground, jumped towards the old man. Raising his paw to strike, he growled. Die. The old fart. Just a few centimeters before the paw hits the old man, the master put a golden git in front of him, which repelled the attack. We haven't seen each other for a long time. You've become stronger. The dragon was surprised. In fact, this shield turned out to be a turtle, which the old man summoned at the last moment and put in front of him. I'm too old to get stronger. Dragon, you're the one who's weakened. Without your body, you are an ordinary soul in a huge shell. The old man spoke calmly, realizing that he was superior to his opponent in the fight. The dragon was not going to stop and raised his paw to strike again. You just repelled two of my attacks, don't get cocky. I can take you down with one left. The creature growled. What are you? Try. Not at all afraid of his enemy, the old man said, and summoned a huge beetle that surpassed the master himself in size by 100 times. The beetle on its head, instead of the usual antennae, had some kind of axe, similar to those that the Vikings carried with them. The blow of the dragon, which was flying at the old man, was intercepted by this particular beetle, and then the second blow with the other hand. The next moment they are already facing each other, trying to overcome each other, just like in that very video, in the locker room, in one of the gyms. Dumbus. The dragon screamed. Get out of here. I don't have time to deal with you. Trying to win the beetle over to his side, the dragon continued. But it wasn't there. Gathering all his strength, the huge beetle rested his paw on the ground and threw the dragon with all his strength into the wall that was behind him. The magical soul clearly did not expect this. After landing, the dragon spat out some blood from his mouth. The fall was clearly not pleasant. The old man decided to take the bull by the horns and continue the successful attack. Back then, you were only able to defeat me because of the dragon body, do you really think I'll screw up again? The master asked, putting his hand forward again, raising two fingers to apply the following technique. Soul, turn into beasts and burst into the fury of the underwater world. After these words, all kinds of fish and other creatures living in the water began to fly out of the old man's staff, which flew towards the dragon. Having hit the enemy directly, the fish immediately scattered, but the damage was visible as blood continued to pour from the dragon's mouth. In the next second, the dragon began to speak as if it had not received any damage. So what? Even though I'm without a body, I'm still stronger than you. Dragon soul, turn into flames, destroy everything in your path. Then he got down on all fours and let out an even larger stream of flame from his mouth than before. I was still in the pool at that time. Finally seeing the light, I swam out and was able to get to land, coughing heavily. Phew. God, I almost died. And we're in such a small puddle to take a huge wave. 
I was lying on the shore and thinking, trying to catch my breath. The next moment I noticed my hand, which was covered with red goo. And. What for? What's wrong with my hand? An abomination. Then my second hand was covered with red goo. I tried to throw this thing off, but I couldn't. The red incomprehensible thing began to spread further through my body, and I thought it was most likely evolution. I was glad of this news, because it was finally my turn. Literally a few meters away from me, a dragon flew out of the cave, on which there was a huge beetle, trying not to let the first one get up. Get off me. Nothingness. The dragon roared, spewing flames at its abuser, but the beetle was not even hurt. The master managed to put up a barrier in front of his summoning animal in time. The dragon looked at the old man and was surprised. Strange, why did that old man stop? Huh. What a mixed feeling. The dragon suspected something. Yeah, well, of course he's up to something else. He decided not to dwell on it. The next moment he noticed a purple glow, and it was me, but we haven't met him yet. Oh. And what is this? The dragon spirit wondered. Is this really what he wants so much? Ha. Huh. It's worth checking out. The dragon decided and pushed off with all his strength from the ground, jumped in my direction. Master in one second to fuck. No. The magic dragon noticed after all. Hurry up. Stop him. Don't let him get there. The old man shouted in panic and gave the command to the huge beetle. The dragon was already on its way and was mocking. Haha. <laughs> I was right. This is something important for the old man. I, being in this purple cocoon, felt the power penetrate me more and more. Oh, but what is this growing sense of anxiety? The dragon wondered, looking at how the cocoon with me began to glow more and more, until a huge terrible head appeared out of this light. The shadow of a huge ant appeared and scared everyone. I let out a strong roar, which caused the dragon to hide behind the nearest corner and cowered in fear. It's a creature. So far it's just a shadow, but it's already terrifying. Suddenly, an image appeared in the dragon's head, how he was on the street and reasoning. Not happening. This can't be happening. The strongest creatures on this earth can only be dragons. Why is there anything at all? What is stronger than me? The dragon looked up, where I towered over him, with a knife in my right hand and a fork in the other, ready for a meal. Being in hiding, with his eyes wide open, the dragon continued to observe my evolution. Is this the awakening of the blood? What kind of blood is this that made me tremble so much? I'm a dragon. He continued to coward, not understanding what was happening. Maybe it's that old man's trap. He drew attention to my teacher, who at that moment simply could not believe his eyes. Seeing the expression on his face, the dragon immediately calmed down. Excellent. It looks like I'm just making up my mind. Such a chance comes once in a hundred years. If I capture that body, I can get out of captivity. Besides, with this powerful blood talent, I'll be able to regain my original level in a mere hundred years. With my current knowledge, I will reach it quickly. Being under so much pressure, the old man still won't be able to stop me. If I capture this body before the pressure disappears, that old man will no longer be my equal. Haha. <laughs> I never would have thought that this day would come. The dragon was already dreaming, anticipating victory in his head. The master continued to hang in the air, watching my evolution. This greenhouse is not a magical beast, but it knows the human language, which is already amazing. I would never have thought that his blood talent was also incredible. A dragon can still move under such pressure. The magical beasts I created can't even move. Even if I try to make magical animals stronger, regardless of the consequences, I still won't have time. The master reasoned, seeing that my evolution had suppressed all the creatures that were in the cave. The dragon decided to act. Now no one can stop me. He was talking as he walked towards me. As soon as I take possession of this body and leave the prison, I will make the pitiful people afraid of being naked again. Suddenly, sensing the approach of a hostile creature to me, I instinctively released the ant's paws in the direction of the dragon. Fortunately for the creature and unfortunately for me, he managed to react and repulse the attack. Haha. <laughs> Are you trying to stop me with this cheap trick? As soon as he destroyed my paws, his hand began to crumble. Hey. What happened? He wondered and continued. The power of my soul is dissipating. Damn. Why doesn't it stop? Why? What's the matter? At this time, the old man, without even turning towards the dragon, began to speak. A magical dragon. You wanted a body, didn't you? How naive. In ancient times, there were many strong races. With such a strong bloodline, the bodies of their offspring became the main targets of other races. What, do you think they're fools? 
They could definitely protect their blood. How did a wingless dragon hybrid even dare to think about it? You're really looking for death. The dragon listened to the master's words, but did not lose heart. Like hell. I'm so close. I almost did it. He spoke, reaching out with his other paw towards my cocoon. No, I won't give up. He growled, and his soul was already dissipating even more. The old man kept telling him. A magical dragon. In the end, you will die because of your greed. Oh, right. I must definitely absorb the power of his soul before it dissipates. Haha. <laughs> She's all mine now. Full of joy, the old man headed towards the dragon soul, which was dissipating. Suddenly, all the radiance of my cocoon stopped shining and began to crack. The pressure disappeared. It looks like my student has finally finished. The master said as he watched my cocoon crack more and more. Suddenly, I put my paw on the ground. The description of my new body was like this. Raza, unknown. Skills. The power of the ant king and acid that can kill even a dragon. Dragon technique. Immense flame. You finally did it. Accept my congratulations. The old man said, looking in my direction. Thank you teacher. I answered and started running closer to him. Teacher, but what just happened? Where did the huge waves and trembling of the earth come from? I decided to ask, standing next to the teacher, and now my height was up to his waist, despite the fact that the old man took his usual height. Never mind, just a fool showed up. The teacher answered while he was thinking. It was a good thing he hadn't found out about the dragon. I would never have been able to explain to him what was what. Suddenly, two spirits appeared from the wall. Reception. Everything is clear on the right. Reception. Said the white one. On the left, hum, too. Said the little black one. The next moment, after the spirit's words, a rodent and a raven appeared. It was so noisy here. We still don't know how our boss is doing. Rodent decided to start. That old man looks pretty strong. I'm sure they'll be fine. Raven continued. Seeing the new me, the raven and the rodent started walking towards me. Look. It must be our boss. Said the rodent. I also paid attention to them. Where have you been? I decided to ask, and they began their story. There was some confusion, and the old man told us to hide. Yes, yes, he's right. Everything happened so fast, we didn't even have time to really understand what happened. They said, well, I decided not to focus on it. In that case, it's all right. I answered. Maybe it's because you've evolved, boss. The rodent asked. That's right, our boss was powerful even before he became a magical beast, it must have been him. Proud of me, my subordinates continued, and I, putting my hand behind my head, said, laughing. Haha. Ha. Really? You flatter me. The master was watching us and thinking in his head. Huh. Here the youngsters went. Who is Zheng Lan? He was supposed to become an ordinary magical bug beast, but where did he get the traits of the dragon race? As far as I know, there are many branches from the dragon bloodline, but there should not be a branch with ants. Judging by the magic dragon's reaction, this kid really isn't related to the dragon race. Maybe he represents something new? Having finished reasoning, the old man has already turned to us. Okay, it's time to get out of here. I decided to answer him first. And I like this place. Someday we will definitely bring our subordinates here and make an army of magical beasts. I finished. Great idea. No wonder you're our boss. All right, boss. My subordinates supported me. The old man at the same time listened to me with shock and thought. What a damn good idea, it's a terrible idea. How can you afford to cultivate all these magical beasts? Exactly. I have savings. In principle, you can give them away. I'm a demigod after all, can I afford a small army of level 1 and 2 magical beasts? In only as far as these savings will be enough. The master finished thinking. And we started walking towards the exit until I came across some strange red crystal that was hanging in the air. Oh, what's that there? I decided to check by going to the crystal. Boss, hurry up. Rodent decided to tell me, and I decided not to delay and grab the crystal, running after the subordinates. Haha. <laughs> what fell is mine. A huge beautiful building, you can even call a cottage, stood on the street, illuminated by the sun. There were two girls standing at the entrance, the red-haired one we already know and her mother. After school, come straight home, don't stay anywhere. The eldest of the women was instructing. I know, I know, I'm already an adult. The girl with red hair answered. Near the nearest fence, her friend was already waiting for her, also a girl we know named Lily, next to whom there was a magical beast. E.g., light chick, monster demon level. 
a pretty handy magical beast with low combat skills. Its limit is level 2 awakening, some say that this beast has an unusual bloodline. Skills, light beam low rank. A healing spell. Sorry about the wait. Yudin said, to which he received an answer. Nothing, I just came myself. They started walking to school, chatting along the way. What did you do with the herbs yesterday? The red-haired woman asked. Sorting alone took all night. Lily answered. The gates of the school, through which a huge number of children passed. Yu Tong and Lily also came to this place and began to say goodbye. Well, I went to class. See you. Yudin said, waving to his girlfriend and hurrying to school. Yeah. I'll give you the finished medicine in the afternoon. Lily answered and went in the other direction. Entering the classroom, the red-haired girl greeted her classmates and sat down at her desk. She was immediately approached by two girls who were twins. Both had pink hair and eyes. Yudin, an exchange student came to us today. I also know that he has something to do with the law. They spoke. Yudin didn't even have time to be really surprised when the teacher came into the classroom. Kids, the lesson is starting, so I ask everyone to take their seats. Today we have a new student in our class, he came from abroad. The teacher was broadcasting. Come in. She said, and I, dressed in a raincoat, covering my head with a hood, went into the classroom, approaching the teacher. All the children immediately started whispering. A foreigner? A child? A dwarf? Why is he wearing a cape? Such questions were asked from the classroom. The student just arrived in our city yesterday, so help him get used to it. The teacher spoke. Not from our city? Yudin wondered, watching me closely while I introduced myself. I'm Zhen Lan. As you may have noticed, I am a magical beast. Taking off my hood, I was broadcasting, and when everyone saw my appearance, they were delighted. He can talk. Delightfully. Children were screaming. My acquaintance, a red-haired friend, was a little embarrassed. How charming. What a coincidence, that little ant also arrived in the city only yesterday. I'm worried that mice or crows might offend him. Her thoughts were interrupted by the teacher, making a statement. Hush, school time has begun. Zhen Lan, sit on the right. As I walked to my seat, Yudin kept talking to herself in her head. Damn him. And why I'm thinking about that jerk. As soon as I took my seat, I immediately turned to my neighbor. Hi hi could you share a piece of paper with me? Suddenly, without having time to understand anything, Yudin turned to me with a shout. Shut up. Don't stop me from thinking. And at that moment our eyes converged on each other. My whole body immediately went numb and I agreed with her in a panic. As soon as I managed to gather my thoughts and turn away, Yudin declared. Have we, by any chance, met anywhere before? To which I quickly replied. No. You must have made a mistake. After that, I quickly started making plans in my head. Calm down. Damn, and why is it so coincidental that this girl and I are in the same class? Wait, I'm a magical beast now and I look different. If I pretend I don't know her, she probably won't figure me out. Haha. <laughs> I'm so smart. After my reflections, I took the most gentlemanly pose and declared. Hi, I'm Zhen Lan, nice to meet you. And he held out his hand to her. She accepted the handshake and said. Likewise, my name is Yudin. Feel free to ask me for help if anything. I was flattered by such words. Really? Thank you very much. I answered, realizing how brilliant I am after all. I tried to pull my hand away, but it didn't work out. Um, you can already let go. I declared and saw her insidious face, and then, making a malicious smile, she began to speak. Did you really think I wouldn't recognize you? I'm surprised you changed your appearance so quickly. I might not even recognize you, you little asshole. I was electrocuted once again after such words, because I really believed that my plan had worked and through my teeth, I said. You're f. What are you doing, let go, it hurts me. After that, I decided to try to pretend to be a fool. What are you talking about? I don't understand. Trying to hold my face with a brick, I said. Don't pretend, I know it's you. After that, she put her hand on my neck, as if we were friends and continued. Where were you last night? I was worried, by the way. What are you wearing? And what are you doing here? Listening to her questions, I still tried to continue pretending to be a fool. You confused me with another insect. But the girl continued to stand her ground. Ha. Huh. Don't try my patience. If you don't want to talk nice, I'll find another way to get you to confess. After that, she began to squeeze my paw harder. What are you going to do? I was scared, realizing what she was starting to do. Bitch. Choosing violence? 
you're such a bitch. Expecting pain, I shouted, but suddenly I noticed that nothing was changing. What happened? Why doesn't it hurt at all? Hey. That's right, my level is now higher than hers, I no longer need to be afraid of her. I determined it. The girl, thinking that it hurts me very much and she dominates me, said. Well, are you going to confess now? You're right. I am the aunt. I decided not to hide anymore, remembering how she offended me when I was little. Well, you Tong, I will torment you and return all the pain that you caused me in double size. With a sly smile, I thought about revenge. The girl made a victorious face. Huh. So I was right, but who did he meet yesterday? She thought, and then turned to me. Tell me about it. How did you get into this school? Also, why do you look like that? Hearing her questions, I made a victorious grimace and decided to show her my place. Well. Why would I tell you that? Bitch. I confidently declared and saw her, the most angry face, it was just felt that she wanted to punch me. Eh? I didn't understand, come on, repeat it. She asked, but I continued to stand my ground. So young, and already hearing problems? Even if you get down on your knees and apologize now, I will never forgive you. In a confident tone, she declared. Ha. And why would I apologize to you? Is it you who should be apologizing? We continued our verbal sparring, holding hands. I'm making you regret your words. She continued, to which I replied. Try. I'm not afraid of you at all. Then he showed a victorious smile on his face. But at that time, we had the same thought in our heads. I'll let you feel all my power. The girl decided to act more seriously. You can only blab. We'll see how much you have enough. She declared and began to press my paw even harder, after which a question arose in her head. Uh. Why can't I squeeze his claws anymore? Looking at her attempts, I decided to be sarcastic again. Oh, my dear Yudin. Haven't you had breakfast today? And this is your strength? And the next moment, after my words, she already exclaimed in pain, as I squeezed her hand harder. She started making such sounds as if we were not just holding hands, but at that time thoughts were spinning in her head. Which one? Why does it hurt so much? Damn. When did he become so strong? No, I can't lose to him. But. I looked at her face and was a little embarrassed. Those overwhelming sounds again. People, I actually have feelings too. And because of them, I don't even raise my hand against you. The next moment, the girl decided in her head. Okay, this quarrel won't lead to anything. After that, she said in a voice. I'll let you go this time, but know that he was the first and the last. I looked at this scene and was surprised. Oh my god. She's got a lot of arrogance. Yudin moderated her ardor a little, and interest got the better of her. What happened to your strength? You don't look like a demon that just evolved. She asked, well, I have already taken the king's bar, so I answered in this manner. And what? Is that so interesting to you? I don't really want to talk about it, but if you beg. Maybe I'll tell you. The girl clearly didn't like my words, and she clearly wasn't going to beg me. Pouting and offended at me, she turned away in the direction of the teacher, thinking in her head. You'll see, even if you don't tell me anything, I'll find out everything myself. Looking at her, I already felt my victory. You're still too weak to fight me. I thought, after which I decided not to tear up the ends and smooth out our relationship a little. School has just started. There's still a lot of time ahead. Making the most kind smile on my face, I told her. During our argument with Yudin, I didn't even notice how I finished the lesson, and the teacher announced. That's it for today, classes are over. As soon as the teacher left, the chatter in the classroom immediately began. I was plastered from all sides and started being bombarded with questions. Hey. How did you get into our school? Yes, yes. How did you do that? I decided to answer their questions in order to improve relations. Um, well. I had to hide in the city because I offended my fellow countrymen and could no longer live in the forest, and when I had nowhere else to go, I met the director and joined the class. You didn't listen to my explanations and thought with a malicious face. Did you offend your fellow countrymen yesterday? No wonder you had to come to town. I talked to you yesterday. Meanwhile, the rest of my classmates, after my story, and in particular the girls, began to flirt with me. It's so sad. Do you want to stay with me? The first one asked. Yes. You can stay with me. Another one said, and I already imagined in my head what we would do at their house, answering. What a great idea. The smile was shining on my face. Suddenly, Yutunu jumped up from her seat and slammed the table with force, shouting. No way. Zheng Lan will stay with me. 
I tried to calmly react to this by asking. What is it? But there was an explosion in my head. Damn. This girl is trying to ruin my day. Suddenly, Yudin blushed and embarrassedly began to answer my question, even stuttering a little. That's because. Because. And then she turned away a little and gathered her thoughts, continuing. I just wanted to repay the debt for the service rendered to me earlier. Exactly. Right. That's all. After Yudin's statement, everyone, the coolest girls of the class, turned away from me, saying. In that case, we won't argue with Yudin. Yes, Yutong's parents' family was noble, and their house is large and luxurious. Hearing this, I even started crying, but I held back my tears as much as possible. Suddenly it dawned on me. Are there sexy maids in the house? Is that right? After that, images of two beautiful girls in maid costumes appeared in my head, one of whom was talking. Would you like to start with breakfast today, master? Or do you want to take a bath first? Or do you want to start with? As soon as my thoughts played out to the limit, I immediately fell on my knees in front of Yutong and began to pray. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have asked at all. I'm sorry. Yudin, with red in cheeks, decided to accept the apology. I was wrong to do this to you when you saved my life. And I continued. No, no, no. It's all my fault. Since school was over and it had already been decided where I would live, Yudin and I were already at the entrance to her mansion. Wait here a minute. I'll stop by to warn you. Yudin declared and I agreed with her nicely. Suddenly she opened the door and the first thing we saw was someone's huge shoe crushing a cockroach, but despite this, Yudin began to speak. I came back. Sister Ling Fei are you here? I need to talk to you about something. The maid I had been dreaming about appeared before my eyes. Her costume accentuated those wonderful eyes, yes, eyes, as well as toned legs. That's just her voice and the speech she said next, I didn't quite like it. Most of all I hate bugs, bed bugs are the enemy of maids. How dare you enter the house? Are you so tired of living? Turning in my direction, this sexy lady declared. At first I was confused by this, but pulling myself together, I began to push the gentleman's speech. What are they afraid of? What to be afraid of, I'm a magical beast now, not a bug. Besides, I've never killed bugs before. Yudin was surprised by my phrase and decided to ask. Really? Do you really think so? The next second, I was already hugging her leg in a panic. No. 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 I'm scared. I was talking, and Yudin asked me to let go of her leg. What kind of animal is this? The blonde in the maid costume asked. This is my classmate, can we let him stay at our house? The girl asked, but the older woman cut off at the root. Never. She replied. Why? Isn't the house full of empty rooms? Yudin tried to convince her. And if it's a dangerous animal? It's too dangerous to live with a beast that doesn't have a contract. The blonde was talking, but I decided to interrupt her. Excuse me. I started and continued. May I interrupt you? After this phrase, the blonde drew attention to me. I'm not some dangerous magical beast. Don't think that just because you are a servant, you can say something bad about me. I'm definitely not a bug. The girl leaned closer to me, so much so that her bust began to drink even more and asked. You. You can talk. She was surprised, and I confirmed this skill by answering in the affirmative. I don't mind you living here if you behave yourself. Somehow this woman quickly became kinder, and I already stopped being afraid of her and puffed out my chest. Really? Then I'll do what I'm told. The girl smiled at my words. Yes? It beautiful then I agree. She replied. When the situation finally settled down and everyone was in a good mood. The blonde continued the conversation. It's still a long way to lunch, why don't you and Yutong go and choose your room? She offered, pushing her chest forward, which caused a slight blush to appear on my cheeks. Of course, I answered enthusiastically, but in my head I had something completely different. Oh, the maid with big breasts, she's strict, but she looks good. Oh, I can live with her in the future. I was already covered in my wet dreams, from which Yudin's hand pulled me out, which made me incredibly scared. Zhen Lan. She declared. What are you looking at? Getting close to my ear, she continued in a whisper. No matter what. Sweating a little, I answered, and Yudin immediately began to make claims against me. Don't lie. I've seen you staring at Sister Ling Fei all this time. When I heard this, I immediately tried to justify myself by pretending that it was impossible. Me. How could I? I am an ant, an evolved beast, how can I be interested in people? If I really loved people, I would have liked you first. I decided to go on the offensive right away so that Yudin wouldn't bother me anymore, but suddenly. 
Really? Do you really think so? She asked. Sure. You may have a bad temper, but you are very beautiful. It's true. In a panic, I stuttered a little and saw that she had moderated her ardor a little. It was close. Fortunately, I managed. I thought. Suddenly, Yudin made a snide face and continued our dialogue. But even if you like me, it's useless. I have no intention of having a love affair with a magical beast, so I advise you not to think like that. I decided to keep silent, but interesting thoughts were spinning in my head. Funny. How dare you stab me in a sore spot? And then he made the face of a true predator and decided. I'm just trying to get a little more information about the world, and I won't be here for a few days anyway, so I'll be patient. While I was thinking, Yutong had already started walking inside the house, so I hurried after her. Yudin, Yudin, wait for me. I asked and she asked me what I needed. Can you show me the room? I asked. The house turned out to be incredibly huge, but after some time, we finally reached the door, which Yudin opened and said. How do you like this room? My gaze immediately fell on the center of this room. Oh. Such a big bed. How soft. Wow. I immediately plopped down on it and began to spin from side to side. There are many more rooms available. Are you sure you don't want to watch some more? Yudin suggested. But I was already lying on the pillow, anticipating how well I would sleep. No need. This one is perfect. I answered. Yudin left the room and said before closing the door. Good. You can talk to Ling Fei in the kitchen if you feel that something is missing. Then she closed the door, which I stared at and started talking to myself. Finally, there is no one. I exhaled and put my paw to my crystal on my forehead. Master. Master. Are you there? The master immediately responded to my call, got out of the crystal and began to speak. Bastard. What do you want from me? He asked me unceremoniously. Master. Master. Get out. I want to ask you a favor. Okay, wait. I left my staff inside. He answered, and as soon as he took out his staff, he flew up in front of me and continued. Student. Speak. What do you want from me? Master, take me back to the treehouse. I asked for a favor, to which the old man was embarrassed. You can do it yourself. Me? How? Don't I have the skills for this? I asked and the old man answered. To be precise, it should be the book of 10,000 beasts on your head. The book of 10,000 beasts? I was confused. Isn't the Book of Beasts an artifact for summoning? I asked and the old man began to answer. The most important difference between the Book of 10,000 Beasts as a summoning artifact is that its summoning channel is not one-sided, but two-sided. I was immediately delighted with this answer. In the future, I will sign contracts with a few more beasts so that I can go anywhere in the future. I told him, but he immediately stopped me. Don't be too cocky. With your current magic power, you won't be able to open a channel and cast a summoning spell more than a few times before your magic power is depleted. I reached out to the crystal on my forehead and grabbed it. Anyway, I'll just come back for a quick look, and the magic will recover later. Having said that, I threw the crystal into the corner of the room. The book of 10,000 beasts I opened the channel of the magical beast rat. And after my words, the crystal turned into a book and began to shine with a purple flame, which undoubtedly surprised me. Good. Let's take a walk. The master said and began to enter the formed portal. The rodent was sleeping peacefully, while a purple portal was opening near him. When it was fully formed, my master and I came out of the portal right away. I quickly looked around and determined. That's underground. How did the rat get here? I decided to ask. The next moment, I saw my subject, who did not even jump from our appearance. He continued to sleep so peacefully that even a huge snot was puffing out of his nose. As I got closer, I immediately shouted. Wake up already. After that, when I realized that he hadn't woken up, his snot burst. As soon as the rodent started to wake up, I immediately said. Why are you sleeping here? Ignoring my question, the rodent just got up and was surprised by my appearance. Boss, you're already back. After that, I already decided to answer my question. Didn't you say to wait here? I realized that I couldn't get more information out of him about this and decided to ask another one past. Where are the others? The rodent led me through the cave a little further until we saw the ants. Boss, here's the thing. When you left, one of your men came out to command us. The insects that were in front of us are sought youth ants mollusks. Level 7 magical beasts with acid vision abilities. Raven and I thought that you had appointed the chief during your absence. The mouse said, and while we were walking past the ants, I said. 
When I left, my ants were still weak. How did they develop so quickly? At this time, another question popped into my head. Are these worker ants? Why are there so many worker ants here? The rodent walked further along the cave and fell a little behind me, then turned around and shouted. Boss. Here. We entered a huge room that was definitely like an anthill. A bunch of huge holes in the walls, like apartments were located everywhere. The same water from the pool flowed around, through which the bones were laid, instead of bridges. So what? Now do you see how the work is boiling? The mouse asked. Walking through this area, we saw how these holes are created for life. This was done by other rodents, who quickly pulled them out with their clawed paws. Wow. How did you manage to do all this in such a short time? I asked my subordinate. My rats were only responsible for the holes, I don't know the rest, I was asleep. Continuing to walk, we went down the steps and many birds flew past us, on the backs of which sat small ants. It turned out that the worker ants were returned by crows. I was surprised. After some more time, we came to a place where there were other magical beasts that surprised me. Among them was a white ant, who, as it turns out, commanded everyone here, which is what my subordinate told me. Also, one of these beasts was an ant with metal armor on its body. A beast of the ant rider class, evolved from a bodyguard ant, the beast has a strong armor. The second animal was a shadow rat. It is a level 1 beast that can hide in the shadows and is extremely deadly at night. His fur was blue, and his ears were long and stood like pods. Well, accordingly, the third beast, the same white ant, which turned out to be an ant priest. The first magical beast of the second level with an intelligence not inferior to human. A rare magical beast with a very low birth rate. She was giving orders to the other two. The southern side of the cave is used as a shelter and is completed for the night, and food is collected and distributed, if possible, from the surrounding area. She was talking. Suddenly, her conversation was interrupted by the bow of the armored ant and the blue rat, which made the white ant surprised. I hey. What are you doing? After which, she turned around and directly inflamed with love, saying. The ant king is back. The king of ants is a rat. Greetings to you. While she was talking, she was losing consciousness at the same time, suddenly her legs gave way and she began to fall. I quickly picked her up and like a knight on a white horse asked. Are you okay? Hugging her with his paw. I remember you. You're that little worker ant. Are you in charge here now? I asked, after which, the girl realized what had happened and panicked. Please forgive me for commanding without permission. But I decided to support her by putting her on her feet and saying. Well done. That's what I want from you. She was a little embarrassed, but said. Oh. I tried. The next moment, a picture appeared in my head of us standing in military uniform, against a background of the sun, and I enthusiastically began to talk. You have done a great job, and for the future implementation of great plans, such talents as you are needed. From now on, you will be my secretary. If you have any ideas, tell me right away. Then, the rest of the magical beasts began to notice me, including my subordinate Raven. Boss. You're back. He croaked. Yes. You did well. I supported everyone, and a ball appeared to my eye, which rolled past us, leaving fire behind it, and also its antennae were burning with fire. This was my very first friend I met when I came into this world. Zheng Meng. Roll over here. I shouted and he started repeating his name continuously. Now he is a newborn magical beast of a class never seen before, with unknown potential. As soon as Zheng rolled up to us, I told the girl next to me. Let Zheng Meng carry you for now. I offered it to her, realizing that she was unable to stand on her feet, after which she thanked me. As soon as she climbed on top of Zheng, she said. Lord Ant King. Yes? What is it? I asked. Now the nest needs to be prepared separately, I'm not sure I can do it, it depends on you. She immediately gave me a responsible job and I started thinking. Yes. I need to think about it. Why don't we all build it together? I suggested it and all my subordinates exclaimed. Together? As soon as everyone understood what I meant, we all sat down in a circle to discuss everything, and I began my speech. Good. Then it's decided. The crow and the rat solved the issues on their own. An armored ant and a blue rat are looking for and choosing two teams of helper ants to ensure the safety of the nest. As for internal affairs, my secretary will take care of it, and everyone must obey her orders. Now, my secretary will give the first orders on internal affairs. As soon as I finished, the white ant stood up and began her speech. Yes, your majesty. As for internal affairs, I want to say something. 
The nest has just been built. It has not yet completed the construction of several rooms, which creates many problems. The biggest of them is food. The food that we have put aside and the products that we can get from surrogate mothers will only last us for three days. When I heard that, I immediately started thinking. Damn, that's right, and I didn't notice such a serious problem. Then I heard the following words of my secretary. In fact, this problem will be solved by our king. Sir, that's the only reason you went to live in the human world, right? Suddenly I was surprised, not realizing that she was talking about me, but deciding not to fall into the dirt, I immediately said. Of course, it's decided. I'll bring us a lot of food tomorrow. The white ant immediately blushed and admired. Hooray. This is my boss, reliable and brave. You really are our king. After that, I propped my head on my hands and began to reason out loud. Buying food from people is a good idea, but if we do this for a long time, it will certainly be noticed by people, which can create problems. My secretary agreed with me. Your majesty. I've already thought about it. To solve this problem in another way, we need to dig a passage outside the city. Then we can get food on our own. I think the Rat King can handle it. She pointed to my subordinate and he immediately began to respond. Outside the city. It's going to be a long walk. Boss. This can take a long time. Are you letting me start working on this project? I immediately started responding. Are you afraid? You don't need to do this right now, but in the future, if you realize that you don't have enough manpower, you can assemble a team of workers. After that, I started thinking about this plan. This path must be very confusing, one might say a maze. If our base is discovered by humans in the future, then this passage will be the only way to escape. The next moment I got to my feet, about to leave, but before that I decided to ask. All right. Since everything is settled, I have to go back, otherwise people may notice my disappearance. I'll be back tomorrow and I can buy gifts and necessary things for you. Do you have any needs? I asked two of my subordinates, namely the raven and the mouse. Raven started first. Boss. I want a magic stone that could shine in the human world. Then I said Grizz and Boss. I want fried chicken, fried duck, fried chicken knives, chicken, foie gras and. Without ceasing to talk about food, the rodent continued until it was killed by a raven. Shut up and go to hell. You are the biggest enemy for birds. The raven exclaimed and hit the mouse on the ass. Hey. Damn. The stinking crow. Why are you hitting me? I ignored the two of them and turned to the others. How about you guys? What do you want? The armored ant asked for meat. The blue rat asked for large pieces of meat. And my first friend in this world was just repeating the word meng. I was confused by such answers. Why do you all want meat? Don't you have any more desires? I asked and heard my secretary address me. What do you want? It's okay, you can just ask. My king, I have no name. I would like you to give it to me. I was a little embarrassed by this. Name? Don't you want something more useful? Like meat or something else? But despite my questions, she just asked again. No Ant King. I just want my name. I immediately thought about it. Give her a name? So, well, she looks white and smart. I can call her Snow White. I started speaking out loud. Okay, then I'll call you. But I was immediately stopped by my thoughts. No. She's so smart. I can't give her a random name that first came to mind. But suddenly, a great name popped into my head. Snow Smart. How about this? The girl immediately admired. Yes. I like my king. Then I opened the portal from the book again and said. Okay I'm leaving. All bye. And while I was entering the portal, the rodent threw after me. Boss. Be careful and don't forget about my request. The next moment I was already disappearing into the portal, and at this time my secretary looked like a schoolgirl in love, thinking. Smart Snow. I have a name now, too, just like the Ant King. The rodent asked a raven when I had already left. Raven. Has she become a maniac? You don't understand anything. This is what we call first love. Stupid. The next moment, I was already out of the portal in the Yutong house and immediately looked around. Fortunately, no one noticed me, and I hurried to check what the maid was doing. Looking out from around the corner, I saw a blonde who was setting the table and thought. Ha. Huh. It looks like she didn't realize that I hadn't been missing for a while. I thought and decided to go into the kitchen, muttering to myself. If I was discovered, I really don't know how I would explain everything. Suddenly, Yudin was behind me. She came closer to me and asked. What do you think? Lingfei is very pretty, isn't she? 
I, without even realizing what had happened, immediately began to answer what I really think. Yes. Ling Fei is very pretty and she is a maid, and most importantly, she has big tits. Good taste. A girl with red hair suddenly spoke. But as soon as I realized what I said and to whom, I immediately panicked. Yudin. Haha. <laughs> You're very pretty too. You have very pretty hair, and also, and. I stuttered, not knowing what to come up with, but was interrupted. Hmm. Keep lying to me. I was looking for you upstairs while you were here and spying on your sister. If I'm pretty, why didn't you peek at me? She said these words calmly, but then it was as if a demon possessed her, and she attacked me with a scream. Damn it. I think you're always lying to me. Wait, don't kill me. I was wrong. The next moment, we were already sitting at the table and eating the food prepared by Ling Fei, but my body still hurt from the blows of Yutong, and I could barely hold back tears. Lin Fei saw our exchange and my condition now, so she decided to ask. Yudin. Don't you think you were a little harsh? To which the girl with red hair confidently stated. He lied to me. If I don't teach him a lesson, he won't learn anything. It even seems to me that I am not cruel enough with him. While Yudin was saying such evil words. The blonde came up to me and started scratching my head, saying. If Yutong hits you again, just come to me and she won't dare hit you again. Wu looked at Ling Fei hopefully and answered briefly. Okay. Suddenly, Yudin's friend, whom we all know, came into the kitchen and asked. Yudin, are you there? To which the red-haired girl was surprised. Lily. Why are you here? I thought today it was my turn to come to you and have fun. Hearing the question, Lily answered. I was on my way to the market and decided to stop by your place on the way. Yudin, hearing the answer, immediately began to get up from her seat. The market? I want to go with you too. I heard that there are a lot of new stores on the market. Yudin answered, walking towards her friend. I also, after hearing their conversation, became a little interested in it. After all, I promised gifts to my subordinates. Yudin walked up to Lily, and the second one started taking something out of her bag. Here you go. This is a potion for Kayaku, I finally made it. Yudin took the bottle in her hands and thanked her friend, after which she decided to go back to the table. Lily, wait a minute. I'll finish my meal quickly and go straight to the market with you. Having said that, she turned her attention to the table and was surprised. Hey. Where's my steak? She asked and looked at me suspiciously. Jen Lan. Can you tell me where my steak is from the plate? When I heard her question, I didn't pay attention to her, but just continued to wipe my mouth with a napkin, saying. I ate it, it was very tasty. Yudin immediately started hitting on me. Not only did you eat my steak, you even admitted it and you don't feel guilty. My face didn't even change and I just answered. Can you hit someone who saved you, but you won't let them eat your steak? Alas. I thought living in your house would be better than camping on the street. I didn't think you were really like that. Since you want it so badly. I'll just buy you another steak. After that, I quickly blew up from my seat and ran to the blonde. Lin Fei. Your food is so delicious that I couldn't resist eating a portion of Yutong. This was my insidious plan, and while Ling Fei began to address Yutong, I hid behind the blonde's back. Yudin. Wait a minute. I'll make you some more. Lin Fei offered, but Yutong was offended. No, thanks. I'll buy myself something to eat at the market. The market? I wondered. Does she mean them all? I was thinking while Yudin went towards Lily. Good. I was wrong to get angry and beat you up. Yudin spoke from under her forehead, and Lily decided to ask who I was, but the girl with red hair ignored her. Lily, come on. She told me, and I was thinking. Interesting. I need to follow them and check everything. As soon as Yudin and Lily went out into the corridor, I looked around the corner, and Lily's bird immediately noticed me. Pretty boy. Do you want to talk about me? She asked. Yellow bird. What a beautiful bird. Yes. Yes. You, come to me. The bird, hearing my words, immediately slowed down and landed on the ground next to me. You have pretty good taste. You can appreciate my charm. She told me. Yes, yes, of course. I never lose sight of beauty. I squatted down to speak more quietly and the bird heard me. In fact, when I first saw you, I immediately realized that you are not so simple. When you fly, I see contempt for the rules of heaven and earth. Really? The bird was surprised. Be sure. I won't lie to you about such things. The bird immediately hugged me and started crying. Only you could notice something special about me. You seem to have lived here for quite a long time. It seems to me that you know everything in the neighborhood. 
I said, and the bird, starting to wipe her tears, said. Yes, I've been to all the places nearby. Excellent. Then, probably, you know where the market is located? He asked and the bird, thrusting his chest forward, said. Of course I know. My hostess Lily and her friend are just going there. We continued our dialogue with this bird, and I asked her. Can you take me there? The bird made the most imperturbable face and said. Sure. No problems. Then she paid attention to my wounds and continued. But before that, let me heal your wounds first. That surprised me. Do you know healing magic? I asked, and at that time the bird brought its wings together, and a blue aura lit up between them, after which the bird said. Sure. Healing magic is my middle name. And as soon as he finished saying that, a blue glow emanating from his wings headed towards me. At one point, all the cuts and abrasions that were on my head began to overgrow, and it became easier for me. Wow. Great. I feel better. I exclaimed, and the bird proudly declared. Haha. <laughs> this is a low-level healing magic that can only heal minor injuries. Then the bird turned to me with its booty and flew to the exit. You wanted to go to the market, right? Then move, quickly. I was interested in the magic of this chick. Low-level magic, but it has such an amazing effect. Amazing. I said. Literally in a few tens of minutes, we were already on the huge market square. A huge number of people walked here and there. Someone was buying fruits or vegetables, someone was buying livestock for a home farm. In general, life was boiling and I and the bird were among all this crowd. In order not to stand out too much, I put on my old raincoat and put on a hood, so people won't pay attention to me. After all, who knows what can happen if everyone sees a huge ant in the middle of the market. Suddenly, a bird sat on a pedestal on the fence and pointed its wing forward, it turns out before that, we were not in the main part of the market. Here, look. The bird said and continued. I can't fly any further, so go shopping by yourself. I immediately began to think out a plan. So, well, I'm at the market, here I can buy gifts for my subordinates, but how do I do it? Suddenly I started talking louder, addressing nowhere, which surprised the bird. Master. Master. Do you hear me? The next moment, the old man got out of the crystal and declared. Do you need something from me again, my disciple? The master asked, and at that time the bird was ready to go to another world, from what he saw. While the bird was fainting, I asked the old man. Master. Do you also know how you can buy a lot of food at one time? The old man, as someone who knows everything in this world, calmly began to talk. Oh. It's easy to handle. You can just go to any store and contact a seller of products. But there is one but. The items I left you. These are items from 700 years ago, so first you need to contact an antique dealer. I was a little surprised and decided to ask. An antique dealer? Master? They gave me so many things, and it turns out to be such an expensive product. I immediately began to turn my head in search of an antique shop, but the master helped me in this, pointing out the direction. Together with the bird, we approach the store, which was called the Ancient Chamber of Commerce, this is what I need. I looked at the open door of the antique shop and wondered. Hmm. If I walk in just like that, won't it raise questions? And immediately after the question, my master got out from behind the cloak and said. You still have me, your master. As soon as you get inside, cover your face and don't open your mouth. I'll do the talking myself. You just need to come in and listen to me. I did as my master said. Going inside, I immediately noticed a closet with a huge number of interesting things. In addition to him, a green-haired girl was cleaning inside, and an elegant man was sitting at the table and writing something. The girl immediately noticed me and turned to me. Good afternoon, did you want something? I, covering my face, or rather my muzzle and lowering it a little, pretended that I was talking, but my master was actually talking. Hello, I have not come to buy, I would like to sell a few things. The girl immediately decided to clarify some points. Sell things? We only deal in treasures and antiques. But the master decided to confirm her words. Exactly. All the things I brought are antiques. Moreover, this is a very expensive antique. Then the antique dealer himself decided to take the floor and looking closer to him, I realized that this is not an elegant man, but more of an alcoholic, but that's not the point. Hmm. You're so naive, but it's still interesting to look at what you call very expensive antiques. This man spoke, and at this time my master turned to me. Don't worry. All my antiques are really very expensive. The antique dealer looked at me with an even more humiliating look. Hmm. A big deal? If I tell you about even one of the big deals I've made, you'll be scared to death. 
The antique dealer got angry, still treating my statement with contempt. The master immediately decided to reduce his ardor a little. Not angry. Let me just show you what I brought. After that, I took the thing out of my raincoat and handed it to the man. Here, please, take a good look. I handed him a coin, which the antique dealer immediately took in his hand and began to examine. Hmm. Isn't it just a spoiled gold coin? At first he said, but after looking closer, he exclaimed. Em. This is. This is a coin of the country of dragon patterns 700 years ago. Surprise was visible on the man's face, but he decided to show by his appearance that my statement was nothing to him. This thing is fine, but one coin can't be considered a bargain for me. He said and handed the coin back. After which, after listening to his words, I stretched my paw deep into the cloak and took out a whole bag of coins, stating. How about a hundred of these coins? I asked, and the man's eyes almost popped out. All the gold coins of that time had to be stolen by the dragon tribe. I'm surprised they ended up with someone else. Surprised, he said and continued with a kind face. This is a really big deal. Why didn't you say so right away? Follow me, please. The antique dealer pointed with his hand down the corridor and said to the girl with green hair. Sue. Why are you just standing there and watching? Bring the tea. When we sat down at the table and the girl with green hair brought tea with cookies, the master decided to start a conversation. Your mood changes so fast. To which the antique dealer stated. Sir. It's a good joke, I treat everyone like that. After which the master continued. Okay, whatever. So how much are you offering? He declared and at that moment the assistant of the antique dealer brought tea to me, revealing a gorgeous view of her breasts, which is why I involuntarily turned my head in her direction. Suddenly, the master started shouting at me. Jen. What are you doing? Quickly turn your head back. But I was already so full of my dreams that even saliva flowed from my mouth. The antique dealer was a little surprised by what was happening and decided to call me. As soon as the girl with green hair turned around and left, I immediately pulled myself together and turned to the man, and the master tried to get out of the situation. Oh. Haha. <laughs> Sorry. I just saw a fly and got distracted. Meanwhile, the assistant left our room and walked down the corridor until she reached another door and began to open it with a stony face. She entered the armory, in the far corner of which there was a large cabinet and various types of weapons hung on the wall. The next moment, she began to take off her cleaning lady's costume, exposing her toned body, after which she opened a large closet in which clothes were hanging. She changed into clothes that looked more like combat clothes, with a corset and wristbands. While she was finishing dressing, another girl with green hair, only younger, came into the room. She immediately started talking. Sister? Did someone else come to this stinking boss? To which the elder replied. Yeah. This is the only one worth attacking this month, so the boss will definitely not let him go. The younger one continued. Good. If we miss the moment, who knows when the next one will turn up. Then I'll go get ready too. A little green-haired girl declared. Holding a large knife in her hands, the antique dealer's assistant said. No. I plan to do these myself. You don't have to help me. The younger one decided to try to convince her sister, but she came up to her, hugged her and continued, interrupting. Don't worry. This will be the last time, because after that, we won't have to work for this stupid boss. Having stopped hugging her younger sister, the older one put a mask on the floor of her face and said. I'll be back soon, don't worry. At the same moment, our deal with the antique dealer took place. There was a huge pile of gold coins in front of me, and the man was talking. Agreed, then for each of your coins, I give 80 ordinary coins. Only 8,000 coins, please spend wisely. I was surprised at this turn. Suddenly. There's so much money here. After that, with the help of a crystal on my forehead, I sucked the whole pile into myself and was about to leave when the antique dealer tried to stop me. Sir. I have a lot of valuable things, are you sure you don't want to take a look at them? But I wasn't interested, so, continuing to leave, I said. I have things to do, I don't have time. Having already left the shop, the antique dealer shouted after me, with a kind smile. Take care of yourself. I look forward to seeing you again. Yes, yes, of course. I threw back, moving further away from the store. The man smiled for a long time, until at one point he turned in the direction of his shop and began to speak. Sue. I'm counting on you. Check the information about where he got this product from. This time we caught a big fish. I suspect that this brat has discovered a place full of historical treasures. There is. 
The girl with green hair answered. And before the girl left, he seriously added. You can't fail this time. Is that clear? Yes sir. Sue nodded. Suddenly, the man remembered something else. Taking out a bottle of liquid from his jacket, he said. This is a powerful potion that can strengthen you for a short time. The girl was surprised by this and asked. A power potion? Why? This time the fish is bigger than usual. If he finds you, I hope you can get him to reveal the secret of the coins. But I'm afraid your strength isn't enough, that's why I gave you this potion. This is for security purposes. The antique dealer said, but the girl misunderstood him and decided to ask. Are you asking me if I hurt people? Don't be angry. The man calmed her down and continued. As long as you act like a professional and you're not discovered, you won't need this potion. Oh. Yeah. This is your last mission, right? Relax, because once everything is done, I will keep my promise and give you and your little sister freedom. Thank you very much. A beautiful girl said calmly while kneeling, and the next moment she simply disappeared from her seat. The man just glanced at the place where she had just been standing and chuckled. While they were plotting against me. I walked around the market and bought food for my subordinates. And so, when I came to the next store, a huge crowd of people followed me, whispering among themselves. This is the 16th store. He's really rich. I, on the other hand, did not pay attention to all these people, but conducted a profitable deal. The seller asked me. Are you sure you want to buy everything? Hearing his question, I just held out a bag of coins and exclaimed. What nonsense, hurry up. After that, he pulled all the goods that were behind his counter into his crystal, then turned around and started walking further, asking people to make way for the. Going around the corner and hiding from prying eyes, I took out a bag of coins and began to count them. I still have 170 pieces left after buying a monthly ration and gifts for subordinates. It's amazing that there's anything left. The master also decided to count our money. For one old gold coin, you can get 80 ordinary ones. For one ordinary coin, you can buy a two-month ration for an ordinary family. We still have over 7,000 coins. Zhen. We are rich. Showing a wide smile, the master exclaimed. The next moment I took off my hood and declared. Master, come back. This fat bird will wake up soon, and I do not know how I will explain everything. Okay call me if anything happens. The master replied. The girl with the green ones was standing around the corner and watching us, when she saw my true appearance, she thought. It's actually a magical beast. Before he left, the master decided to tell me. Oh. We've been being chased by a second level girl for a long time, you'll figure it out later. When I heard that, I was surprised. Surveillance? The second level? Impossible. When did she start? I asked, and the master calmly continued. Around the time we left the antique shop. Antique shop. Why didn't you tell me before? I exclaimed, to which the master replied that I had not asked. Then we went around another corner and the girl decided to follow us. After running literally a few meters and looking around the corner, a girl with green hair bumped into me and I said. Beautiful girl, are you looking for me? My words scared her and the next moment, like some gymnast, she did several backflips, breaking the distance, after which she reached behind her back with her hand. When I saw such a show, I clapped my hands and said in surprise. Oh. You are worthy of the second level. So smart. The girl was upset, saying. Shit. Mission failed? She asked herself. You've been chasing me for so long, what do you want? I decided to ask, and while we were standing opposite each other, different thoughts were spinning in our heads. Isn't it supposed to be an old man? Why a demon beast can speak human language? Did I follow the wrong person? Not right impossible. The girl thought. She is at the third order, I am at first order level 3. She is seven levels higher than me. According to the standard of this world, it's impossible for me to beat her by demon beast skill. Looks like I can only use fist and summoning spell to win. It was in my head. Then the girl decided that her mission had failed and she needed to retreat, but at the last moment, when she had already turned around and started to leave, she remembered the words of the boss. As he said, this is the last mission after which she and her younger sister will finally be free. After which, she grabbed the knife and trembling decided. Chickpeas. I can't let this man keep us enslaved any longer. Looking at the girl, I didn't quite understand what was going on. Why is she hesitating? Why hasn't she done anything yet? How embarrassing. I thought, because we have been standing in silence for more than a minute and looking at each other. Yup. Take a closer look. Her boob are huge. 
it must be a beautiful laid behind that mask. I kept thinking. Suddenly, the fat bird that I carried with me all the time, after fainting, woke up and began to panic. And bro. Where are we? Who is this person? Why does my head hurt? I said it calmly. Oh. Bird bro, you're finally awake. And while we were talking, the girl decided in her head. It seems the only choice is to attack first. Then she immediately pushed off the ground and ran in my direction. In just a few seconds, she overcame the distance between us that the dust was already rising under her feet. Fortunately, I managed to react to her lunge and dodged her wide swing with the knife, but I was very scared. And when I calmly exhaled, the girl raised her leg to strike and clearly hit me in the chest with a swing. I fell to the ground, holding on to the place of impact. It was really big. While I was lying down, the girl stood over me, pushing her chest forward, saying. If you don't want to suffer, then answer my question. I grabbed my chest and started screaming when the pain finally reached my brain. Aya. It hurts. Painfully. I cried, and the girl made the most grieving face. But the next moment she realized something and made a stony face, saying. No need to pretend. I didn't use any magic on my last hit. But I didn't listen to her, continuing to roll on the floor, screaming how much it hurts me. Finally, this penetrated the girl and she began to think. Apparently I hit him too hard. Then she leaned over to me and said. Sorry. I'm sorry. Are you okay? I immediately grabbed her tits with my paws and began to stroke them, which made the girl blush, apparently she liked it, and I said. There's something wrong here. And she answered. Yeah. After that, I blew up from my seat, looking at my paws and breaking the distance. Wow. How big they are. I said, and the girl hugged her breasts and was offended. Bastard. How dare you deceive me. Never think about running away. She shouted, and I, whistling, tried to convince her to kill me. Lady, you're such a lovely person, just let me go. I'll kill you. She shouted and again rushed to my side with a knife in her hands. I decided this time, too, not to stand still, my hands began to glow, imbued with energy and the next moment I put my finger forward and said. Then try this. The blue jet that I released from my finger flew towards the girl with green hair, but the next moment she jumped aside and said. Hey. Too much useless protection. And the next moment, she hit my beam with her sword hand. I began to push harder and harder, which the girl did not expect after thinking. What is this skill? Impossible. And there was something to worry about, because the next moment she could no longer defend herself, and my beam threw her back a few meters until she was in the nearest wall. Watching the dust rise, I exclaimed with a proud face. Haha. <laughs> As expected, I am the strongest. The girl was lying in the wreckage, it was obvious from her face that she was not at ease, so I said. Since you're badly injured, I won't finish you off. But the next moment, the girl started to get to her feet. Wait. I'm not done yet. She said and I was surprised. You've been badly injured. Why don't you give up? I asked. Rising to her feet and hiding behind her back the bottle that her boss had given her, she said. You're just a demonic beast, so you won't understand me. Really? I exclaimed. Then I'm sorry. I finished and saw how the girl started drinking the potion from the bottle, thinking. My opponent is just a demonic beast, I have nothing to worry about. And as soon as she finished the potion, her eyes bulged. She began to breathe heavily and clutched her chest. What's happening? I asked the question, surprised. In the next moment, her eyes became like an animal's, the white turned red, and blood flowed. Literally a second later, she threw an empty bottle at me, I could barely react to it and dodge. Suddenly, my master started talking while sitting in the crystal. Zheng. Be careful. She drank a potion that increased her strength. Potion. Was I surprised? Not happening. I didn't want to believe it. The girl continued to sit in place, it was unclear what was in her head. Suddenly, the air around her began to distort, and all because she began to imbue her legs with the strength to roar. The next moment, she disappeared from her seat and in an instant was in front of me. Hitting my knee with such force that it knocked all the spirit out of my body and sent me far back. She wasn't going to stop there. After making another jerk, she quickly ran behind me while I was still in flight and sent me in the other direction with a blow to the back. And then another, and another, and another, and another not letting me calmly fall to the ground and at least catch my breath a little. Finally, falling to the ground, I began to howl in pain that even my spirit of a person from a previous life began to fly out of my body. What a painful life. I said. 
The next moment, the girl sat down with her elastic ass on my back and said. If you don't want to die, answer my questions honestly. Where are the ancient remains? She declared and I was surprised. Remains? What kind of remains? I don't know. Suddenly she bent down to my face and grabbed my hand, saying. As expected, you won't tell me the truth without being tortured. And when she put her knife to my hand, I started begging. I really don't know anything. You are welcome. Let me go. Then she put a knife to my face and I started screaming. Wait. Wait a minute. Could you formulate your question in more detail? Information. I promise I'll tell you everything I know. Lying down on me more comfortably, the girl rephrased the question. If you use any tricks again, I'll kill you on the spot. Okay. I'll be blunt. Where did you get all these ancient gold coins? What? I exclaimed and continued. If you're talking about ancient gold coins, then why did you ask about some remains? Spit it out. She put her knife closer. If you know something, you don't say too much. I know. I declared, exhaling. I'll say. In fact, these are gold coins. How should I put it? In fact, these gold coins were left to me by my master. The legacy of the master? She asked, continuing to lie on my back. Are you kidding me? How can a demonic beast like you have a master? If you had told the truth, I would have let you go, but. I'm not lying. I thought, feeling the girl press me down harder. She finally stood up, but I didn't like her next words. I'm going to cut off your hands. She said. Ah. No. Save me, master. You are welcome. When suddenly, the old man spoke. Okay. Zheng Lang. Next do as I said. Use your evolutionary midfoot to prick her. When suddenly the blood gushed out of nowhere. What happened? The girl asked and turned around, seeing how some kind of sting bit into her ass. This, she said. The master started telling me what to do. Quickly. Use formic acid to attack her in the face. Don't give her time to think. The girl, of course, paid attention to my trick, and I was thinking. Actually dare to use such pretty trick. The girl covered her face with her knife and beat off the spit, after which the master continued. She escaped the attack. What a pity. Break the distance with her. I decided to object. Master. She's faster than me. I'm afraid it's useless to keep a distance from her. But the master, as the sage of the six paths, made a smart face and continued. You don't have to worry about it. You just pricked her thigh, through which magic is transmitted to the foot. It is difficult for her to make a quick and flexible action. As long as you won't let her get near to you then you are safe. Understood, I replied, but the master continued. All right, Zhen Lang. Your high wisdom allows you to think, but it also erases your instinct to fight as a demon beast. This is the first battle after your evolution. I will give you a battle class by the way. I admired my teacher and happily said. With master by my side, then a stupid disciple also can become the strongest. After that, the master began to instruct me again. Humph. It's no use to boost me. I will not help you every time. All right. The distance is enough, quickly use acid to hold her. All right, master. I answered and spat acid at the girl with green hair again. Don't do anything stupid. Beating off my spitting, the girl screamed and ran in my direction. The master continued to support me. Keep your distance well, don't give her a chance to fight back. The next moment, I hit the ground with all my might, and the girl was surprised. What are you thinking? To which I replied to her. I'm attacking the ground to break your body balance. Then the master started talking again. Take the chance to fully attack her when she is unable to stand. Give her a deadly attack. Understood. I exclaimed and started feeding my paws with energy again, shooting towards the girl. The girl fell to the ground from my attack, her mask and clothes were damaged. The girl held her breasts with her hand, because if she let go, then I could see her completely naked. After I realized that I could exhale a little, I started talking. Actually you are the sales girl of Antique Chamber of Commerce. Did your boss send you here? The girl heard my question and began to answer indignantly. Damn. I can't believe I lost to you again. But you'd better give up, I'm not telling you anything. The master immediately declared while sitting in the crystal. Stupid. That shop is black shop. I immediately repeated his last words. Black shop. Then the master decided to say his last words. The rest is up to you, I want to sleep for a while. I heard his words and started thinking out loud. What to do? Actually the one behind all these is her boss. If I get exposed, I cannot go to school anymore. After that, I came up with a great plan. Right. 
her boss still doesn't know what happened, if I lock her up then no one will know things about ancient gold coins. Then I started laughing maliciously and rubbing my hands, looking at a wonderful girl with big breasts and green hair, because of which she exclaimed. You. What are you trying to do? After that, I started dreaming even more, continuing to talk. Nothing. Don't be afraid. I just want to invite you to my house and stay there for a few days. While saying all this, I did not notice how a wooden sword appeared behind my head, which subsequently hit me on the head, and then a scream followed. Go die. Bastard. The one who hit me was the younger sister of the green-haired girl. With a wooden sword at the ready, she said. Sister belongs to Shun Ling, other than Shun Ling, no one else can touch her. Next, this little pest stepped over my body and exclaimed. Sister. Are you okay? To which the elder replied. Shun Ling. Why are you here? Didn't I tell you not to follow me? Sun quickly threw herself into her sister's arms and said. I was worried so I came here secretly. Sister. Don't leave me. Okay. Don't cry. Let's go back. While there was tenderness between the sisters and they were trying to recover, the fat bird was standing around the corner clearly worried about my health, but what she said next was a shock to me if I heard it. Bro aunt. It must have been for the sake of saving and protecting me. Wait for me. I will find someone to help you. Of course I hope for him, but I couldn't say it because I was already out. I woke up already from the flow of water into my muzzle, tied to the wall. What happened? Where am I? I asked, not understanding anything. There were two girls in front of me, the ones who offended me. Sister. This guy is awake. The younger one said. Be careful, this guy is very cunning. The older one answered and I was just shocked. Shun started pushing her older sister out of the room, or rather the dungeon, saying. Then let me handle it. Sister. Go to change your clothes first. Don't worry. I will keep an eye on this guy. The younger sister said and, despite the objections of the elder, closed the door. Further, she turned to me with such a look that I was immediately scared. It seems that the situation is not very good. After which, Shun started taking out her sword, saying. You. What do you want to do? Let me tell you. I won't yield to violence. Don't be rash. The next moment, something happened that I definitely did not expect. Laughing a little, she began to unbutton her outer clothes and turned to me and said. Let you see my power. And she poisoned an air kiss, but I was only more confused, and if my paws were free, I would have made a worldwide hand face gesture. Strange. Why is it useless? Is it because my magic is too weak? Shun was surprised, but I decided to answer her why it didn't work for her. What's strange? I will end up in jail if I rape a minor. And. I think I am in your prison now. No. That's not the point, you are not my type. There is no meaning for you to continue your sexual harassment? I asked, but the girl decided to continue. Sexual harassment? Can't you see it? I am showing you my magic. Hearing this, I decided to answer her. Magic? Since you said that I feel like I have a stomachache. Suddenly the girl explained to me why she decided to do it. Woo stomachache? I did what the girl in the whorehouse told me to. Then I decided to repeat her words. Shun Ling, let me teach you a magic that will let male creatures that only use their lower body to think obedient. You will think it useful when you throw up. Suddenly I decided to try to apply a plan that suddenly got into my head and said with a suspicious look. Well. I think this magic need to be demonstrated by that girl herself, why don't? But the girl abruptly interrupted me. No. What if you run away when I'm not here? Damn. She's so cautious. I thought and said it out loud. Don't you guys want to know about the source of the old coins? I can tell you, but before that, you must answer me three question. To which the girl calmly reacted and said. Three question for a secret. That's not air. Then I started talking. Tell me why golden coins are more valuable than silver coins, although they are all coins. And suddenly, it dawned on the girl. I see, you mean that your secret is more important than mine. Then I thought. She's so gullible. Feeling hopeful. Hello everyone. I hope there is someone waiting for the continuation of this recap. Be sure to support this video and enjoy watching it. And despite that, you agree with it all. But I'm very surprised that you're not afraid at all about the fact that I'm asking about some of your secrets. Wouldn't I then know more than I should? Hmm, I'm afraid of you only in your dreams. She says it with such conceit that it just makes me laugh, but she keeps talking. And as for this treasure incident, I won't tell you for sure that we're being forced by the damn boss to do all these things. 
Is she crazy? No, she's definitely an idiot. I didn't even ask her anything, and she just told me everything about her boss. She's too simple a girl who doesn't seem to know how to keep secrets, but you don't really look like bad people at all, so why are you doing such terrible things, I asked them. They really don't look like bad people. In response, the girl says only one thing. You're a demonic beast, that's why you don't understand what exactly is wrong. In fact, my sister and I were bought by the boss in an illegal market. So we are her slaves, and as long as she has our slave contract, we have to follow all his commands. Wait, what? A slave contract? Are you serious? What kind of contract is this? And why do you have to follow your boss just because of this weird thing? I don't really understand about this. Well, look, to put it simply, this is a spiritual magical format designed to torture people. A terrible thing. God, this is terrible. This world is much dirtier than I thought, how can such a thing only be used? It's just unthinkable. Yes, that's for sure. This is the most terrible thing. She understands it too, but why don't they do anything about it? You can definitely do something about it. Wait, but why is this the way it is? Your sister is very skilled, so why don't you think about stealing this terrible contract and just not running away? This is a much better option than simply obeying all the orders and words of your master. We've already thought about it too. Since this is really the best option possible, since we will easily be free. But there is one problem. The power that our boss has is too great. Under her leadership there is a large number of mercenaries among rich people. So a very sad fate awaits us if such simple servants as we are caught stealing from such a person. But you don't have to worry now everything is fine. She is really very calm for this whole situation. Quite recently, to be more precise, a few days ago, our boss said that we would be able to get freedom as soon as we completed several tasks that he would give us. And it just so happens that you're our last assignment. Now you answer my questions. You ask me your questions, so now it's my turn. Yeah, of course. I can get it in my face. You have to be careful. The treasure that the owner left me and the underground base must remain a secret and cannot be revealed in any way. So I'll just tell them some random place. I must think. So actually I do not know many places that I can name them, I have rarely been anywhere. The school in the Yutong house cannot be mentioned for sure, so the best option is to say that the main nest is in the forest. This is the most logical thing because it corresponds to my aunt essence. The unusual environment and a lot of grass proves that this place is very reliable. Since I don't want to be a suspect for even a short period of time. Good. Then I'll tell you my secret. At the same moment, while the main character tells everything, not forgetting about the little things, beautiful girls with red red and golden long hair, Yu Tong and Lily, turn to some merchant. I'm sorry, but my product is already sold out, so it's better to come back next time when the store is replenished. One of the girls is very surprised by this. Sold out? Already? How can this be? She is indignant. Not only to my store, but all the products that were presented in this market were sold. I will even say that they were bought by the same person. Really? I do not believe. This is how rich a person must be to buy everything. This red-haired girl is very angry because of this situation. Damn. Yes, how could such a thing happen, some weirdo bought up all the goods, it's unthinkable. God forbid I catch this little asshole, and I'll arrange it for him. But her friend calmly begins to calm her down. Come on, you Tong, don't get angry because of this simple failure, it still happens. We've already definitely bought everything we wanted, so I suggest you come to my house and have a snack. While the red-haired woman was cursing that rich asshole, she noticed something strange. Something flying by the shop benches. What's it? Oh, is that a baby bird? Ha ha. Just look at this. She attracts the attention of her friend to this chick. This bald fat bird looks like your egg, don't you think? Oh. It really looks like that egg, only why did the feathers on his head disappear? My god, this is clearly too much, what happened to this chick? Almost his entire head is clean and even without a single feather. And it looks very strange. Who could do this to an ordinary bird? Says Yu Tong. In response to this, another girl offers one idea. Exactly. We can put some kind of restorative on the head of this bird. This may help the chick. So maybe his feathers can regrow until tomorrow. The chick is crying a lot in the hands of this girl, and it is not clear from what exactly. This chick is not a demonic monster that will attack everyone indiscriminately. He definitely doesn't piss other people off. Well, maybe then other demonic monsters are doing it. The girl Yu Tong suggested. 
Or some brat did it, she continued. But why remove all the feathers on her head, her interlocutor does not quite understand. She turned very belligerently to the chick and said with all determination. Don't worry, Eggy. We have to find and punish the person who did this to you. It is very good. If they follow me, I can lead them to the ant. So I can save my good friend. I started tweeting to them, flying in the right direction. They decided to follow me. A girl with red hair rushed after me with all her fury, telling her friend. Lily. Come on, go faster, catch up with me. We're going to punish these assholes for what they did to your egg. But her friend did not expect such rage at all. What? Right now? It's already starting to get dark, so it's going to be hard to see soon. This is not a good time for revenge. The next moment we return to the ant, and he has already told his secret to the girl. Having learned everything she needs, she leaves the room, closing the door more tightly behind her. It's amazing how she bought into this lie. Why children nowadays do not care about their safety at all, so much so that they are so easily deceived is incredible. But since she's gone, I need to use this moment. I need to break these ropes and escape. It will be easier than ever. I start pulling the rope, but nothing happens. What? Why don't these ropes break? Is something wrong? I don't understand. That's right, now I'm an ant and I have no muscles at all, I'm completely empty. It's very depressing. Stop. Does this mean I wasted my superpower? How to understand it? I am very saddened by this fact, how could this happen my life is definitely numbered. If I stay here for a long time, I will definitely burn alive and no one will remember about me. What should I do? Exactly. In this situation, the owner can help me. Master. Where you are the owner. I shout to my master, but no one answers me, I begin to doubt that I will survive at all. He's really asleep, so I can't get to him. So I definitely won't be able to rely on him in this situation. It's getting sadder by the minute. So I don't want to die. I need to think about how I can save myself. Exactly. They didn't find my evolving body part. Suddenly. Just the same, I can use it to cut the rope. So you just need to work hard. Hurrah. I did it. The rope was cut. As a result, I cut all the ropes, both on my legs and on my hands. It was difficult, but I managed. Finally I was able to get up from this cold floor. I did it and I'll get out of here soon. I didn't expect this part of the body to be useful, but then suddenly it saved my life. It is very good. But how my legs and arms ache after the ropes, they rubbed everything on me. I slowly begin to leave the room in which I was tied up, looking for someone else besides me outside this room, so that I would not be caught again and tied to the wall. After all, I went out of the room into the corridor. After checking everything again, I made sure that I was alone. It's good that the corridor is empty. With joy, I ran forward without even looking where exactly. Ha ha. Bye girl, I shouted. I'm not going to play any games with you. You won't see me at all anymore. But as soon as I ran further down the corridor, I noticed only the doors. There's nothing special about them, I checked, they led to other rooms, and there's not even one window. This is a dead end. There aren't even any windows, how is this possible? I started to panic. But someone made a sound down the hall, who is it? There's definitely someone there. I said out loud. It's starting to get stressful. Well, I'm standing still, I need to hide urgently. So I started urgently looking for a place where I could hide, and I went into one of the rooms. This room was similar to all the others I saw when I checked the various doors in the hallway, but it was different in some ways. There were a huge number of things in it, and they definitely could not be called junk, everything looked too expensive. There were various paintings and various types of weapons hanging on the walls, even a full suit of armor was assembled on the side of the door. There were all sorts of stuffed animals nearby, some even hung on the ceiling, they all looked unusual. A little further there were bags and chests lying around, and a pile of gold lay nearby. I decided to hide in stuffed animals. Just at this moment, a man in a red and yellow suit and a ridiculous hat comes into this room, it seems that I heard him in the corridor. I strained hard, making a furious face to merge with other animals, trying not to even breathe, you never know if he would feel my breath. Continuing his walk, clearly thinking about something of his own, he abruptly turns around when he passes by me and other scarecrows. I don't seem to blend in much with these scarecrows. This man seems to be the owner of all these things. While I'm thinking about what I can do, he comes close to me, starting to talk to himself. I don't remember it standing here early. It's definitely from here. God, who put this stupid animal here? It doesn't exactly fit into this collection. 
Did he call me stupid? What an outrage. He looks a lot worse than me with these bruises under his eyes, just like a corpse. It's very infuriating. Suddenly one of the sisters who grabbed me comes into the room, what is she doing here? Master. She screams as soon as she opens the door. The owner? He? Now it's clear who that girl was telling me about. Well, at least she distracted him from me, which pleases me the most. But she may notice me, what to do? Oh. You. How is the mission going? I hope it was a success? I have high hopes for you. A man asks her. All is well, master. I already know where the treasure place is. It remains only to go to that place and make sure that it is really there. While she talks about it, he eventually approaches a man who just turned around to the girl, but did not move away from me. When she approached her master, she saw me. What should I do, she realized that it was me, not a scarecrow. Not bad. Well done. It's all good. That leaves you with less than half the case. While he was talking to her. She persistently burned me with her eyes, what to do. But she doesn't seem to be doing anything. The mission is completed, I'm sure, as well, hold on, this is a drawn map of ancient ruins. Oh, it really is a map of ancient ruins. Let me take a look at this. Let's look at its quality. The man carefully examined the map that this girl had drawn. So, in fact, if I remember correctly, this place is inhabited by a large number of ants, perhaps even hundreds. I don't understand at all if this man is wailing or if he's just surprised about this place. In response to this, the girl responds quite calmly. I had heard a lot about this place, but even so I was still surprised. And actually I think it wasn't a mistake. The man reacted calmly to her words, it was evident from his face when he turned to her. Good. You've done your job well. If you have nothing more to say, then you can be free. Is that all? As another girl told me, as soon as they complete the last mission, they can be released from the slave contract, according to the assurance of their master. As soon as I remembered about it, the girl also decided to mention it. Please wait. You said that if all the missions are completed, you will release my sister and me from the slave contract with the master. I remember that for sure. Destroy the slave contract with the master? Don't make me laugh. You look like you've got something mixed up. I couldn't say that. Immediately, he tweaked himself a little, as if he was plotting something. Although, in fact, I agree to grant you freedom, but I did not say that I would terminate both of your contracts. Think about this little thing. The girl is surprised by such a change of essence in the contract right in front of her. What do you mean? This is not at all the same thing that we talked about earlier. Not that at all. And that's not entirely fair on your part. But that's exactly how it is. This man had calculated everything in advance. That's an asshole. A few days ago, during business meetings with an important person, the owner of the city, to be precise, we talked between business conversations. And I found out by accident that this person liked you at first sight, so he is ready to give any amount for you. Well, I accepted his offer and gave him the two of you. The guy suddenly appeared from somewhere in this room, I didn't notice how he came in at all, probably he was too carried away by the conversation of these two people. To put it simply, it means that now you belong to the owner of the city, he decided to explain to the girl. He looks like a simple kid with a dagger attached to his hip. But his posture was too relaxed, he was definitely not as simple as it might seem at first glance. The girl turns to this guy and addresses him by name. Kevin. It looks like that's his name. She is surprised to see him here. Shouldn't you be on a mission, so how can you be here? She didn't understand at all how he could be here, it was clearly audible in her speech. Why are you so worried? Don't worry, I just got back. He tells her with a grin. They don't get along? It was evident from their interaction, but what's wrong? While I think about the reason for their relationship, they continue their dialogue. How long have we not seen each other? A few days? And you have become a little stronger during this time. I've already been able to rise to the third level, and even during this time, the master of the city has set his eye on you. Wait, how did he just figure out what her level was? It's not that easy to do. What are you trying to say? I don't quite understand the meaning of this conversation. Yeah. She's definitely not happy about this conversation. I'm not trying to say anything. Yes, of course you're already talking to her. I just want to warn you. Be quiet until your new master picks you up and don't do anything nasty. Do you really think I'm stupid? I understand that perfectly. Don't tease me. Stop fighting already. Go back to your room and be ready. In about two days, the owner of the city will send his man for you. So go ahead and get ready. 
this girl is terribly angry at them. It's really unfair. As I understand it, the contract spelled out exactly one thing, and as a result, something completely different is happening now. It's horrible. I'll kill you all, you're both so stupid. Anger filled her head completely. At the same moment, she makes a sharp lunge towards that boy, not thinking at all about the consequences, it was very careless on her part, but at the same time I understand why he does it so frivolously. She was given the hope of freedom, and now everything has been taken away from her. In response to all this, the guy just laughs with her. You're so easily angered. Are you still going to fight with us? He reacts to her too simply, without any reaction. He easily dodges the girl's blow, managing to intercept her hand, holding it in a strong grip. At the moment he is the owner of this situation and he does whatever he wants. Be at least a little happy, because being the wife of the owner of the city is the best choice for you, so you should be happy, and you just throw yourself at everyone. This is not the best behavior. And he says it with obvious mockery, trying to hurt her as much as he can. But in response to all his words, she only goads this guy. Since you are so happy to marry such a wonderful man, then why don't you marry him yourself, judging by your reaction, you will definitely be happier than me in this marriage. He mercilessly twists her arm, while hitting her in the face. Have you forgotten who your master is now? Then he kicks her with all his might somewhere in the direction of the pile of gold. Clearly overdoing it. How could he do that? It looks like a man of the same opinion. This kid is totally fucked up. Kevin, what are you doing? You can't do that. In response to this, the guy just laughs loudly. What a bastard he is. A terrible man. Ha ha. I'm sorry, stepfather, she just got on my nerves, so I lost my temper a little and forgot that he was the poor wife of the owner of the city. What? Stepfather. Yeah. Despite the fact that they are not relatives, they are still both scum. It looks like it's family, even if they don't share the same blood. But what must happen to accept such an idiot into the family? But the answer of his alleged father just amazed me. He just turns around and talks reproachfully. We are now in a warehouse with important things, and they are very expensive. Do you even know what huge losses your very strong blows can lead to? That's exactly what you're not looking at. So please don't be clowning around here. Seeing how his exemplary son listens to this, it can be understood that this is not the first such situation, I can't even imagine what else he can do. Why are you starting to wail? Still, it's good, I didn't destroy anything, and nothing broke because of me. And even if it had happened, nothing serious would have happened, these are simple samples of some animals and a large amount of antiques, which if I can find you something else, it's not a problem. By the way, I came back from a mission, and I was able to bring a large amount of medicines, but unfortunately, I didn't have time to bring them all to the warehouse. So they're lying there in the middle of the room, be careful. And while the father is talking to his son, the latter slowly takes the other out of the room. Leaving the two of us alone in the room. Exactly that girl, I completely forgot about her. I turn around and see such a picture. The girl just sits after a pile of gold and quietly cries without uttering a word. Of course I'm shocked by all this. The way the old man cheated on this poor girl is just awful, and his son is completely the same. They're definitely crazy. Poor sisters, I feel very sorry for them. You wouldn't wish that on anyone. But since these two guys finally got out of this room, I can quietly get out of here, the poor girl is definitely not up to me. I understand her grief, but I'm a complete stranger to them, so it's none of my business. So it seems she recognized me while talking to her already former master. While I'm thinking about it, I quickly pick up the raincoat that I managed to throw off before that man came into the room. Taking everything I need, I begin to approach the door, but suddenly one phrase was uttered into the silence of this room. You're looking for a way out. Then go to the other part of the corridor and everything will be there. Any emotion had completely disappeared from her voice. It sounds much different than it was before. My god, she noticed me. She said it exactly to me. So now it's better to make her angry, otherwise she will start fighting with me on emotions. Haha. <laughs> Thank you for the explanations, well, then I went. Have a nice day. In fact, this is very strange on her part, she has completely changed after this situation. She just told me where the exit was, without any tricks. Of course I understand why this happened, but the situation alone changed everything in this way. It's horrible. In any case, I'm a stranger to her and it's definitely not my business, so it doesn't matter to her. The most important thing for me is to get out of this damn place. Look, I'm leaving here. 
Are you sure you don't want to stop me, since you have one last chance to do in response, she says only one thing. That doesn't make any sense. Her face reflects only hopelessness and sadness. And she doesn't look very good anymore. Not very great. As I was thinking before. It's definitely none of my business, but I can't leave her like this. My heart breaks with tears when I think about leaving her just like that among all this junk. I can't do that. So I'm getting her attention. Hey you. Look here. Think about something. I have a suggestion. Simple enough in the current situation. Why don't you take your sister and we can run away together from here? This is the best option for you. The answer is a completely emotionless face and a phrase that sounded hollow in this room. You don't have to worry about us. We can't escape anyway, no matter how much we want to. And then suddenly she just starts crying, tears just come out of her eyes. Well, it has nothing to do with you. Just leave already. I even told you where the exit is. Yes, maybe I'm too curious for a stranger with whom you have a problem. But I can't leave in the lurch. Then it won't be me. I am Wang Han, a descendant of the Chinese nation and the future guardian of the communist regime, so how can I leave you alone? You're a complete jerk. Go faster, go away, can't you hear me, they don't know yet that I've caught you, so if you run away from here, no one will even notice. What about your sister? You can now have such an attitude towards yourself from other vile people, but will yours grow up in such a world? Next to such people who will call her names and beat her up? Do you want her to grow up living the same life as you, without any dignity? Think not only about yourself, but also about her. It looks like she heard, something has changed quite a bit in her, it's impossible to say what exactly, but I seem to have reached her. Wow. If you're just afraid of the power that supports your boss. Then I can bring you to one place where there will be no one who can harm you. In fact, I'm taking a big risk by offering her this, but I sincerely want to help her. So I offered her my hand without regret. She wanted to take my hand, I saw it, she was reaching for it, but for some reason changed her mind. I intercepted her. Why doesn't she want happiness for herself and her little sister, they deserve it. Everyone has the right to strive for freedom, if you want freedom in your life, no obstacles that will stand in front of you will ever be able to stop you. While I was giving this little speech to her, she reacted strangely to me, she also looked where to the side of me, as if someone was standing there. Well, the main thing is that I calmed her down. And this is the most important thing. I gave her hope. But wait, the owner always has a contract with us with him, then how can I steal it, it's just impossible, just think about it. I'm glad she started thinking about life. Don't worry about the contract, I'll do it myself, it'll even be easier for me to do it myself. Light absorbs everything here, and hope will lead us further along our path. While I was talking, the girl thought a little. What did I see? I guess I just imagined it. It was just a game of shadows. No, let's think again. Contracts with the master are protected by Kevin. And now he is much stronger than me, I just can't cope with him, I understand that. So we have no chance at all to steal this contract from these two. Even if you think carefully about the plan, it will still be almost impossible. Then our only option is to be more cunning than they are, this is much better than a well-developed plan, it may simply fail, and improvisation will help us adapt to the situation. At the time, I decided to search the boxes lying on the floor among all this junk. So you don't have any plan? Of course not, and I just explained why, understand that in this situation, plans do not make sense, since we do not even know what can expect us. She noticed that I was examining the boxes and asked. What are you looking for? Before they left, they talked that medicines were lying here somewhere, of course right now we don't need to be treated, but this doesn't mean that we won't need them later. Oh, here they are. Opening one of the drawers and I saw a small number of potions, and they are all different in shape and color, I wonder if they have the same properties. But let's see. This potion should give me my magic back. I feel a sharp surge of strength, this is a very good sign. So everything went exactly as I planned. It's very beautiful. The effect is very good, I would even say perfect. All my powers are accumulated at one time. I am very happy with this outcome, which means that all chances of survival are increased. Since I fully recovered my strength when I drank one of the potions I found, now I can move on to the next action to escape from this place and possibly revenge, but we'll see about the situation. I use spatial magic that opens portals, probably that's how you can describe it. I'm going to go away for a couple of minutes to find my friends and ask them for help, so please wait for me. And as soon as I said this to the girl, I dived into the blue-purple portal. 
The girl was clearly surprised by the zeal of her already her friend, and earlier her enemy. This ad is amazing. Find friends and ask them for help. But isn't it too much? I already feel embarrassed just for your help. And you're also going to drag your friends into this complicated and complicated case. While she was talking to herself, trying to understand the reason for her new friend's behavior, the portal that the ant entered closed. Oh, he just disappeared and left nothing behind. Is this spatial magic? Amazing. Haha. <laughs> what a strange magical beast it is. I've never met anything like this in my life. Although I wouldn't say I've talked to many animals. Some time later, I returned to the girl waiting for me with help. I asked for help from everyone I knew. Oh, hi. I'm sorry that I was so late. After all, there was a need to stay. I had to gather them all together and move them to this place. So once we all got there, I ask you to introduce you to my friends and also to introduce them to you. At this moment, the friends I brought slowly come out of the portal. As soon as they all came out, I introduced them all to my new girlfriend. They're all my friends. Among this group is a raven, a magical beast that can control souls and use 6th level spells, dark claw, spiritual fire, and can also protect the soul. Next to him is a rat king of the first category of the third class, a born king, his weapon is sharp claws. Ant soldier, shadow mouse of the first order, possessing deadly jumps and ant priest of the first order. And Sio Hai and Sio Bai are flying from above. As soon as they saw each other, there was some kind of tension or something. I can't explain exactly. These are quite strong opponents. Am I a little confused? Or was she not expecting it? Just what exactly then? In her thoughts, the girl was very surprised. He brought everyone he could. These are insects, birds, mice and ghostly magical beasts. It's a really strange combination. It's like some kind of movie. A strange association, of course. But the girl decided not to hide anything and asked, We are not yet so familiar with you that I would trust you. Are you sure they can help us? Will they be of any use? And that's what worries her. Well, yes, I understand her. For her, these are just ordinary magical beasts and she is completely unaware of their capabilities. You can rely on them. Everyone I brought is very reliable guys. They are strong enough, even if you can't tell it from them, I assure you. If everything were exactly on the turn, I would not risk my friends in any way. As soon as my entire assembled company recovered from the transfer, she began to look around the room in which they found themselves. With all the interest, like children, poking at everything, shouting over each other. Raven, just look there. There are dried corpses of strong magical beasts. It looks like some kind of collection, said the Mouse King, looking somewhere to the side. Are you really stupid? Said the Raven in response to him. These are simple exhibits. Ghosts talk about their own. Boss, this is my first time in the human realm, and is it different in some way? Oh, it's my first time here, too. How they raged, of course I understand them. But they are too loud, something needs to be done. They definitely need to be calmed down. Otherwise they will still be running around the room or worse. So all of you, be silent and listen carefully. Oh, they heard me. This is already progress. So, and now to the main thing. The reason I turn to you for help is as follows. As soon as they all calmed down exactly and started listening exactly, I fully explained the whole situation to them from beginning to end. After a while, as we discussed everything, a question arose. But how can we steal the slave contract that is needed to free the girls? And at the same time not provoke the owner, his son or his guards, although it is unknown what happened to the latter. Since I remember that during the exploration of the corridor and rooms I did not see a single guard. Even when entering this room and she is it very important if you look at the number of things in it. But Sio Hai and Sio Bai immediately volunteered to help. These ghosts are a little uncontrollable and self-willed, but they always follow the main conditions. Boss, just leave this case to us, we'll handle it calmly. Yes boss, don't worry. You, are you guys sure you can do this? The main thing for us is to steal the contract and preferably without hype. You should understand this. So are you sure? Don't worry boss. The dark ghost has definitely come up with something. The prankster, his face confirms it. It's just stealing things. And this is easier than ever. Yes boss. Rest assured. Everything will be fine. But, I knew it. He was definitely up to something. After all this theft, I want to take a few men, just a few. What? Then, I don't understand why he needs them. Okay, I don't think I want to know. Without having time to say anything in response, the ghosts were already near the door. Well, we won't waste any time and we'll hit the road right away. So they flew through the door and went in search of a contract, and possibly for men. After flying through several corridors and rooms in this way, they found themselves in a room that resembled another warehouse of things. Only there were bookcases filled with small objects, boxes and various books. Just in this room there was a former owner who was standing over a strange thing and scrupulously writing something down in a notebook. The ghosts immediately realized that this was the man the boss had told them about. 
The clothes he is wearing do not look like ordinary ones. It is immediately obvious that this is an expensive fabric, and guards or servants do not wear this. That's him, that's the guy. Now our main goal is to steal the contract that the boss needs. And a little later, when this is all done, we will definitely come for him again. The white man did not answer the dark ghost's tirade, simply deciding to do as he was asked and, if anything, help a friend to quietly take what they need. They got close to the man from behind. This is his blind spot so he definitely won't see us, and we weren't going to make noise. In his place, I would look after my things, otherwise you never know what. But before doing something or stealing, the ghosts decided to make fun of the man a little. They crept even closer than they were, very close, and abruptly they began to touch and tickle the person. It was very harsh on their part, but what else to expect from them? The man jumped up from this. He was just standing in this room and doing his things, writing down something important, and then he abruptly begins to tickle. It's very strange. What? What was that? Who's there? Come out. And the ghosts are just laughing at this man. Well, you think they would have brought him to a heart attack? Just, haha, haha. But they decided to get back to business. They continued to look for contracts. If this man is doing something important here, then maybe the documents can be here. After looking through several shelves, they found what they were looking for. Dude, the white ghost turned to his friend. Look, I found these papers. There are both contracts. Just like the boss said. The other ghost was very happy about it. Zio Bai is well done. You did a great job. But while the white ghost was rejoicing for the completed task, he did not notice that Zio Hai was holding something. It looks most like fabric, is it pants? Hey, dude, what's that in your hand? We've already found the contracts. Ha, <laughs> ha, I stole this old man's underwear. He seriously did it. It's just unbelievable. Do you think he'll notice it soon? I even wonder how long this old man will realize this. God, how you stole it from him. To say that Zio Bai is shocked is to say nothing. Don't worry about such small things. It was too easy to do. I didn't even try for this nonsense. And he won't even think that it was done by one of his own. It's too shameful. Well, moreover, this thing is completely useless and there is no value in it. Zio Hai did it for a laugh. But even then it was too easy to steal underpants from this old man under his nose. So after playing enough, he just threw these underpants on the floor. It's not that important. The dark ghost continued, addressing the white one. Better let's take these contracts to the boss and not keep them waiting. It's an important thing for our boss and that girl, so let's not keep them. So they decided to fly back, since they got everything they needed. After flying through the door and several corridors, they returned to the room where their friends are. The ghosts have returned. I hope that with the documents, while they were gone, everyone decided to search the room, suddenly they will find something interesting. The shadow mouse ate the book, deciding that it was a good snack. And the ant priest decided to climb in the chest. Everyone chooses what they like. And what you don't like, leave alone. I'll look at these things again and if I need them, I'll take them away. A dark ghost is coming closer to me, attracting attention. Hey master look. They show me two sheets of paper. Oh these are contracts. They took what they needed. It couldn't have been easier for us to steal these documents. We've dealt with it. Zio Bai interrupts Zio Hai's speech. What? Dude, didn't you steal that old man's underwear? Not the documents. God, what else have they done? I don't even want to know. We need to give the contracts to the girl. She is probably sad now and at the same time sitting alone. Looks very worried. But everything will be fine now. She will soon have nothing to worry about. Soon she will be free with her sister, being not chained by these papers. I turned to her, waving for her to look at us in her contracts. Hey, Zunai. We finally got them. She is clearly surprised by this. She didn't expect the ghosts to be able to do this. How is it? You already got them. It was very fast. Zio Bai fly up to Zunai with contracts to give them to her right into her hands. Human. The white ghost without any doubt passes the papers directly into the hands of the girl. It seems to be yours, so keep it and never lose it. Zio Bai keeps talking. Since I'm human, I can't read human words, so I'm not sure that's what you need. So check if it's a contract. And then suddenly I was wrong. The white ghost is genuinely worried whether he brought it. It is very cute. In response, the girl checked everything. No, it's fine. That's what I need. Thank you very much. From happiness, the girl begins to burst into tears. It's over and they're finally free. Together, she and her sister together will be free from these nasty people. She hugs those shoddy contracts with all her might when she thinks about it. It shows that she is happier than ever. The smile suits her. I'm glad it turned out that way. It was at this moment that her sister decided to look into this room, seemingly being in search of the elder. Sister, I have some bad news for you. The magical beast that we tied up and locked in the storeroom disappeared without a trace. What should we do? She didn't even notice us all at first. But later, having fully considered everything that was happening in this room, she began to take out her sword from behind her back. So you are a magical beast here, as well as my older sister, who is crying for some reason. Did you make my sister cry? 
How dare you, you animal. As a result, she swung at me and prepared for a jerk. This girl just jumped on me, and I just managed to get to my feet. Even the older sister was taken aback by this and stopped crying. Zhu Ling, come on, stop it now. And everyone else wasn't too worried about me, so I was just running around with this girl. At this moment, the owner was minding his own business, and I heard the company making a fuss in a room nearby. Why is it so noisy outside? In fact, the strange question is they don't even have windows here. Without understanding the reason for all this noise, the old man decided to ask his son. Kevin, I asked him while he was moving the boxes to another part of the room. You don't happen to know what's going on outside, or someone's making too much noise. It must have been that stupid girl who went crazy after she found out the whole truth. Kevin answered the question posed by his adoptive father with confidence. The man did not respond to this, as it sounded very truthful. So he just closed the book, turned around and went on to do his business. But he threw over his shoulder either an order or a request. Kevin, go and see what's going on outside. It's too noisy. So they walked together at the usual pace, passing through a lot of shelves with things, went towards the door leading to the exit of the room. But then the man stepped on something lying in the middle of the room. What is it? Who threw this here? The man looked down at his shoes to examine what he had stepped on. Bending down, he picked up this thing and took a good look. It's some kind of fabric. And then he realized what it was. Oh what can a pair of underwear do here? This is not the best place to store it. It's my underwear. So where could it have come from here? I don't remember at all that I would have left it somewhere here. And when could it have happened at all? Something's not right here. When the owner picked up this pair of underwear, Kevin also noticed her. Oh, there's someone's underpants. How could they get here? Are they just lying around here? We need to somehow move the conversation to another topic. What kind of cowards? These are not cowards for sure. Damn how to do it. This guy must never find out that these are my underpants. Look at this fabric. They're definitely not cowards. This is a real treasure. And if you couldn't understand even that, then you'll have to study for a long time, maybe even a few years. A kid is perplexed with this. Maybe the man has moved his head. What a treasure it is. Tell me how an ordinary pair of underpants, which you seem to have accidentally left in this room where we store important things, should definitely become a treasure or has an unusual origin, even if this excuse sounds silly. He decided to believe his foster father. He doesn't have much choice. Well, let's say it's some kind of important treasure. Then how is it lying here and not in the treasury? Did someone get there? Did someone get in to the treasury? This definitely can't happen. Absolutely. Why is that? It's a simple door. Is there something special about her? Well, it may be a little thicker than ordinary doors, but that's it. You don't understand at all, do you? I explain for the stupid. This is our ancient treasury of the Chamber of Commerce. It is built specifically with certain ways to open it. Only employees of the General Chamber of Commerce can open it. Vincent examined the door more carefully during the explanation and answered. Well, the door is holding up well, that's understandable. Then isn't it possible to just destroy the wall near it and the matter is solved? That's a funny enough suggestion. Break a stone wall. It still needs to be able to do this. So it will also be a burglary. Yes, no one will even dare to pass by our ancient treasury, which stores important and expensive items. Think for yourself. Our ancient bow chamber of commerce is one of the three largest treasuries. During this conversation, the man begins to turn the mechanism that unlocks the door of the treasury itself. But it is impossible to scroll beyond one turn. What? The owner is in turmoil from what is happening now. How is it that he can't open this door? It's very strange. In fact, on the opposite side, our company blocked the mechanism with a dagger and beads from the same storage, so that people from the outside could not open the door. Vincent doesn't understand at all what could have happened to this door, and he just looks at all this with an unreadable look. Well, this, his foster father also does not know what really happened to this door. He made a decision. Well, since we can't open this damn door ourselves, then call the girl behind this door and ask her to open the door for us. This is the best choice that we have. Of course, I don't really want to ask her for something, but what can we do? Well what? We need to do something, let's decide. And by the way, where is her sister? She can help us. The adopted son is just in shock from this. Ask someone for help. He would never do that. And what? He answers the man. Even if I call her, she's not going to do anything. Well, then we have only one way out. We need to break down the door. I really don't want to do this, but suddenly a thief has penetrated inside, then he will definitely steal their entire treasury. At the same moment, on the other side of the door, we have already collected all the necessary things and are ready to go to the base. Please help me take these things back, I don't need them. She didn't take much with her. Is that all? You're absolutely sure. Maybe you'll take some furniture with you. Our base is located in a cave and there is definitely no furniture there, I assure you. The girl was a little surprised by this turn. I completely forgot to tell you about our base. This is my mistake. What? Do you live in a cave? I did not know. Well, if you think about it, even the best possible option. 
The problem is that the escape of a slave from his master is currently recognized as a criminal offense. This is a very terrible thing. So it would be impossible for me and my sister to live in another place. Hiding from people. So a cave is a good option, even if we don't have furniture. Of course I understand her. This is a sharp change of life and so on, but something carried her into the wilds. But if we live in a cave, we will be able to wash, we may also have lice, and we won't be able to bask in the sun. And what will happen when Zhu Ling gets older? Can she feel disconnected from society, and will not be able to interact with peers? What about shopping? Where are we going to buy clothes or weapons? She's obviously too worried about her sister. We need to calm her down somehow. Otherwise she will continue to worry, then she will always wind herself up like this. Don't worry. There's no point in you worrying about such little things, it's still solvable. And about everything you said, leave it to me. And live in peace. I kind of calmed her down. No, by no means. You've already done so much for me and my sister, how can I bother you anymore? She worries too much about everything. She seems to think that my actions are not completely pure coin. Well, I'm definitely not going to demand anything from her. It's all good. Oh, you definitely need to tell her about that contract. And by the way, one more thing. Your sister signed a contract with me on equality. Anyway, I can't betray her for some indefinite time. She wasn't surprised by the news at all. It sounds like I'll be under your care. Is it bad? On the contrary, it's great when friends always help each other. At this moment, the girl puts her hand on the magic book and a gentle glow appears. As soon as this happened, the owner and his son began to knock down the door of the treasury. And they did it, even almost from the first time. It turns out the door is quite flimsy and the man praised it in vain. When they entered the vault, no one was in it anymore. Even the treasures were all gone. What's going on here? The owner of all this was in complete shock. A place with treasures. It's completely empty. There's nothing left. How could this happen? He was very angry. It can't even be put into words. All his treasures were gone. As if they had never existed at all. Zhu Nai. It's all you. He clenched his fist with furious force. He is full of indignation. I will definitely make you and your sister regret everything that happened here. We need to get out of this situation. Otherwise it will not be very good for us. Kevin, immediately go to the city hall and cordon off the whole city. Catch those who stole everything from the vault. Who exactly do you mean? I don't quite understand. Are you probably talking about Zhu Nai? Well, that's understandable, but who else? You said they. So you're assuming that someone helped her. But then who was able to get into the vault? You thought right. She couldn't take out all the external storage alone. There was a huge amount of stuff. So it's clear that someone helped her. And it's not a fact that it's her sister. Good. Vincent understood what his father was talking about. Someone got into the building and helped them. I'm going to find them. And in order not to waste time, he immediately ran out of the building, so as not to waste the extra time that he had left. I assumed everything, but I certainly didn't expect that the treasures from the external storage would be stolen. We need to solve the problem as soon as possible, exactly before the people who work here notice this loss. How did other people get here? It's almost impossible. And how did they leave unnoticed? Okay, Vincent has already gone to solve this issue. We'll leave everything to him. Well, we quietly moved to the exit of the building. So you can already relax. I also sent these two forward to the base. Good luck. I'll see you later. Meanwhile, get settled in. As soon as they passed, I closed the portal. How well everything is going. We quietly escaped from these men. So they also took their goods. How wonderful it is. Well, now you can safely go home. I was going to calmly go home and solve some problems. But how can I just walk away from here? I should mock them a little for the sake of my own happiness. Hehe. <laughs> well, I'll have some fun. At this point, I made a very bad gesture, consisting in the fact that the middle finger is stretched up or down, and the other four fingers are pressed against the palm. It was at this moment, when I showed this indecent sign, the owner's son came out of the door of the building. It was necessary for it to happen like this, I'm obviously lucky today. But I didn't see him when I just put out my hand, so he came out a little later. Okay, let's omit it. I'm just a little ordinary demon passing by, and I definitely didn't show you the middle finger, forget it all. You didn't see it and nothing happened. Oh, it's definitely late. And such a little demon shouldn't stay here. It's very dangerous here, and it's much better at home. So I'd better go home quickly before something suo dangerous happens. While, immediately I rushed away from this building. It was necessary to stumble upon this kid like that. Although, what could I expect, being right in front of the building? When I turned away, the kid was just leaving the building and was clearly calm. But as soon as I walked away at the same moment I heard a clear step in my direction. This kid pulled as hard as he could, I felt it. He's running straight towards me. I turned around to make sure of this, maybe it seems to me and I just had my imagination running wild. He really rushed to me. God, what to do? Uh, I have to run. He'll grab me, but does he have a reason? Who cares, we have to run. Mom, how scary. Get him away from me. For a while we kept running like that. 
he was running after me. And I was running because he was running, I was scared to death. While all this was happening, I was desperately trying to figure out what to do since I wouldn't last long. Immediately he leveled off with me and began to run alongside. It looks like I'm going to die now, and he won't even look at my dead body. But suddenly I tripped over a stone, it was necessary. It's just a little pebble. I'm going to die for sure, I thought, already lying on the ground. My life was very short, but such is fate. Lord, have mercy on your servant. Have mercy and do not do the same, be merciful. So I lay on the ground and waited for the terrible agony. I was ready for death, but instead of stopping, the kid just ran on, just stepping over me. What? The guy ran on and pushed off from the ground with all his might, raising a little dust in the air, and flew up to the roof of the building. What? I don't understand anything at all right now. He wasn't going to do anything to me. This is how it happened. He was obviously running after me for a reason, or it seemed to me after all. Well, it's good that it seemed. The guy also didn't understand what was wrong with this ant. What the hell? And what was that? Well, he's not up to it now. He needs to find the one who robbed their treasury. After all, he didn't run before me. But damn, how this kid scared me. Who does that at all? He just starts running somewhere. But this fool does not know that I stole everything from their treasury. And they are blind as always. I was just standing right in front of you. But you saw absolutely nothing. You are complete fools. By the time I was calling these fools all the words I knew, someone was trying to shout at me. It was some familiar voice. Brother Ant, it's you. Before I could turn around, a small bird, without feathers on its head, clung to my leg. Oh, my God, I'm glad you weren't hurt. You're not hurt, I hope. Oh, it is you. Brother Bird. Suddenly someone from behind grabbed me by my mustache on my head. And who took it up like that? And these are those girls. Where they come from? 29. The girl holds me with obvious disdain and great complacency. Hey, you, why are you grabbing the antenna on my head? And what are you gonna do? Just hold her. Let her go already. You absolutely don't need it. Good. Oh, did she agree? I'll let you go. But in return you'll tell me what happened to that bird's head. It is you who will be responsible for what happened. Damn, what to do? This really happened. But at first I decided not to pay attention to it. And that's what it's brought me to now. Exactly I can ask my friend to explain to me what really happened. This is the best solution available. Brother Bird, save me. Explain everything to me. Please, I'm belittling you, otherwise I won't live. Don't worry, man. You can leave it to me. I will make everything beautiful. I hope he tells the girls everything correctly and I won't get hit on my head. Now give me a minute. I need to think about the best way to explain it to them. In short look Brother Ant is my best friend, and he looked after me when I was unconscious and only he can understand me. While he was showing an explanation and gestures, both girls looked at me very strangely as if they were about to rush with their fists, but in fact, they misunderstood the gestures with which the chick explained everything. His listeners understood everything like this. Look at my head, you see this bald spot here? That's exactly what he did. The chick pointed at me at that moment. It happened while I was sleeping, he tore all my feathers from my head. At that time I did not know that they understood the words wrong, completely contrary to the truth. So I started asking if the girls understood. How about this? Do you understand now? Yes of course. She stood rooted to the spot, without reacting in any way. Later, she looked at me without taking off her malicious gaze, which burned a huge hole in me. Now I understand everything, completely everything. How could you do such a thing with an ordinary chick? How could you pull all the feathers out of his head while he was sleeping peacefully? You don't regret what you did at all. Why? Why does she say that? My heart is definitely broken. If you don't realize your mistake at all, then I'll teach you a lesson and you'll understand everything right away. She said, putting her palm on my head, slowly leaning towards me. Wait, this definitely cannot be allowed. You can't do this to me. Remember, I saved your life. Since you can do such bad things to me. Damn it, that stupid bug is playing his cards again. How can I not kill you on the spot? I don't even know. She approached me and began to calmly pronounce. Next time I'll be gentle with you, I promise. About what she's talking about. I didn't understand. But I agree, it sounds very attractive. Sure, I agree. Then she just started talking about massage with a pretty face. Jingling are you very tired? Maybe you want me to give you a massage. For example, back. It sounds very nice. God, I didn't even feel that I was tired. But as soon as you said that, I immediately got sick. Looks like I'm really tired. At the same moment, she abruptly throws me to the floor and begins to beat me fiercely without regret at all. If that's the case, then I'll give you a really cool massage. You'll definitely like it, I'm sure of it. And while I was being beaten up, my buddy bird and another girl were hiding from my furious girlfriend. You wouldn't even advise that to an enemy. I feel something soft under me. This is definitely not earth. Bed. I'm on the bed. When I had time, I remember being beaten by that red-haired girl and nothing else. It looks like I passed out from my wounds. At least I'm thinking now. At that moment, Brother Bird suddenly started flying over me. He's doing something. 
It looks like he's treating me. This is most likely. I begin to feel my body slightly. The pain is very strong. I already choked on my own blood. Then someone screamed sharply. It really scared me. Why can't I heal him? It looks like while I was lying here unconscious, the girls were talking very loudly in the hallway. It's just wounds don't worry about it so much about Kiyukiyu. Yes, the wounds are very serious. But the problem is that he is too weak. This is the reason that he cannot recover. He just needs to rest. Understand that. I can't see her face at all. And I can't fully understand her intonation. She's probably upset. But I can only guess about it. So this means that even potions and healing magic won't work on Kiyukiyu. It's bad. Kiyukiyu. They're talking about someone else. This is clear from what they say. Mentioning not my name. It bothers me. Probably even scares. And I can't even say what the reason for this behavior is. What to do. Immediately. The girl explodes. Expressing everything that lies on her soul to another girl right now. But I'll eavesdrop a little. I don't think that will be a problem. The career assessment exam will take place in the next few days. So the knights need to bring a familiar, and if I don't bring Kikyu, then I won't even be able to enroll there and I'll have to wait a whole year to enroll again. I need to do something for sure. Her interlocutor stops the flow of her words. Wait, don't panic. Remember that you can find any magical beast and sign a temporary contract with it, and later you can betray to break the contract. Oh wait, we also have a familiar magical beast. This is Jinglang. What? Me? So why not ask him to pair up with you on this exam? It's an interesting idea, but why should I agree after what happened? They continue their conversation, something can be heard. But how can this jerk help me with this? Yes, he has some skills, I'm sure of it, but he didn't even resist when I beat him. They agreed with her opinion. Yes, you're probably right. He's a little weak. Why did she look at me like that? There was such dislike in her gaze that it was already sickening. What have I done? As soon as this girl came up to me, my friend stopped treating me and flew a little to the side. The girl who came up to me began to decisively shower me with her kindness, starting to smile sharply, as if that vile look did not exist. You're awake. How are your wounds? How did you sleep? Why did she worry about me so abruptly from this is not very comfortable? It feels too strange. I'm sorry about what I've done recently. She's looking at me too hard. I'm uncomfortable. Very strongly. In fact, I didn't know that you and this chick have such a good friendly relationship. I clearly made a mistake in my decision. So I apologize to you. She pulls out a small bag from somewhere. See, I even bought you a present. She smiles so sweetly. I don't like it. There's definitely some kind of setup here. I don't even want to see what's in this bag. But my brother Bird liked the gift idea more than me, so he was fascinated by the proffered bag. But I'm not sure of anything anymore. I decided not to hold grudges. Did you buy me a present? Amazing. Do you really want something from me? I can't think of anything else. Just tell me honestly. There's something wrong with his reaction. Did he really hear our conversation? But he shouldn't have. But we need to minimize all doubts. How does her cheeky smile infuriate me? How long has it been possible? Isn't she tired of it? Let me warn you. Just don't think that it's easy to bribe me with gifts. I definitely won't let you do that. But she decided to deny it, pretending that I didn't know what I was talking about. You think too much. It's just a gift. At least accept it as an apology. So she decided to just pretend to be a nice girl who doesn't understand other people's hints at all. A bold decision. But I'm not going to fall for this since I know her real one without any unnecessary nonsense. About the fact that I recently bullied you. Well, can you not be upset about such a small thing? Is she serious? She beat me almost to death. Don't worry about it. I wasn't going to take it seriously. Much less resent you for such a trifle. She seemed to take my words seriously. I see. Then let's stay friends, okay? How infuriating she is with her smiles and caustic pretense. You think too much. Think carefully who wants to be friends with a person like you. I managed to hurt her a little. The cute girl's mask has come off and now I recognize my friend's face. You're a scoundrel. Well, that's better than nothing. And if you stop being so aggressive, then maybe I'll think about being friends with an idiot like you, then maybe something will work out. She responded with a small smile. Really? Then I'll be much more careful next time. Will there be a next time? We'll see. Well, finally she decided to leave me alone with myself, and of course my friend chick. Too late. So I won't disturb your delicate peace. Good night and good dreams to you. The chick watched intently as my friend left the room and closed the door behind her. After that, he turned to the window and walked slowly towards it. Flying up close, he sat down on the window frame and then turned to me. Well, bro aunt, I'm going back home. He's already in such a hurry. I stopped him. Wait, wait. Actually, I have one problem that I need your help with. I said this hopefully to my friend. Of course, what is it? I will definitely help you, don't worry about it. He said it with such zeal at my request, it warmed my soul already. Together with the chick, with the help of spatial magic, we move to the base. After we have entered, the blue-purple portal closes. Since the chick has never been here, at first he could not understand exactly where we are. 
My friend tell me, what is this place? That's right. This is the base that my brothers and I built together. I happily explained to him, I am very proud of my work and the work of my brothers. Looking out of the shelter a little, I can perfectly see my friends who are raking new things, not forgetting to help each other. It is clear that they got along well. There's a little girl chatting with a dark ghost, and her older sister is talking about something with a white one. I am very glad that they have no dislike, and I hope their good relationship will continue in the future. After all, they still have to live on the same base. But I think everything will be fine after all. You can see right here that they like each other. I considered my other friends. The Raven and the Mouse King are literally mesmerized by the box of food. A little more and nothing will remain of it at all. And a little further away from them is Sue. She helps the sisters in the transportation of things and furniture, which they still took according to my instruction. So deciding not to stand still just like that, I decided to approach my friend and help her with the transfer of things. So, please move this box to the pantry. Yes, that's probably where she belongs. As soon as I approached, she immediately noticed me. Though, your highness, you're here. Are you alright? She is genuinely happy to see me, even a little worried. It's cute. Hi and Zoo, are you busy? I see you have nowhere else to do. Can I help you? She's supposed to help the girls settle in here, and while I'm gone, she looks after everything here. I'm so sorry. I've only just realized how many responsibilities I've thrown at you. You have so much responsibility. I don't even know how to help her. I hope I can somehow lighten her burden. It's alright. This is exactly what I have to do. I have to help you. And the fact that I can do it pleases me. I assure you. Good. Whatever you say. I'm glad you're happy. She is very nice. She breathes warmth and comfort. As soon as it is possible to injure such an ant. Oh, by the way. How is your injured leg? Does it hurt? If I understand correctly. Then now it should no longer hurt and more or less heal. To this she was only confused and answered very simply. Thank you for your concern, your majesty, it's very kind of you. Everything is fine now, it doesn't hurt at all, so you don't have to worry. Are you sure about your words? Let me examine her just in case, then I will definitely be calm. It's true, if I make sure myself, then I won't ask her anymore, since I'll know exactly about it. But then she rejected my offer. No, I cannot. Why? Was I pushing too hard? I don't think so. Explain to me why you decided that. Why not? Don't you want to let me see? There's nothing to be shy about. But I still won't insist too much. Do you want to examine my leg right here? Well okay, as you wish. It's not a big problem. Of course I'm a little shy, but I'll get over it. And so that's it. She's just shy, then everything is clear. After this conversation, we went to look for a place where Izu can comfortably sit down and I will examine her wound in more detail. A little further away, where we were talking earlier, we found a small ledge with a flat top, a great place to sit. So I sat my interlocutor down and with extreme caution began to examine the injured limb. She decided to speak first. Your Majesty, you don't have to worry so much about this. It's just a slight sprain, and in the future I would not like to bother you about such trifles. Well, haven't you finished your check yet? Why is she in such a hurry? It's better that I calmly examine her now than something will happen later. Are you seriously sure your leg is okay now? I'm not really. So I continued to check my leg further until I found one place. This place still hurts. The sprain hasn't healed yet. Now it's clear why she was in such a hurry. Everything is fine, I assure you. But you can't tell that from your reaction. You really force yourself to do all these things when you have a serious enough sprain. Don't do that, I'm asking you. Otherwise, you'll work so hard in the end. Don't talk like it's a serious injury. This little injury is a mere trifle. I assure you, explain to me what it means nothing special. And suddenly it will get even worse and no one will be there to help you. Think about it better. I'm really worried about you, and you're doing this to me, since I gave her instructions. Now she thinks about it in a completely different way. Well, I hope so. I'm very sorry, your highness. This will not happen again. Well, that's something. I'm glad you understood something from this conversation. The main thing is to understand. I'm not saying that you did something wrong. I just don't want you to exhaust your strength too much and try to rationally understand where your boundaries are. This is the only thing I want from you. As soon as I finished this speech, I pulled my hand towards Izu's head and stroked her. It was an unconscious action, but it did not cause dislike and as I look, both mine and hers. Well, my bro, now I'm going to rely on you. Look after them all while I'm not around. I hope for you very much. This bird took my offer seriously. Let me figure it out. He told me, and he flew towards Izu, probably for something important. I'm not sure why myself. It turns out that the bird flew to Izu to cure her. Well, she was absolutely delighted with it. It's unbelievable. I'm completely cured. How could this happen? I'm glad to see her so cheerful. Just be careful, please. You've just been cured, and you're already jumping like that. Be careful and be sure to take good care of yourself. After all, if everything continues like this, I will start to get angry that she is so careless towards herself. But yes, I hope this is still far away. 
as you say, king of the ants. So they quickly ran away on business, and we didn't even say goodbye normally. I'm sorry I bothered you. I told the chick as soon as we were alone. You understand that your help was not needed. It's alright, I'm doing a little good deed. This is also part of my decision, so there's nothing more to say. And with you because of this, I will soon break the connection. Oh and for a long time you will remember it to me. The feathers on your head were really pulled out by me here I confess, but I'm really sorry. I sincerely repent to you, just look at me. At this moment, the master appears out of nowhere. Why are you fighting over some feathers? Just because they're not on your head doesn't mean they can't reappear there. They can be restored, so don't worry. But the master is you. In fact, this does not surprise me so much, which cannot be said about my interlocutor. The bird was very much surprised by his appearance, which already stopped chirping about trifles. By the way, returning to the conversation about the situation that happened at that moment, there is also my fault in what happened. The master took this situation very seriously. But instead, the bird decided to pretend to be dead. Enough is enough, you fat chick. The master could not stand it and began to shout harshly at my friend while beating him with a staff. Do I look so scary that you have to faint every time we meet? As soon as he calmed down a little and stopped beating the chick, I decided to ask the master something. And if there is a way to return these plucked feathers to the normal state they had before they were plucked, that was a good enough question. But is there a quick recovery option? It will be easy to do. Much easier than you think. We don't even need any potion. You just need to lower it into the Huolong River, and by tomorrow everything that is not there should grow again. Yes, this is a fairly simple option. And another tool that we need is available right under our noses, it's just perfect. So is the Huolong River. The only question, what is the best way to get to it? It's probably best to use soldier ants, who are just doing business next to me. I'll interrupt them for a while. Soldiers, take the chick, and send him to the Huolong River. Let him take a good bath there until he wakes up, just make sure he doesn't die. But then I turned to the master. I realized something else. Master I was wondering if there would be a re-evolution if we threw him into the river. He is a little surprised by my question. But by his face he is not averse to explaining the difference to me at all. What are you talking about? Evolution. The master refuted all my arguments. It's just the Huolong River and nothing else special. It's used to purify souls. And to allow the evolution of an animal is just a certain feature of it. Which happens quite rarely. So also this feature helps only at certain levels. The rest of the levels will depend on their own sources. During our conversation, we decided to take a walk and accidentally bumped into Zhu Niai, who also noticed me, but I was carried away by the conversation so I couldn't say hello properly. Master, I'm wondering if you have any other ways to level up. Just if you think about it, there should be many more such ways, but I do not know of any such. Well, look, there is one option. To improve your levels, you just need to study and study very hard, then your labors will be rewarded. In this case, the work will be facilitated only if you have any special features. Oh well, if you judge then this is not a special opportunity for meetings with my favorite master. He laughed a little with such a statement, but was quite happy. I need to get stronger. I need strength to protect my home and my loved ones, and in humans. After a little thought, the master agreed. Good, I will teach you the basics and from that moment on you will improve yourself, do you understand me? I will give you a boost for development, but you have to go your own way yourself, you have to understand this. Your trouble will definitely be only your own work and no one else's. I understand perfectly. In any life, you always need to achieve everything yourself, otherwise you will collect problems later, but you will not be able to solve them. Don't worry, master, I understand what you're talking about. After finishing the conversation with the master, he learned all the most interesting things and calmed down. So he decided to start a normal conversation with the girl since they met. Hello again to Zhu Niai. Hello to you, too. It's so great that you can safely return home through the portal. No matter how you look, you are in complete integrity and safety. And not hurt at all. It looks like you didn't have time to run into trouble on the way here. Yes, I am also most happy about this. Our dialogue started well. You can hear from the manner of speech that she feels open with me. Probably these feelings are similar to the feeling of home. I hope so. It pleases. Immediately she noticed the master. In fact, it's hard not to notice him, even though he's small. He is still very noticeable for his energy and benevolence. That's right. I present to you my dear master. Hello, young lady. Glad to meet you. The owner addresses her. There was some confusion on the girl's face, as if she remembered something. That voice reminds me of something. Exactly. That's the voice that was in the store. Yes, it was me. I was also present when Jingling fought with you. Please forgive me. The girl apologized with all sincerity. It was immediately obvious that she was worried. Jingling has done many mean deeds in the past. Therefore, what happened happened. It's a little embarrassing to remember that. This is a past that does not need to be mentioned and can be safely forgotten. The master just laughed heartily at this. He didn't seem to care much about this past. This should also serve as a lesson for this little scoundrel. 
So that's the position he's looking at it from. Then everything is clear. But then abruptly the master turns to me in a bizarrely affectionate voice, jingling, while staring intently into my eyes. Since I don't understand at all what he wants from me, I'll just answer him the same. A long look with a hint of a question. What is happening now is not clear. Jingliang. He begins in a serious tone. Of course, I understand that you liked her at first sight, but there was no need to bring her home. What? What are you talking about? God, how can I not stop being indignant when this man talks such nonsense? Well, explain to me when did I bring someone home? This situation is becoming increasingly chaotic and awkward. What? He does not understand at all that he has said too much. Think for yourself why this beautiful girl should stay in a cave with such a monster. God, this is some kind of mockery. Just look at Zhu Nyai. She turned completely red, just like a tomato. Why embarrass her so much? While they were dealing with this awkward situation, Zhu Ling came running to them, paired with a dark ghost. They became good friends in a short time, which is very good, so the girl will not be alone. Master, they have a reason to stay here indefinitely. I object. Well, what kind of reason is that, so dedicate me? It's not that simple. As soon as Zhu Ling came up to us, she called her sister to attract her attention. The other responded. She became terribly interested in what her younger sister had come to show. Pointing at the creature with her finger, she spoke. Only spirits talk in this cave. It's so boring. I can't go on like this. It's just awful. Dear sister, bear with this for a while. Please, we will stay here for a little while. And a little later we will decide what we will do. What? Will we ever go back to those uncles? While the sisters were talking, the master was listening very intently to their claims and perhaps learning something new for himself. Oh, are you exactly like a young man? Oh my god, this man decided to remember about me. He's definitely going to say something stupid right now. And then explain to me exactly what he wanted to say and apologize again. It's just awful. What is this person's mood today? Maybe I didn't get enough sleep. Jingling, of course I understand everything, but this is too much. Sympathy for a young girl is understandable. But the other lady is too young for this kind of sympathy. What are you talking about? I can't understand where your tongue is going today. I don't even know what the master thinks of me if he says such words about me. Master, please explain to me how I look in your eyes at all. It's just that you say things that make my heart ache. I seem to be an adequate aunt in moderation, but you say this to my face. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? You, you're a fool who drools when he sees a beautiful lady. What are you talking about? I'm already screaming out of embarrassment. You say that about yourself. Who else here drools when he sees beautiful ladies? Finally, we finished this strange dialogue about the ladies. I don't even know who to thank for it. And we moved on to more important conversations about the situation of Zhu Ling and Zhu Nei. Let's get started. Well what? The master starts, attracting my attention. Jingling what can you say about this? It is important for me to know what situation these two are actually in. Master, you know I'm only telling you the truth. In fact, these people are slaves who were bought by the owners of the store, so they were forced to do bad things in order to survive, or rather they were ordered and because of the contract they could not disobey. Master please understand me I just let them hide from the chase. In response, he just said, Yes, I see a young man. But in the meantime, he was deep in thought about something. These two are too pure, and you, Master, think about everything. And these are dirty things. He did not react to my statement in any way. Only after being silent for a while he replied. These two children are too pathetic. It is impossible not to save them. So he went to the girls. I kind of got the gist of the situation you're in. He started for a start. And I apologize to you for having to live in a cave. But these two only stare at him in bewilderment. Answering the man with all sincerity. It's such nonsense. You don't have to worry about it. And our past situation is no better than what is happening now. While the adults were talking, Zhu Ling had a question, which she wasn't afraid to ask out loud. She is a very fearless girl. And tell me, why is this grandpa so small? He's a human being, not some fairy. And all people should be bigger than he is now. The master probably liked this child because of her straightforwardness. What a cute kid. By the way, child, I remember your recent exclamation, do you want to talk not only with souls, but also with magical beasts? The girl was very surprised by this and only jumped up with the words. Can grandpa really help me talk to other animals? It's true. The girl was very surprised by the man's question. Suddenly, the master abruptly used one spell and began to change in size. Both girls were surprised by the change in the man's appearance, because recently he was the size of a palm. So the owner became an ordinary human size. Immediately, Zhu Nyai decided to notify the man of something. Oh, my sister is spoiled dumb. So don't pay attention to some of her words. She sometimes talks too much and may not understand the value of some things at all, but in fact she is a very smart child for her age. The master reacted quite calmly not to the words of his younger sister. He <laughs> he, it's not a problem at all for me to solve this issue. With the help of some simple spells for me, she will be able to understand magical beasts. It's also as easy as it can be for me. 
Zhu Niai. Even though the master has notified her, she still looks a little worried. So young lady, I'm going to say a spell of a few words now and after it make sure that you have made friends with a magical beast, you will definitely be able to, I'm sure of it. Zhu Ling was very happy about this statement from the male wizard. Don't worry, I will definitely make friends with all the magical beasts. And I will behave well, I promise. Well, now I'm going to cast spells. Don't interrupt me. Immediately, the man begins to conjure, saying the learned words. His staff begins to sparkle, releasing beautiful flashes of magic. It looks very fascinating. After saying the last words, he fills the staff with even more magic and its glow increases. After all this, the master directs the flow of magic towards the girls, and the flow of the glowing spell captures them. What is this? They've never seen anything like this before. These are real miracles. So on, I need someone I can play with, or more precisely, link a spell with. He says it out loud. So he starts looking for the thing he needs. As a result, he chooses two spirits as a binder. So he directs a glowing stream of magic at them. What is he doing? Both spirits are at a loss. They're starting to feel weird. It glitters and glows looks very beautiful. What is happening to them now? But no one understands this except the sorcerer himself, who has almost completed his spell. Immediately, the spirit's bodies begin to change greatly externally. A barely visible outline of the body and hair appears. The white spirit has a light pink square, and the dark spirit has bright pink long tails. They also had clothes, but there were still bandages on their heads, reminding them that they were spirits, but now with a body similar to a human one. They even have different clothes. The white ghost is wearing a dress with several layers in white and lavender with a bright pink bow at the waist, and the dark ghost has a black and gray suit consisting of a leather shirt top, leather shorts with a wide belt and long stockings. Hey dude, what just happened? I don't really understand how we got like this. I don't understand either. The dark ghost answers him. After the spell was completely spoken and completed and the ghost's bodies were completely changed, the master lifted into the air all the things that were brought by the girls for convenience. What is he going to do with all this? He has already surprised us with the change of the appearance of ghosts, so it looks like he is still going to help in the furnishing of the room of two girls. It's not right for them to carry heavy things. It looks like there will be an arrangement soon. All items raised by magic, as I suggested. The master lifted all the furniture into the air with the help of magic in order to properly arrange it in the room in which Zhu Niai and Zhu Ling will live for a while. While he was able to adapt the furniture to the cave so that it looked more or less cozy, he put a small table in the middle of the room, placing a small sofa and an armchair near it. A closet stood a little further away and there were small bedside tables with a mirror near the stairs. And the whole room is illuminated by purple crystals, giving the room a certain charm. Zhu Ling couldn't get enough of this beauty. It's so amazing. The elder sister stood in shock, not even able to utter a word. Looking around the room, she tried to figure out what had just happened. It took just one moment and everything is ready, it's just incredible. Well, how do you like this room is suitable for you? The master was proud of himself, and the reaction of the girls brought pleasure, so he did a great job. He acted with such careful and clever movements, now I wonder. What is the master of Jinglin really and what powers does he possess? I really like this room. She's just gorgeous. The girl answers the man's question. It's very good that you like her. Then Zhu Nai hears an unknown voice. It looks like magical beasts are talking to each other. The dialogue is conducted by a raven and a mouse-like beast. I say, I ate everything that was in this box, especially sausage. She smelled so delicious that she was already drooling like a stream. As soon as I remember her taste. MM, it was the best thing I ate. It looks like they're discussing a box of food standing between them. Really, it was so delicious. That's how you described it to me. Now I also have to try this sausage. It would be strange if I forbade them to take our provisions. Now they are shared. Since I can talk, I decided to tell them myself. So I slowly approached them. If you want to eat, then just take what you want. And you don't have to ask me or my sister about it. The magical beasts didn't understand what had just happened at all. They definitely didn't imagine it. And this person was just talking to them. Yes, this cannot be. The mouse turned to the raven. Don't you think she's not herself? She was just talking to us. Yes, I heard that too. I thought it was my imagination. The raven answered him, so it may not have seemed to them. And the raven decided to ask the person directly. They won't lose anything from it anyway. And it's not a fact that she went crazy. Human. He turned to the girl. How can you speak the language of beings? He asked with obvious disdain. Not fully believing that a person would be able to answer him. Oh, so magical creatures have a separate language. It looks like that's what it's called. It seems that the girl herself did not expect that she would still answer her interlocutor. She really answered the animal's question. It's unbelievable. When we talk, we make a strange throat sound. Raven decided to explain everything to the man. Once you understand the rhythm of the sound, you will be able to understand it. She can really understand everything we say. Amazing. 
Then, what will we ask her about? We have so many options. A good choice. Since man is intelligent, we should try to learn more than we know now. Did I hear you correctly? Did you say sausage? Yes. Do you know how sausage is made? We tried it from your supplies. So, need to remember how the sausage is made there correctly. If I remember correctly, first we finely chop the edible meat into something similar to porridge in consistency, and then we stuff it into the intestines of the animal and fry it all on fire. So it turns out the sausage that you ate. That's exactly what I didn't expect, it's something new. The mouse reacted to the story. Is this a human punishment? The raven replied. They definitely did not like the sausage cooking process, and their interest has clearly decreased. Then I'd rather not eat sausage, said the mouse. Then I won't either, the crow supported him. Then tell us if people have any more delicious food besides sausage. We are very interested. Yes, what else is there? Tell. So some magical beasts gathered around the girl. In fact, we have a lot of different delicious food. And how much is it? And what is the most delicious food? And what else can people turn into food? The questions came one after another. She seems tired of their pressure. It looks like Lang is a very nice and sweet girl, but she's in trouble, so why don't you save her? Isn't the shelter safe? What could have happened to her here? It looks like everyone has fallen in love with her on the contrary and they are definitely not going to let her go. 63. Well, since you're asking about delicious food. HM. From the sweet, I can advise you a cake and an apple pie. They are very unique in taste and both are very tasty, as well as a baked steak is very good. They all crowd around her and don't take a step away, they'll crush her like that. Why the crow and the rat surrounded Zhu Niai? I don't like all this. Hey guys, what are you guys talking about for so long with Zhu Niai? They're starting to strain me. They're so wrapped up around her. Boss, we just want to know what delicious food people eat. They have so many different things that you can eat it for years to come. Listen too. It is very interesting. By the way, did you know that the products that the girls brought with them as a gift will be stacked together with other products in the warehouse? I advise you to check them. And suddenly they could disappear. They can be lured by talking about food and they will always buy into them. A human food. Now if you mention human food to them in conversation, then they will definitely not be able to calm down. So all the magical beasts rushed to the warehouse to check if everything was in place and maybe to eat something. They're just curious kids. And they have evil intentions, I hope you understand that. And why am I explaining such stupid things to her? It's already obvious. But she greeted this information with a smile. Actually I think it's pretty cute. Well, you can't argue with her here, although in fact they are sometimes very annoying. They are different from the magical creatures I usually see. And I didn't know how to talk to them before. Suddenly she came up to me abruptly. But I never thought that there would be such a cute and smart guy among the magical beasts. Is she talking about me? Why did she bring it up? So she also started stroking my head, even very intensely. I'm not used to such affection from other people. It's a little embarrassing to be praised. So it's also a girl. I'm just a little different from other animals. There's no such thing. And yet these strokes are pleasant. So, why did I give myself into her hands so easily at all? I just remembered that I need to do something. So forgive me, but I have to leave. I'd better leave. I'm not used to trust people so much. Oh, the girl was surprised by the sudden change of mood of the ant but decided not to ask him anything. He's angry. I didn't do anything serious to make him angry, did I? She asked the master. In response to this, the master flew to his ward, who was walking briskly away from the room. Haha, <laughs> I would never have thought that you would run away from the fact that I recently put you in jail. This man definitely decided to make fun of me, for the feelings shown to the girl. Well, you think I relaxed a little? What's the big deal? Am I confused? Nothing like that. I just remembered that I have an urgent matter. He's definitely mocking me. I can't get off him, how can I shut him up? Don't worry, I understand everything perfectly. The master begins to calm him down. We are our own masters, and we don't have to be shy. When I was young, I had something else. Hey, there were times. I already said it's not like that, so calm down already. And Zhu Nai only looks at their bickering with a sweet smile. It looks homey. At the same moment in the minister's house, Vincent, after a brief meeting with the aunt, as agreed with his father, ran to the minister, telling him about the problem that had appeared. That is why at the moment, having explained everything that happened, he is kneeling in front of the minister, hiding his gaze. From such a story, the man was shocked, even more angry. What? How could this have happened? Out of frustration, he hit the armrest of his chair hard. His large eyebrows as well as his tense posture expressed all his bewilderment. It's just unbelievable. As soon as this woman dared to reject a gentleman like me, so at the same time, she just took her sister and just ran away. I had mercy on them, and bought them both, and Vincent had to listen to all this, although it's not his fault that they ran away. Still, I need to explain myself to him completely. She didn't just run away. Before she left, she took a lot of things from our storage. More precisely, she knitted everything that was. But this man wasn't listening to me at all. 
It's just unforgivable. Am I really so bad looking that even a slave like her ran away from me? He thinks completely of his own. The problem is not that she ran away. She looted our entire treasury. It should be taken into account that when that woman left with all the loot, it was already evening. And just during this period of time we managed to close the entrance to the city so that no one could get out. So she is most likely in the city right now and hiding with all her might. And in order to avoid a leak, we need to completely close the entrance to the city without the possibility of anyone leaving from here. Then we will definitely be able to find her, and she will not have time to escape. I need to convince him. He must help us otherwise we will lose all the accumulated possessions for a long time. Good. He agreed to help us, that's already half the battle. But I'm only giving you three days, so guys don't upset me. He says it with a cruel, clingy look. I think you know what will happen if you don't meet my expectations. The consequences will be painful. We have won his favor, so he gave us some time to solve this situation. We need to have time to do everything. Otherwise we will end up like whipping dogs. I understand you, minister. Thanks for everything. Time is short, so you need to collect all possible resources and rush to find them. So I gathered all the people who were offered to us to search, and we all rushed to view the territory of the city. In general, there are about 10 or 15 of us, that's if, not counting animals. I also went with them to track the completion of the task. In our search, we took a white wolfhound of the first category of the second level and a white wolfhound of the first category of the fourth level. They can smell well, so they will definitely help us in our search. The night passed and morning came. I managed to get back from the base by dawn, and everyone didn't notice that I was disappearing from the room. We settled down in the dining room. I was dragged out for breakfast, and the girl sitting next to me wouldn't let up, and she was constantly sticking to me. Why can't she leave me alone? I just want to eat. Oh, I have a taste of fruit. Taste it very well. Deciding not to wait for my answer, she just started bringing a spoonful of food to my mouth. Come on, open your mouth. Since there is no point in this, I calmly accepted the spoon handed to me and ate what was offered. Why did she touch me? Let him get off already. It's annoying. Well, what does it taste like? She asked me with the sweetest smile. How she got? More or less. There's nothing so special about it. I answer her without a single emotion. The girl who was watching all this was a little surprised by what happened. When did they have such a good relationship? She said it out loud. It's just a performance. Don't be too surprised. And in the thoughts of the girl feeding me, judging by her face, a complete mess is going on. You're just some kind of demonic being. And I will be the one who will tame you. Then you will have no choice but to be a cute and fluffy animal. You will have to listen to me, and you will do everything I tell you. So I'm going to make you accompany me to the qualifying exam anyway. Whatever I need to do for this. She's definitely thinking about something strange. Well, look at you. My interlocutor keeps telling me. You're so obedient now. He's definitely mocking me. Well, okay, but I'm eating calmly. Come here. She beckons me to her outstretched hand with a spoon. I'll let you try again. You still seem to like it. I calmly ate what was offered. I don't really have anywhere to go. While I was chewing food, I could hear some kind of shuffling in the corridor, and another girl with golden hair appeared from behind the opening with a baby bird in her hands. Immediately, as soon as she appeared in front of her eyes, she began to chatter something. You tongue. You tongue. She kept repeating. I have great news for you. You will definitely like it. I didn't understand at all what the girl who had just come was talking about. What are you so happy about? Something happened. The girl sitting next to her also did not understand the reason for her friend's mood. You'll never guess. Imagine I woke up in the morning as usual, and suddenly I decided to check the characteristics of my chick, and it turns out that he already has the ninth level. It's just unbelievable. Well, this is very understandable. No matter how you look at it, he has already fully recovered, and raising the level is just a little gift. But didn't he have seven levels before? This is something new. My neighbor was surprised. The girl examined him more carefully, as if trying to catch something with her eyes. Yes, if you check, then he really is already level 9. Although you can't tell right away. How could he surpass this bar? 7. Zhang Lang. My neighbor addresses me. QQ was with you last night. Maybe you found out something. Oh, no. I fell asleep right after you left, so I don't know anything either. They don't need to know that I go to the base. It's none of their business. Then the chick decided to contact me directly. Hey my brother Ant thanks for helping me level up. You're a complete fool. Or the recovery has knocked your brains out. Damn it, don't talk to me. This raises very big suspicions. God, I want to disappear right now. The girls are looking at me wisely, not understanding what's going on and what the chick is talking about. But he keeps talking. You'll still be my best brother in the future. I swear to you. Why are you so surprised? I ask her, looking at her reproachfully. It's just raising two levels. It shouldn't shock you so much. At first I didn't have a level at all. But she just looked at me with cold eyes. It's actually not as easy as you say. I had to spend 7 or 8 years just to reach the first order of the third level. Something doesn't add up here. 
the girl thought. Then how did he transform from a small flimsy ant into a demonic beast of the first order? Of course, I can't find out directly about his level, but that doesn't mean that his level is higher than mine. But what did he actually do? There are several options, but the best one is herbs. He could consume herbs with astonishingly great effect. But can such grass turn into a demonic beast? We can't be completely sure about that. Yes, who has no levels at all? After all this mental process, she abruptly turned to the ant. Why is she looking at me like that? This guy seems to be hiding something from me. I'm sure of it. She's burning a hole in me. Looks like I'm being suspected. Pancake. So we urgently need to get out of this strange situation. If I can't translate the topic, then I can just walk away from the conversation. This is the best solution. So I pushed back my chair and got up from the table. I'm full and won't fit in me anymore. And since I was also completely cured, I went about my very important business. Bye. Maybe it was weird. But that was all I could do before they started asking me about things they didn't need to know. Knowing this, I still feel awkward. The chick realized that I was going to leave, so he gathered with me. Hey, my friend aunt wait for me, I'll go with you. But I refused his company. Don't follow me. I'm going alone. I have a very important and urgent matter. So fly back to the girls. So I went to the exit of the house. But the chick wasn't even going to listen to his friend. And the girls looked at all this and were surprised. This is too suspicious, they both thought. As soon as the bird and I had already managed to go outside, I was already bombarded with questions. Mr. Ant, Mr. Ant, why are you ignoring me? I'm not even doing anything. Listen to me. I need to explain everything to him otherwise he will continue to chat next to me. After all this, we'd better not talk in front of these two. Remember, you can't talk in front of Yu Tong and her gang. I hope you heard me. And imagine what would happen if they found things from the base. It would be very troublesome to explain everything to them without telling the truth. Come on, this would not have happened in any way. So relax, I'll keep it all a secret. They won't even know anything. Good, be so kind to keep an eye on everything. By the time they finish the conversation, the woman he recently saw in the room where they were having breakfast comes out of the building. She is heading somewhere with a cart, but she came out of a completely different room. Hey brother, I turned to my interlocutor, attracting his attention. And who lives in this room? This woman just came out of there. What was she doing there at all? A uh, this. This is Ball's room. Recently there was an explosion due to one unfulfilled contract and since then he has been staying in this room to recover from his wound. He's a little nasty. He is exactly the one who intimidates me with a high level. In short, a second-rate jerk. He's not worth your attention. Why his name is Ball? Does it look like a ball? Well, since your name is Egg and you got out of the egg, then did he get out of the ball? Oh, so he's a demonic beast of the second level. I definitely have to take a look at it. I've never heard of such a thing before and certainly haven't seen it. It also looks like it was about him that Yutong was talking about in the hallway with her friend when I just woke up. Well, the best option to check who is there is to go and check for yourself what is happening there. Well, it's time to pay a visit to someone. I said imagining who might be inside. After completing this conversation, I went straight to the door from which the girl with blonde hair had recently come out. I was able to safely go inside without any obstacles. As soon as I walked a little further than the entrance, I began to quickly inspect the room, turning my head in all directions. Suddenly, at the end of the room, I noticed some big shadow from the animal. He was standing with his back to me, so I could not fully see him. It turned out to be exactly the ball. A fighting leopard of the second order of the third level. And as you could see by the bucket of meat next to him, he was eating. He had quite a frightening aura. As if a little more and he will also devour me like this meat in a bucket. And he is very strong, even the second order. Now it is understood how he could intimidate my bro and get away with it. It's annoying. A little later I was able to get a better look at it. Mostly his body is covered with dark fur, but near the mouth it turns into light gray. He has huge fangs and some strange markings on his face, it doesn't look like scars. He sits calmly and chews a piece of meat, but he still exudes strength. At this moment, how Ball finishes chewing a piece and swallows it. I was able to quickly run out into the street before he noticed me. And just then he turns around a little and says, I have a feeling that there are a lot of people standing behind me right now. Hmm, strange. Well okay, something else is strange. Yu Tong hasn't visited me in a few days, maybe even more, so the meat that was brought to me is very rough and tough. This beast of the second order is simply amazing. He's very scary. As soon as we left the room, Yu Tong came up to me. Come here. She started calling me. It's time for us to go to class. And exactly I completely forgot about these lessons. So we took another girl with golden hair and all went to lessons together. After leaving the territory of the house, we turned further down the street, walking at a normal pace, not hurrying at all. Here I was interested in the situation with the ball and I decided to ask the master about it. Master, I have a question here. Isn't signing a contract an easy task? 
And why is it that when it fails to conclude or some other problem arises, someone suffers? The master immediately answered my question. The problem is that the contract is always like this. In a normal situation, nothing will happen when signing a contract. But if during the process itself someone regrets the decision he made and forces him to terminate the contract, then the one who stops will get infected. Hmm. So, if you think carefully about everything that the owner just told me, then you can understand that either Yu Tong or Ball rejected the contract, and as a result, Ball was injured as punishment for the termination of the contract. This situation has become clear, but in any case I don't know that much. The question also arises why Ball would rather suffer than sign this contract with Yu Tong. Here you can think a lot and create a lot of theories, but you need more information. At the same moment, we see a company consisting of the guards, Vincent, his father and several of their assigned wolfhounds. They pass by a building and have a very tired, but quite emotional dialogue. Vincent's external condition leaves much to be desired. There are huge bruises of a bright purple color under his eyes, just like his father's. A whole night has passed, but they have not found any clues about the girl's escape and the theft of their treasury. They are clearly dejected by this. Yes, this simply cannot be. How did they just disappear like that? It's like they just disappeared into thin air. The father was clearly not prepared for such an incident, and even with the help of the wolfhounds, they could not find a single trace. It's just not possible. I have a guess Vincent says out loud. I think they decided to escape from us while stealing the treasure from the very beginning. Therefore, they thought through everything and left no traces behind them. Otherwise it is impossible to explain it all. While they were talking about it all, one of the wolfhounds they took with them smelled some kind of scent and maybe it will turn out to be the trail they need. The wolfhound looked at one man who was a subordinate of these two people. The wolfhound picked up some kind of trail. Maybe it's a girl. As soon as the men standing a little apart heard this, they fell silent, following the wolf. And very close to this place was an ant with his good friends. The master felt something strange. Very hostile people are heading here and it looks like those two people from the tower are among this group. Jin Lang. The master calls me. A group of people is coming right here. And among them is that evil merchant. They're right behind you. Get ready. What? Why are they heading towards me? Damn it. What should I do? A little more and I'll start to panic. I need to get rid of these two somehow. They will only get in the way if they stay around. And at the same time they will have even more questions than now. Yeah, that's a problem. Okay. I need to come up with something. Ouch. How my stomach ached. It hurts a lot. I just can't. The girl was surprised by such a sharp change in the condition of her friend. Wait a bit, she advised me. We are already very close to the school, so you need to try a little and endure this pain. Looks like they believed me. So the next step. I'm sorry, but I can't take it anymore. So you go first, and as soon as I feel better, I'll follow you right away. Maybe I'll go for medicine. So go ahead, and I won't keep you. At the same moment, some dogs turn into the same street, and they run and rush into the alley. It looks like they're looking for me by smell. Some company is running after them, in which I immediately saw Vincent and that merchant. As soon as they reached the dogs, they saw that they had stumbled into a dead end. What? Why did the wolfhounds bring us here? There's no one here. But they pull themselves together. Don't worry. The smell can come from the other side of the wall. It's best if we split up now and look for another way to go where the wolfhounds point. That's right, Captain. We'll scour the area right now. Immediately, from the side, you can hear the swarming. The wolfhounds noticed this and turned in the direction where the sound was heard. When suddenly a piece of meat falls from somewhere above, the dogs immediately smelled him. Those wolves were interested in the meat I threw, but no more. Those magical beasts down there are wolfhounds. The master explained to me. They have an exceptional charm. Few people can compete with them in this aspect. They can easily smell objects within a mile radius. And as I can probably guess, there's a smell of Zuni on you right now. That's why they came to you. And I'm the council. You need to get rid of them so that they don't track down either us or the base. I totally agree with you. If they continue to loiter around the school forbidden forest with such incredible charm, then our base and Zuni will be discovered. Then we need to eliminate them. Just need to figure out exactly how. We need to get close to them so that everything would go smoothly. So we're going down. So I jump off the roof. While I was flying down to the wolfhounds, I was coming up with a plan of action. We need to knock them out. And then you can imagine it all as meat poisoning. Well, or something else. I'll look at the situation. Since the wolfhounds were distracted by the smell of meat, they did not immediately sense that I was approaching them. So I managed to run into one of them and hit him on the head. So one of the enemies is out. Next, his friend immediately bumped into me, trying to bite while my back was turned to him. But it wasn't there. I saw him right away. So it won't work. So in general, how much you need to be a fool not to follow what's going on behind your back? Well, I'm not a fool. So I turned to face him and collect all my saliva. And while he was very close to me and managed to open his mouth for a bite, I spat into his mouth, thereby poisoning him. 
I'm sorry, but I don't have time to play with you, you understand. The poison has already gone through the body, so the wolfhound can no longer react to me in any particular way. So I don't waste time and swing and hit the enemy with all my might. And she flies up into the air. Sorry, maybe it was too much for you, but there was no other choice. The master suddenly speaks, warning me. Jang Lan hurry up, they're coming back here. You need to make everything sharper. I know the master and I'm doing everything as fast as I can. I think I'll manage before they arrive so don't worry. And if something goes wrong, then you can fix it. I rely on you master. During this dialogue, I take out one drug. But then I notice that only one wolfhound is still conscious. Huh. God. Wow. They didn't faint from my blows before, but look at this. Try to forget everything that happened now and today in principle. So accept all my insults and you will only need to be patient for a few days. And everything will be fine. It seems that my speech did not calm this wolfhound. It's like he's going to bury himself in the ground if I even go near him again. In the end, the last wolfhound managed to make his last sound, which was heard by everyone, including Vincent. So, terrified, they ran to the dead end where the animals were. What happened there? More precisely, one Vincent rushed there with all his legs, and the others slowly followed him. When they came to that place and saw the wolfhounds lying unconscious with their eyes rolled up next to the meat, some liquid was dripping from their noses and a huge amount of red pepper was stuffed into their nostrils. They just blacked out. You asked what happened when you heard a strange sound so look. It's just awful what's wrong with them. Who could have done this? I don't know. Someone strong enough. Vincent couldn't figure out how it all happened. So how did he manage to do it without a trace? Did he somehow manage to sneak past their scent and attack them? Hiding in this secluded cul-de-sac when we were nowhere near. Then the most logical option. He escaped through the top, hiding on the roof. In the same way, he was able to escape, as we had not thought of it before. Without hesitation, the kid makes a jump, thereby jumping onto the roof, and the rest of the pronto stand and look at it. But they pulled themselves together in time. So you too. A man in a robe addresses two people who are dressed in armor. Gather all the people who are with us and wait here. The guys immediately obeyed the man and ran after the others. By the time Vincent managed to climb to the roof of the houses, I managed to distance myself well, thereby buying myself some time. But he still managed to notice me. Oh, here he is. I found you. You won't be able to escape, I assure you. But I managed to get down from the roof into some alley and was left alone. But it won't be for long. Jing Lang, says the master, drawing my attention. Be careful, someone is watching you. And it is very close. Yes, I know that. Teacher, but what should I do if he could notice me? I need to blend in with the crowd somehow. So he probably won't notice me. In fact, he probably could only see you a little, since you were far enough away from you. Yes, the best option is hiding in the crowd. Don't forget to slow down. You can do it I believe in you. By the time the ant managed to leave the alley, Vincent went down to the right place. This girl shouldn't have gone too far. I rode here fast enough. Since the dogs reacted to the ant, Vincent thought that Zhu Nyai herself had come here and it was for her that he was running. This is a mistake. But getting up and leaving the alley, he sees a huge crowd of people. There are too many people here. It's impossible. Coming out of a dark alley. He realizes that this is impossible. How am I going to look for her if there are more people here than I can count? This situation did not like the kid very much and completely spoiled his mood. I won't do anything myself. It needs a lot more workers to search in this crowd. Then I have to meet everyone else and bring them here. I wasted my strength. Infection. And I was standing near the stall and eating with meat on a skewer. It was nice to look at his experiences from the outside. As I understand it, he didn't see me, so he doesn't even suspect me of it. So he just walked past me without even looking in my direction. Well, it's good that he didn't realize that I was me. But then I heard the master's voice. It's good that we escaped. But be careful Zheng Lang. What you did to the wolfhounds will delay them for a few days. No more. So you didn't get rid of them completely. We definitely need to develop a plan for such sudden events. I assure you of that. If they only dare to come to my loved ones, I will show them my real strength. No one will survive then. And how long has it been? I should be at school by now. I'm so late. Damn, we have to run. The issue with the plan needs to be resolved exactly, but definitely not now. G54. After all, I managed to get to school on time. More precisely, I was late. But most importantly, I managed to get to the main part. And then I'll ask if I need to. And the director looks like a real gentleman in this shirt with a tie and a vest. It all fits him perfectly. In general, he stands in front of many students and tells something about their troubles and similar things. But somehow he got to the point. For the exam, all students will have an important qualification exam in a few weeks. This exam is traditionally held at our school. He's been talking about it for a long time and hasn't even raised an eyebrow. So he still tells everything with such a straight face. What a man. And he's very nice. He's just incredible. This is probably the only person who has the fifth order and the ninth level. He can't be that strong. 
Master, don't tell me that this man is a real master. This old man can't have that kind of power. Well, that's not quite true. The owner refuted my words. He is not considered a master yet. But in fact it is difficult to find someone who will be stronger than this man. Huh. He seems to be a serious opponent for us. So it looks like we'll have to take care of this old man if we decide to fight him. But okay, we'll see about that. While I was talking to my master, this man continued to explain something to the people sitting in front of him and unconditionally listening to him. The purpose of the contest is to determine how hardworking each of you is, and who is ready to really plunge into learning problems. Those who greatly distinguish themselves will receive a student trophy, but you have to try hard for him. I hope you understand me. I won't explain everything more than once. In short, I wish you all good luck in the upcoming competition. Try and then your reward will meet all your expectations. Your future depends only on you. That's all I could say. The meeting is over. Enter Zhang Wang. He turned to me. What? What for? Come to my office. The director really turned to me himself. It's horrible. So, when the meeting was over and everyone left, I went to the director's office, who invited me to the meeting himself. I'm still in shock. Director, why did you call me to your office? So at the same time Miss Shen, I saw a familiar face. Why are you here too? Don't attack us so immediately. We called you for a simple reason. Miss Shen and I want to ask you a few questions. I won't delay. Last night, someone broke into the school's campus and stole an item that will be given to the winner of the competition. Oh, that's interesting. This item is a bottle of dragon blood. This is of course very terrible and I'm sorry for your loss and so on. But here one question arises. How does this relate to me? Their attention is not much flattered if I was called for such an occasion. But you were in the building that day. Everything is easy. We need to gather all the information about what happened that day. And only the three of us were at school that day. So you'll just have to tell me what you did at school and didn't you see something strange? This is of course very important. I answer her, looking at the director with a laugh. In response, he very nervously drinks from a mug, sweating all over. He needs to do something. Miss Shen, he calls the girl, drawing her attention to him. There's no need to worry about it. Zheng Lang stayed with me that day. So you can skip this moment and move on to what we are here for now. Good. The girl answered without hesitating. To put it more closely to the point, then we have some information about the kidnapper. That day we got into a fight with him, so I think he is a master of boxing of the second order of the highest level. Now I will give you a photo of the robber that I drew myself. At this moment, she pulls out a folded piece of paper from under the folds of her clothes and hands it to me. God, the quality of this paper is just great. It's not even wrinkled. There's not a single crease. But the only question I have is why did she keep it in this particular place? Well, give it to me. Let's see if I know this person. The picture shows a man with long bangs reaching to the eyes. Only part of the face is visible because of the hood thrown up to the end, despite the fact that there are no very important parts in the drawing. But I still understood who is depicted. Excuse me, Miss Shen says in embarrassment. In the darkness of the night, I could only make out clothes and some small details. Regardless of whether it's a woman or a man, the main thing is that he ran away. Don't worry about it. I already understood what kind of person he is. I've met him before. Calmly I answered the people standing in front of me. Really, the director said in surprise. It's good that you know who you're talking about. Finally, we have at least some kind of clue. Overwhelmed with her feelings, the girl very loudly hit the table with her palms. So you were able to see his characteristic features, am I right? I thought about it. Characteristic features, you say. Yes, I'm pretty sure it's the same person. I'll draw you. I resolutely put down the sheet with the suspect drawn on it, took the pen out of the inkwell and finished drawing the necessary features. Okay here. I drew it the way it looked. So I calmly handed the girl a piece of paper with a slightly corrected image. Bringing the outstretched piece of paper to Miss Shen's face, she immediately saw one of the many details that I drew. A very large breast. I'm sure this is a very important part of the study. So Miss Shen reads the written information from the text. The alleged suspect is a woman, her bust size, level, career is also spelled out here. Thank you very much that should be enough. Well, then I'll go to the mercenaries and report this news with a big price. So she turned around and went to the exit of the office in which we were together with the director. I carefully watched her leave. After she left for sure, I continued the conversation. I have one question for you, I said, turning completely towards the man. Why is Shen paying close attention to this thief? She cares too much about all this. The answer to the question is quite clear. Miss Shen was on duty that day, so according to the rules, she should take responsibility for what happened that day. And if she can't find that bottle of dragon blood before the competition starts, then Miss Shen will be fired. Of course, I could assign several people to help her, it might save her from being fired, but that's not for sure. Is he trying to push for pity? Since we're done, I can probably go. I need to get out of this conversation. I still have a job to do, so I don't have time to linger here. But then the director abruptly interrupted me with a long sigh. 
Unfortunately, we only have Miss Shen, who is able to fight, and if she leaves, the group of teachers of the magical state may not want the demonic creature to remain as their disciple. What? What is he hinting at? I will show this director what I am capable of for the sake of the people dear to me. As a disciple of Teacher Shen, even if she becomes my teacher for one day, I will remain her disciple forever. Just tell me what I can do for her. This guy forced me. He also looks at me with such a smirk. How infuriating. How glad I am that our school has such a good student like you, so I feel very proud and grateful for it. But then the director gives out something unexpected. Actually, before I called you to my office, I had already decided to buy a bottle of dragon blood in exchange for the one that was stolen. While I was thinking about what I said, the director slowly walked up to the window, as if looking at something. But he turned to me half a turn and looked at me with a caustic grin. But according to marketers, dragon blood is extremely rare and expensive, so this idea can't work. I finished for him with obvious understanding. It's just not possible to do that. Damn, I hit the table with all my might with my fist out of frustration. Are there really no other options? That's just terrible. How so? This is very unfair. Then the only option we have is to find the kidnapper. But we have very little time, so we need to act right now. I said with wild eagerness to help my teacher. And the director just looked at my proposal with a laugh. Calm down, you. Miss Shen and I have enough for now. And I have another plan for you. He said this with a gentle smile. You will participate in that very contest. He says to me, turning abruptly to face me. Think for yourself. In fact, dragon's blood is a gift for a student. So we can use fake blood. So if you win, we'll just replace it later and no one will know about it. If I'm not mistaken. He continued. You have received the first order of the fourth level in a fairly short time. So I think your talent is not that weak. So you can become a rival for many students. But the director I won't be able to participate. The competition is held for students of the second and third grades. I noticed, remembering the rules for the competition. In fact, most of the students were born into an ordinary family. And only a few of the summon beasts they use haven't even reached the first level even though their own level is six of the first order. You don't have to worry. I think I can handle those who are at about the sixth or seventh levels. But there is one catch. What should I do with those who are beyond the seventh level? Well, everything is easy here. You can act as a summon beast for another person. So you will fight twice as hard with opponents. I'll listen to him. No, the plan is very working. But there is one but. Are you seriously going to expose me as a summon beast? Are you serious? I was full of anger and resentment. Well, why not? You only need to sign a temporary contract. So you can choose the person yourself. It seems to me a good offer. It really annoys me that you put me in front of the fact. Okay, just give me a few seconds to think about all this. I need to solve this as quickly as possible and decide who will be my summoner. But that's not all. It would be too easy if there were no problems. Nevertheless, we still have one big problem. These are a few students in the third grade. These are geniuses whose abilities are higher than most of their peers. The director spoke sternly. It's obvious he's not joking. So we are separately considering Mei Zairu. This time she is one of several of the geniuses who will compete and she will strive to win, or rather she is a potential winner. And in fact, the dragon's blood is being prepared for her summon beast, the ice dragon horse, a very interesting combination of dragon horse, as cold as her dragon, constantly wears armor, practical, but hard. Also, two other students with potential high grades are inferior to Yi Hachen, who owns the element of wood. Last year he took the sixth place, has beautiful blonde hair and a pleasant personality. And Zhu Fei Hang, a swordsman with a serious face, took seventh place last year. Remember these three young men. They are talented even among geniuses. The director began to explain to me with a serious face. Already last year they were able to reach the sixth level. And this year they have probably already reached the second order. I can't cope with them. Of course there is a chance if I am alone with someone, but not a chance that I will succeed. Then what should I do? They will be impossible to defeat. But in response, the director says one thing. I'm not asking you to defeat them all. Let's just say it's my wish. In short, you have to hold out until the first round. This is your only goal during this contest, so you need to improve your own strength as quickly as possible. In words, it's easy as always. In these few days before the concert, devote yourself completely to preparing for competitions so you don't have to go to school. The man explained to me intelligently with a smile. How I don't want all this farce. I want you to know. In my desires there is only hard study and nothing more. I hope you understand this. Yeah, oh, I hear the owner's voice. Agree to his offer. This is a chance for us to learn something new. And I was just afraid that you would be marking time. Understand that strong opponents are needed for your development. You can also gain experience in battles. Maybe you'll get some skills. Think about it. And only then make an informed decision. After standing for a while with a very serious face, I thought about everything. 
I decided to address myself to the man directly. Leave it all to me. I can handle it. The man was glad of my answer. It beautiful you're a very brave young man for your age. At this moment we find out that all this time Yutong followed the ant and waited for him under the director's office. She was very curious about the reason he was called. Hell, he's been there forever. What can be discussed for so long and why is it still not coming out? So before I go out, I'm going to check the plan again. He comes out of the office and we accidentally bump into him. The girl says out loud, smiling tenderly. And then he comes out of the director's office. Lingering in the doorway, they talk with the director. Well, a deal is a deal. The guy speaks to the man before completely leaving the room. Hore, he finally came out. I've been waiting for him for a very long time. So, as soon as he gets closer here, I apply the plan. If everything goes on so smoothly, then he will be mine, I'm sure. Finally, she came out of the director's office. They probably discussed everything possible. While he was walking peacefully and thinking about everything, a girl he knew came out of the corner. Oh, it's Yu Tong. What an unexpected coincidence, says the girl out loud. And the weather is very good today. What kind of weather are you talking about? And hear the weather on the street. Speak plainly already. Stop marking time in the same place. You already have questions you want to ask me. So let's take a chance. I'm listening to you. At this, damn, he sees right through me. Damn right. I wanted to ask you something. This contest will take place in a few days. She said uncertainly, looking away somewhere to the side. Good, come on, there's no problem with that. And she asked me about it very timely, so I agreed to her proposal without even thinking about it. Well, that's what I'm telling you. What? Did you agree right away? She is very surprised by all this. I'm talking. I agree. I repeat, I'm a little louder to her. I'll be your magical beast for the duration of the competition, and then we'll destroy the contract. And you're just going to agree. It's kind of suspicious. A look of doubt crosses her face. He doesn't believe my words. What are you talking about, Yu Tong? It's time to be an actor for a while. I'm doing it quite sincerely. In a rush, I grab her hand and pull her towards me. Of course I will agree to your proposal. We're friends, and friends should help each other no matter what happens. She obviously did not expect such speeches from me after a cold attitude. That's why she's standing there, just staring at me and not knowing what to say. She blushed very much from my words. Hmm, is it really so? She told me, and the look became quite gentle. Yu Tong let's fight together, so we will become the champions of this competition. I told her with a smile. Right now I am very determined in this. Do you want to become a champion? Good. It's probably a good goal. She seemed to want to tell me something else, but I interrupted her. But I will leave for a while before the competition because I have a lot to prepare. So I'm not coming back today. Oh, and be sure not to forget to warn Sister Lin Fei about this. Having finished this dialogue on a friendly note, we went our separate ways. Yu Tong remained standing in place and just stared at my back with a dreamy look. It looks like I stunned her. Hey <laughs> hey, now she should be grateful to me. I did her a huge favor that only a few would agree to. G56. I finally left the school building and walked down the street, not thinking about the direction at all. While I was going through several houses, I was thinking about my own, assuming that I might need to compete and how difficult it would be. Nevertheless, I decided to ask the teacher about our path, and to be more precise, where we are going now. Master where are we going now? Do we have a certain place? Yes, the master answered me. Now we are heading to the forest of evil monsters. What? Why to this place? Are you sure? I asked with great doubt in my voice. A forest of evil monsters. This is a very dangerous place. When we get there, I don't even know what exactly we can expect there. But immediately the master responded to this with a small lecture. Yes you are right. But this is the advantage of this place. It is very difficult there. And when you are there with the probability of dying, many of your own opportunities open up to you. This is also the best option since we have only a few days before this important competition. So the forest of evil monsters is the best choice for us. I understand you well, master. Approaching the exit from the city, I saw a huge number of people. A whole crowd. All people were tested for something that is very strange. I got in line. Why did they arrange such a sudden security check? HM. It's very strange. As soon as it was my turn, I approached the man at the table. He has quite strange clothes, and what kind of hat is so strange? Well, I smiled sweetly, saying my reason for leaving the city, of course, correcting it a little. Uncle, hello, I want to go to the forest of evil monsters and visit my cousin. We haven't seen each other for a long time. And then suddenly something happened to him, I must definitely check on him. In response to this, he looked at me very strangely. It looks like he's insulting me in his thoughts. What the hell are evil monsters doing in this city too? Well, he seems to look normal and not aggressive at all. You can go now. He missed me very easily. Although with a certain hitch it's good. The man who was questioning people stretched his face, clearly surprised by something. 
He was very surprised that the evil monster turns out to be able to speak, so at first he didn't even pay attention to it. But I decided not to worry about such a thing and calmly walked out of the city in the direction I needed. I left this fortress and walked through a semi-desert clearing, walked past a large tree and headed into a very dense forest. That's how I left the city and headed towards the forest of evil monsters. This forest is quite different from its own kind. Its atmosphere is very dark, but it may seem to me because of the shadow that lies on the whole forest like a blanket. Yes, even if compared with ordinary forests, I have never seen such huge trees. They are very thick and long, and their hat is so voluminous that it does not miss a single ray of sunlight. It all looks very atmospheric, but you need to be ready for anything. Monsters can attack me from anywhere. The same problem is that I don't know anything about the inhabitants here, so I don't even know what to expect from this place, and the ground here is very hard. There is stone almost everywhere. Walking slowly, I start a conversation. Something is moving under me, but I don't notice it at all. This is the first time I've been in this place. In fact, this forest of evil monsters is not much different from other forests. Yes, it seems very huge, but no more. I tell my impressions to the master. It's full of all sorts of evil monsters, so a person is forbidden to be in such a place. No one will come here except the army and various researchers who are in search of something new. But they are fools if they come here just for the sake of new impressions. So this is an ideal place where we will not be touched. And we can safely use all our strength here, training our skills. I don't know. Him. This is completely true. I agree with you. A real fight is the best way to develop abilities. While I was saying all this, I noticed a huge stone crab standing behind me, covered with moss and earth. I continue to tell the master something resolutely. But then who am I going to fight? There's no one here, and I haven't seen a single monster along the way. The crab begins to swing its claw. The teacher laughed at me a little. Your enemy is behind you. As soon as I turn around, I see this huge monster, and it almost grazed me with its claw. I thought I would have time to dodge, but I didn't have time for that anymore. So he hit me with all his might, and I jumped away somewhere to the side. So I fell with all my might and crashed into the root of a nearby tree. But the master is not at all confused by what is happening. This is a giant stone crab of the first order of the sixth level. He is a very good competitor to start with. Only you didn't notice how you stepped on it, so you didn't pay attention at all when it started to rise. This is very bad. You have to stay alert all the time, and suddenly the enemy will catch you by surprise. G.O.R. How infuriating it is. Master, couldn't you tell me about him not before the blow itself? Eh? Hey. You were calmly able to warn me, I said, brushing myself off from splinters, stone and pieces of earth. Now I'm all beat up. This will be a lesson to you. You don't watch your surroundings at all. It's really like you're going to your home to visit your dear family. I realized my mistake. Now I'm a little embarrassed. So don't mock me. I realized what my problem was. It won't happen again now. I said, examining my new enemy. He is really very big, but does he have any weaknesses? But why is this giant stone crab so big? If I think about it for so long, it won't end well, so I need to act. Okay, I'm not up to it right now, so I need to attack. I move my foot to a more comfortable position to perform a jerk. I flex my muscles and take the first step. I rush to him with all my might. How dare you even attack me from behind? Haven't you been taught that this is a very mean trick? So you need to be taught a lesson. Taste my fist. Jing Lang's first step in boxing. While I have less than a meter left from the enemy, I bring my hand to strike already using one skill. A piercing wind blows on the head of this stone crab. G57. But this blow did not give any result. We just stayed standing in one place as if the wave from my blow had never happened. He just got a little dusty. It turns out that he put his claw on defense. And he turns out to be able to think. And not take blows directly to the forehead. But how is this possible? He didn't even move, but just kept standing there. While I was thinking about it, O decided to counterattack me. A giant stone crab swung at me, but I managed to dodge without tripping over something either. I need to figure out how to beat him, since it looks like the element of wind does not work. Then something else is needed. Then we will improvise. Dodging. I carefully flew away from the enemy, quickly squatting down, quickly thinking about the approximate arsenal of my abilities. What the hell is the matter? I need to figure out how I can hurt him. Otherwise I will be so busy with him for a very long time and eventually I will get completely tired. Well, then let's try to use it on you. I collect my saliva in my mouth and shoot it at him. There is an option that it will work on him, but I'm not really sure. Saliva falls on the crab's claw, which he managed to cover himself with in time. And again there is not a single reaction to my attack. They don't seem to reach him. Here are all the claws intact. Damn, he managed to counterattack me again. A giant stone crab swings its heavy left claw. But I managed to dodge to the right, completely forgetting that he has another claw. He has never used it. 
And at that moment, the crab struck with all its might next to me with its right claw, but without having time to reach me because I was not close enough. He crushed all the stone that fell under his claw. And I could have been in that place, it's just terrible. I don't even want to imagine. I'm already starting to get exhausted. I need to finish this fight faster. I was close to autumn. What would happen to me if I completely screwed up? I'm getting nervous about this. Hey you. The master lying on his staff attracts my attention to himself. So what? Are you mad? And now you need to think carefully and decide which resources are best for you to use. And what do you even have that you can use? Yes, I've already figured that out. The plan to just beat him can't be involved. I can see by your posture and by your look that you are in great confusion right now. Deka will get ahead of you how are these tricks that will be able to cope with people of the second order for some reason powerless in front of monsters that are only two levels higher than yours, am I right? He said it with a sweet smile. He's egging me on rather than supporting me. Just take a better look at his appearance. His shell is harder than any stone, and eight legs can safely dig into the ground, and his huge claws. He knows exactly how to use these claws, just like hammers. So if we look at him in more detail, then his pose resembles a heavily armed heavyweight knight. Fully covered with equipment with necessarily heavy weapons and a shield. Usually such a monster takes 4 out of 5 people with the same levels to destroy. Damn, this clearly shows the disparity of powers and abilities between monsters and humans. Let's call it a legitimate monster position. Well, I look at him again with a suspicious look. Yes, I see it now. And for the sake of this analysis, I needed to miss a few hits from this stone crap. I say, taking off my already battered raincoat at the same time. Well, since it's just a battle based on physical strength, then I shouldn't get closer to him than I need. That's all, throwing away the removed cloak. Getting into a more confident pose, I continued to think. I do not know both the total magical and physical potential, since I haven't tested my strength since the recent game. Perhaps this stone crab is equal to the limit of my strength, but that's not for sure. So we will check. During this reflection I came close to this stone and took it with clear determination. I'll definitely pick it up. I picked it up but how heavy it is. But I still feel like I can lift heavier things. I need to hold out a little bit and as soon as I get closer and make sure that I finish the stone, I'll throw it. Everything can be thrown. I clearly threw a stone right at the crab. My enemy definitely did not expect this. He managed to orient himself and even with his low mobility made a dash and dodged. He won't run away from me. An incredible bloodlust awoke in me. You really thought you could do it? I said, swinging another stone. And this time I hit it. He won't run away from me anymore. Haha. <laughs> I hit him with a rock a few more times and maybe he lost consciousness, but that's not enough for me. So I swung at him again and said, If a punch to the face didn't kill you, then you need a supplement. I jerked to the side and lifted him into the air, spinning and hitting him. How about an uppercut? Do you like? I feel enough for him. So I threw him aside after finishing the battle and got into a fighting stance. And the crab fell and crashed into a tree and raised a huge amount of dust into the air, so you can't see anything. But I'm sure I'm done with it. After finishing that battle, I turned my body towards my teacher, flashing a happy smile. Well, am I good? Have you seen the master? I was able to defeat a giant stone crab that is two levels higher than me. Well, just think about it, you just touched me once. It's not a problem, the main thing is that I won. Well, praise me, I'm really good. Endlessly I began to boast to the teacher. It was a very difficult battle, but I coped, I didn't even expect from myself. I was also on the verge of death. It was very close, he could have easily hit me and turned me into a stone crumb if I hadn't dodged. Yes, I was very surprised, the master said in his thoughts. This giant stone crab is stronger than many monsters of the second order. So I thought Zheng Lang would be easily defeated and then I could mock him. He always reacts sharply to my instigations and then I could have a lot of fun. But I did not expect this at all and he completely turned my mind with his victory. But what to do now the situation is getting worse. Is it my imagination or does the master look upset? Jin Lang, I advise you to run now. Since the giant stone crab had just been injured, he turned to the monsters from his tribe for help. So they're going to rush here now. And we won't be able to leave. We need to run now. Damn, but it is too late to run. They have already managed to all come. This is very bad. We'll have to fight all of them again. And I just thought that I could rest. And here is such a setup. G58. God, this is terrible. I'm already tired of running from them. At this rate, we will probably be able to run around this forest with evil monsters. So, and at the same time, we will take other monsters. Don't chase me anymore, please. I promise I won't touch you anymore. I'll just leave your territory. Why don't you keep up with me? Master please save me I don't want to fight anymore. One of the crabs managed to get closest to me. So he managed to swing his claw and almost hit me. It's good that I saw it and managed to jump in time. I, yes, leave me alone. Escape doesn't work anymore, they keep chasing me anyway. And I'm better at running with all my might. I am very tired. 
I need to hide somewhere for a while and recuperate. Otherwise they will catch me and I will perish. Also, the master does not respond. I hope he's doing well. While I was running, thinking about all this, I saw in the distance a very large tree with a thick trunk. I can hide on it. I need somewhere to take a break from them, and then I'm sure it won't be for long. But I'm still going to arrange at least a little respite. With such thoughts, I climbed up the tree. But one of the crabs managed to get too close to me. Yes, why did you catch me again? I shouted in frustration. Just a little more and I'll pay. I can't stand it anymore. This same crab tried to grab me by the tail while I was climbing up the trunk. He practically did it, but he lacks faster movements. My tail is also moving. But I managed to climb on a tree branch in time. I got to where they definitely won't reach. And I can finally rest. My legs are already falling off. Well, it's good that only the legs, and not something else. Well, you were a close stone crab. And which one of you almost grabbed me by the tail? You're also alike. I don't even know who to praise now. Okay, aside from the joke, I need to decide how I should get out of this situation. Also, another problem is that the master does not respond to my call in any way at all. And I don't feel it at all, something needs to be done. If they catch me, I will definitely die. So I should go back to the base, since I don't see any point in staying in this forest any longer. Here I wanted to touch the stone on my head and use spatial magic. But suddenly the owner flew by and took it from me. He just flew by on his staff and took the stone, but how could he? Master, why did you take my stone? Then he turns to me with a grin in his eyes and says very good news. The training has just begun, Daredevil. So why do you give up right away? And who told me that he would learn his strength in a real battle? I will return Wang Shulu to you only after the training is over. So good luck to you. Try to survive. Before that, you did it yourself, so I'll fly. And you survive with all your strength. The master told me, turning his back to me. And without even looking at me, he flew wherever his eyes looked. What? What should I do? The master just betrayed me. How could he do this to me? I just can't figure it out. I was a good student. I tried. And I didn't even take offense at his caustic jokes. He was very dear to me. And what has become of it now? He just flew away from me. And now I don't know what to do. Master. I started crying. Please come back. I don't want to go through this forest. A little more and I'll have a tantrum. While I was spreading my snot in tears, the hedgehog crabs managed to scratch half of the tree trunk. A few more movements and the tree I'm sitting on will just fall. And I'll get right into the claws of these animals. I don't want to look down. So you need to come to your senses and look at the situation with a sane mind. If it still continues, the tree will fall in a few minutes. I thought when I examined more carefully what was going on around. And now the only thing left for me is to climb up to the very crown of this tree. I said looking above myself, it's not so difficult for me to reach the crown, there are even several branches that will help me with this, so stop. I have the best idea that I can implement at the moment. If I am very lucky, when the tree falls, I will be able to land on the grass and escape from there, while no one will have to see me. So, and now we climb to fulfill the conditions for this plan. So first I need to get to the top of the tree. I'm trying with all my remaining efforts to carefully reach the goal. Sometimes my hands can't stand it, but I climb again. Well, I did it. I climbed through the lush green crown of this tree and got to the very top. It looks like a lonely protruding branch, but she is strong enough to hold onto her and lean on her whole body. Now we have to wait for the tree to fall. The crabs had completely carved out the tree trunk, so that it tilted and began to slowly fall. And everyone was just watching it. While the tree was falling, I was thinking about the following actions. The main thing is that I need to fly calmly without clinging to anything with my body. Otherwise I'll just get stuck somewhere between the trees. So now I detach myself from the branch and carefully jump towards the huge bushes. They will soften my fall. Well, now I'm on earth. It remains only to find out if anyone has seen me. Only then can I leave safely. I can't take another chase anymore. So it seems like they left me behind. It's tedious to check everything again. And then suddenly of course something will go wrong. There's no one around. All I can do is go home hore. But then I notice some swarming in the nearby bushes. What are they doing there? I can't understand. I can only hear them talking. Ruhui I fell in love with you a long time ago. You have no idea how strong my feelings are. No need. Not here. What if someone sees you and me together? These are people of the second order of the fourth level. They are engaged in all sorts of obscenity. What a horror. You're such a bad boy. Someone saw all my body parts because of you. Is she naked? Damn, who dared to interfere with my very important business? Damn, they noticed me. God, I just saw something very nasty. How can I restrain myself and not throw up? I need to get out of here faster. You guys keep going. I said to the animals, making a fool of himself. I will not interfere with you in any way. Don't pay any attention to me at all. I'm leaving here right now. A man of the second order of the fourth level picked up a huge spike baton and began to threaten me. A little more and he will attack me. How dare you run away after you saw my Ruhua's body? I will kill you and then I will be calm. 
Uh, no, I don't want to die. Yes, who cares about your beloved's body at all? It's definitely not me. I shouted to him, running out of the bushes. But then I accidentally stepped on something solid, but quite alive. It's moving. I turned around to see what I had stepped on, and I saw a huge body twice as big as me. A big mane. It turned out to be the tail of a male lion of the third level of the second category. What the hell? I'm trying to get out of here, and I'm getting into even more trouble. God, it's scary. I'm going to cry. I'm on the verge. I can't do everything anymore. Everyone has already driven me. First the owner, then the crabs, the monster, and now the lion. I'm so sick of everything. Well, don't run away. Who I'm talking to? A subhuman is shouting at me. And in response to him, a lion roars. Don't chase me. Just leave me alone, everyone. I'm just tired of running around with all of you. I shout, taking my feet away from this place. And because of this, the crabs heard me, who had recently calmed down and left me behind. So I decided to see who was running after me because the trampling behind me was just deafening. Glancing over my shoulder, I noticed that subhuman, a lion and a huge number of stone crabs. Only now there are even more crabs. Yes, why is everything exactly like that? I shouted out of complete indignation. Why there are more and more of them. Master, I try to shout to my teacher, tearing off the last bundles. Master save me, I beg you. Have mercy on me from this chaos. I'm begging you. And the master is sitting in shock on his staff, not even knowing what to do. It is simply impossible to look at it. But when you do look, you don't know what you feel, it's either complete indignation or laughter in the shower. But he had to get into such a mess that half of the forest is running after him now. It's just unbelievable. The master sighs loudly, exhaling her lungs to just calm down. How could he have gotten himself into such huge trouble? So that's putting it mildly. And do the same. Still wait until something interesting has happened or really save him. Hey, it's time to save him. I can't leave him like this. The master finally decided. The master decided to save his disciple after all. I'm so tired of running away from all these assholes. We have already managed to run around half of the forest together. And a little more and I'll just run out of steam. When the master will save me. I've called him so many times already. Let him already respond to my call. At the same moment, as if hearing me, the master appears in the vicinity. Jin Lang, he calls my name, attracting his attention. Go to the right side. He advises me, looking through what is on the path that the student advised. If you take a good look at the road, you can see a ravine, which is covered with a very large stone from above. It looks like there was a collapse once, but if you look at it, you can see a small gap from below. And in theory, you can slip through there. So we run there. Having reached this place, I was able to slip through that gap, leaving my enemies on the other side. And since they are much bigger than him, they won't even be able to get through. It is for this reason that he mocks them. At that moment while he was climbing to the other side, he he, you won't be able to log in no matter how much you want to. So don't force yourself and relax. Damn, the monsters are not very happy about what happened. They allowed themselves to miss this little ant, although they tried to kill him. Well okay, let's give him a chance to run. We'll definitely catch him. A subhuman in a campaign with a lion turns to a huge pile of stone crabs and drives them far away. Get out of here, you trash of the first order. He doesn't take them seriously at all. The stone crabs are unhappy with this, so they're going to prove what they deserve. Bite them. They are shouting resolutely as a whole group. The subhuman, along with the lion, only laugh at this loud statement. How dare you? The subhuman begins to speak, examining all the crabs that have jointly cordoned them off. You are newbies, small fry who won't be able to stand up against us. So their battle begins. The subhuman begins to fight back with his club, having managed to hook someone while waving it. And behind his back, a lion is fighting, beating off enemies with his claws. That's what I understand the battle. As I look at them, they're having a lot of fun without me. That's great. But the fact that they started the battle in just a few seconds is very surprising. Hey, I exhaled loudly, turning away from this unimaginable sight. Well, all the evil monsters that live in this forest are so unfriendly. Like that, they immediately use their fists and go into battle. But since they can have fun without me, then I won't touch them, I said aloud, moving away from the crack. We need to look around. A little further away I saw a huge lake or whatever it is. God, I'm just thirsty. I was very lucky to stumble upon a pond. I hope that the water in it is at least drinkable. To hell with it. So I ran straight to the shore, not paying attention to anything. When I reached the pond, I immediately plunged into it with my face, not looking at anything. The water is very refreshing. I am so drawn to drink it. But the inhabitants are a little surprised by such a drastic interference in their space. Pisces looks at the part of the protruding face with surprise, and some may be thinking of attacking. Having found some water, I pulled away from the edge of the pond and sat down a little further away. Right now I feel alive. Otherwise, after this running around, you can easily become a dead man. I said out loud, wiping my face from the drops left on the oval of my face. We rested a little and that's enough. It's time to get back to survival. 
By the way, the master disappeared somewhere after he told me where to run. Well, it looks like he just flew away and decided to leave me alone, as he had planned before. Well, since I don't have Wang Shu Lu, I can only count on myself, since the master may not come to my aid next time. First I need to find food in a place where I can hide for a while. Then I need to do all this before dark. Otherwise I will spend the night on the street completely hungry. I said, getting up from the heated place and starting to walk away from the lake. But suddenly I heard something behind me. A clear splash. What is going on there? Suddenly a shadow looms over me. Lifting my head from the ground, I see a lot of fish flying in the air. It looks like she jumped right out of the water. What else is this? And what about their face? Are they evil? What the fuck? I don't understand what's going on at all. Before I could react, all this fish started flying in my direction. And as soon as I was in their direction, the whole force of these fish immediately fell on me. It turns out they beat me up. It's just awful. So I found myself under a huge stinking blockage of fish. So also this whole pile is very heavy. One fish even managed to catch onto me and swallowed half of my head. Well, at least I've solved the food issue. Now I have something to eat. I said with a slightly sad face. But only this smell reached my receptors. I quickly jumped up from under the rubble and started shaking myself off. God, this fish stinks. This fishy smell is too strong. I'm not going to wash it off. We need to be careful. I'll get into some more mess. While I was thinking about all the options for a night's lodging and an approximate plan of action before dark, I began to remove the fish from my head, and she clung well with her teeth. But then I looked at her characteristics, and I was a little surprised. She was noted as a fish with a big mouth with the third level. Even ordinary fish have different levels in this place. I said out loud, God, this forest of evil monsters is really dangerous. I need to be more careful and always be on guard. And as soon as I finished this sentence, I slipped on a fish when I was getting out from under a fish attack. So I started to lose my balance and my body quickly changed position in space. I, I shouted. I did not expect this from this situation at all. Similarly, I fell into a pond in which I recently drank water. And since I did not expect this, I did not have time to orient myself in this situation, but I managed to get more air into my lungs. While I was trying to figure out what had happened, a large number of fish were watching me, like those that attacked me on the shore. As soon as I noticed them, I realized that I had to get out of here. You never know what can happen. Otherwise they don't behave like ordinary fish. Everything is too strange, and their face. Isn't that their face? Okay, I'll think about it later, there's no time. The fish started moving towards me. This is very bad. I quickly turned around and started rowing towards the shore. I need to swim out. With these thoughts in mind, I began to row diligently in order to get ashore. I need to get out before I run out of air in my lungs. But I didn't calculate one thing. This is their habitat, so they move much faster than me. So they got me faster than I could get close to the surface, but I was close. They all pounced on me, and at that moment I had nothing left to air at all. The fish completely surrounded me, not giving me at least some opportunity to grab onto the ledge, which is very close. They even continued to advance, from where there are so many of them. Damn, they came very close to me. I even have the opportunity to move somehow. I just need a little more effort, and I can reach the other shore. But the fish keep pressing into me. I'm running out of air. Is that really how I'm going to die? Everything is very bad. My eyes are starting to darken due to the lack of oxygen in my body. Damn, has my time really come again? Even my eyes can't stand it anymore. Everything started to fog up, and my lungs began to fill with water. This feeling of fullness is not the most pleasant. Am I dead again? And what will happen now? I never thought it would be so ridiculous. I died because of that stream of lake fish that swooped down on me. They literally strangled me. And at the same time, before that, I was able to escape from the clutches of a monster twice as large as all of them. Exactly. What about the master? I probably disappointed him. He had such great hopes for me. And the work at the base. He thought I could solve everything there. And now all the work that will take place there will fall on Zhu's fragile shoulders. How is she going to cope with all this alone? She doesn't take care of herself at all. He'll get hurt again and won't tell anyone. But then I really hope for the raven and the mouse. They will help if necessary, so everything will be fine. And the director will not succeed without me then and everyone will figure out that the dragon's blood was stolen. And Miss Shen might get fired. Ah and Yu Tong. I won't be able to take the exam with her. Damn. Well, I'm sorry. I won't be able to fulfill my promise that I made to you. In fact, I had so much ahead of me. There are so many plans. But now I won't fulfill them. And what is that sound? Something familiar. Can I open my eyes? Oh, and what am I seeing? Is this me? Oh, this is my past life. I'm just a kid here. These are my past memories. I swing at them and hit with all my might into the belly of a bear that is standing on its hind legs and eating apples. Judging by my reaction to all this, I was at that moment as wrong as possible in what I was doing. It's necessary to think of something to beat a huge bear that is two or three times bigger than me. Yes, it was the most stupid thing to do. 
Well, I was a kid and not very bright. And if you look at the bear's face, you can understand that he is not very happy about it either. He's clearly angry. Then I took a few punches from him. The bear threw an apple at me, which he had recently chewed. It hurt. He put a lot of effort throwing it, but he wasn't really interested in me. So he saw that I got the change from him and just turned around and went about his business. Probably went to finish his apples. And I fell. Well, I was trying to prove something. Yourself. Maybe. Damn. I started to climb slowly. The recoil from the apple seemed to be strong. Failure again. I was saying to myself while someone came close to me. In fact it was my father. But I don't notice him because I'm starting to dig into my anxious thoughts. If everything goes on like this, I won't learn anything and will remain a loser. I say out loud, blaming myself. I really want to sit in class with others. But for this I need to overcome myself. It's so hard. But I want to be with others at school. I want to see my beautiful classmates. But I can't because of my weakness. How helpless I am. But then I heard my father. I was surprised to see him at that moment. Jing Lang get up. You need to try again. That's the only thing he told me. I wanted to be like a father. He was a role model for me. Strong and confident. While my younger version from a previous life was thinking. My father waited for a while and spoke again. If you want to leave here. He began, turning away from me. And if you want to go to school like all your peers. Then you have to learn all the boxing techniques that I showed you. That's all. I don't demand more from you. After you learn everything. Then I'll send you there. M yes. Small I'm not happy about all this. When I learn all these techniques, then I will be old. I will be somewhere in my twenties. I wailed in response to my father's words. Then I won't be able to go to school anymore. It will be too late. And my father just looks at me, clearly not understanding what I want to convey to him. Or maybe he just decided to keep quiet. But the devil knows. I remember that moment. He decided to interrupt my speech by changing the subject. He decided to interest me in history. Jing Lang, do you know that this boxing skill wasn't actually invented by our family? What? I was surprised at that moment. Then why is it called the Zhen family boxing skill? The answer to this question is very easy. Because at the moment when our ancestors mastered boxing skills, they had not yet given it a name. At the moment of the conversation, he paused a little, giving me time to think about everything. But he looked at me over his shoulder and continued. This boxing skill has nine variations. He started explaining it to me on his fingers. But only the first six variations can be learned from all of them. Yes, I remember that too. The bottom line is that there is something missing in the last three variants, so in fact no one can learn them. Everyone who tried failed, but only the first six variations can give you great power. Finishing his monologue, he makes an initial swing with his hand, using all his muscles, puts the leg in the correct position, and at the end of the preparations, he seems to make a breakthrough. I thought it would be a jerk, but in fact he hit the air with all his strength, thereby letting the blow go further. The blow flew on without stopping, causing the trees to shake and break. I didn't see him, but I felt him. I felt a wave-like impulse from this blow, it even went over the ground. He completely destroyed the trees that stood in his way. And then he walked along the mountain, soaring into the sky along it. It all happened in a matter of seconds. My father's powers have always surprised me. After reviewing everything that happened, he turned in my direction and said, Boxing skill can use all the strength of your body. Only you need to increase your own strength so it happened that a lot depends on it. So as soon as your strength becomes greater, then you will become stronger. It all depends not on the skill, but on your own abilities. You have to understand that. I was surprised by this knowledge, so I just looked at my father, trying to comprehend what I had heard. The power emanating from our body. I asked out loud, but there was no answer to my question. The father insisted on his own. To go to school, you have to understand this, and remember it well. I understood why I remembered it now, and not later or earlier. I need to wake up and save my ass from here. At that moment I opened my eyes. I'm still in the same lake and surrounded by the same fish, and I still feel bad. I need to figure out what exactly needs to be done. I understood the theory, but in practice everything is more complicated. If the essence of a boxing skill is the concentration of physical strength, then magic should work the same way. But you need to understand exactly how I should collect all this magical power. So I'm trying to gather all the magic power in my fist, or rather I'm trying. It's a little difficult to concentrate in this situation. So again, concentrate. I need to combine boxing power, magic and physical in one blow. Damn it, I need to wake up. My eyes are closing. Something is working out. I mentally concentrate all the power I have in my fist. We have to hold her. Damn, it's hard for me to make a swing. A little more, and I'm getting it. It turns out that the master was watching his disciple all the time. And now he is sitting under a tree and waiting for new actions. Out of boredom, he began to play with the flower. Taking hold of the last petal, he came out of his thoughts and spoke out loud. Why didn't Jing Lang come out of the water? He's been floundering there too long. 
It's been a few minutes since he got under the water and nothing has been heard from him since. This is very bad. I'm worried. And suddenly something bad happened to him. I don't want him to die. I'll wait a little longer and if anything, I'll go check what's wrong. He is my student after all, so he is under my responsibility. After waiting for some time after these thoughts, the master still went to see what had happened to his disciple. So he flies up to the place where he last saw him, descending to the ground. He examines the entire space around and builds a chain of events. It looks like he slipped on a fish and fell into the water very close to the shore. And yes, it seems like a good thing, since it can be easily saved. But it's a bit ridiculous anyway. And then the master begins to invent a lot of things for himself. Maybe I should save him. He starts talking with a satisfied face. And in trouble, he will treat me with great respect. And that's not a bad idea. As soon as he finished thinking about it, something started happening underwater. The water began to move unnaturally. This is strange. Is the water moving? Suddenly, the water seemed to explode and a lot of water was poisoned by the flow upwards, wetting the master. Now he's all wet, and you can see from his face that it's not very happy. Well, it's good that at least the fish didn't get in his face. At the same moment, an ant's hand abruptly sticks out of the pond, and he tries with all his might to climb up to the shore. And barely, but he's doing it. Damn how tired I am. And he fell exhausted on the already wet ground. After lying like this for a while, he rises clearly, surprised by everything that has just happened. Yes, it was very close. A little more and I would have gone to feed them. But at least I'm alive now. Finally waking up, he realized that someone was standing next to him and raising his head. He saw the master's answering look. What? Why is he just standing here? It's like he left me and flew away. And why he's all wet? Master, what are you doing here? I asked him. The master averted his eyes and looked somewhere into the distance, cursing myself in my mind. I knew it. I should have saved him before that happened, and now I'm all wet. This is definitely a horror, and it sure looks like the owner wanted to save me. How generous of him. It pleases. I knew. I started talking. I knew the teacher was going to save me. Fortunately, I managed it myself before you had time to do it. God, what a good student I have. He's still quite innocent. The master thought and turned away and began to cry with happiness. This guy surprises me more and more often. If you take a good look at his attack, you can understand that it has only moved into the third stage. It's very beautiful and amazing. It's a good sign that we're heading in the right direction. But it's very dangerous to leave him alone like this. Suddenly he won't have time to get out or I won't have time to help. Well, now I understand why your attack was so amazing. Turning around, the master told me. Immediately I decided to explain something to him. I tried to put it all together in one hit. I was trying to transfer my magic into boxing skills. I said it while I was getting up from the cold and wet ground. After examining my hand, I added. I even hurt my hand because of this simple blow. There was a good burn here, and my magic is almost completely gone. The master was a little shocked. Boxing skill. Isn't it a very powerful skill that doesn't use magic? It also uses body power. Such a fusion of forces interested the man, but he did not believe this, although he was ready. Come on, show me your hand. The master asked, holding out his own in response. I did what I was asked to do without question. Having examined the hand with concentration, the master unexpectedly expressed, Your hands are very badly burnt. Honestly, I would even say that the skill that you applied is similar to the flash of a magic dragon. I don't know how to explain it to you more precisely. What? What is he talking about? Is it a skill? A flash of a magical dragon? Is this a skill that is only used by dragons? It's not entirely clear what you're talking about. I will make you happy. He said to me, turning away. If you weren't underwater, your hand wouldn't be there anymore, it would just burn. The man noticed. And I also advise you not to use this skill yet, we can't know what else might happen. And wait until your body is strong enough to withstand this skill. What else could happen? I've only added a little bit of magic to the boxing skill. And this is the first variation, but it's already so strong, it's just amazing. And what happens if I use other variations? Their power can be immeasurable. Damn it, I need a human body. And then I can use other variations. Damn. The master returns to me with a small bottle and a smile on his face. Quickly apply a little of this medicine, the master offers me, holding out his hand with the object. You need a healthy hand. We still have a lot of work ahead of us. Thanking him, I took the bottle from his hands and poured everything that was there into my palm, a little interested in his words. A job. What other job are you talking about? The teacher in response to this smiled mysteriously and took me somewhere. Follow me if you want to know what I'm telling you. Of course, I'm interested, so I followed this person without any questions. And at that moment, a fight was going on on the other side all the time. The lion and the subhuman are finishing off not the very last stone crabs. It looks like their battle was as hard as it was long, and the battle really excited them. The subhuman was in a state of bloodlust, and the lion beast became enraged. In fact, the master led me to the top of the mountain 
where it was possible to see the battle of the lion and the subhuman well. They were all covered in blood until now, dealing with stone crabs. Their battle has already dragged on long enough. Looking at all this, the master only laughs strangely with a satisfied face. And they fight pretty well, but they take a long time, I thought they would have finished by this time. After listening to all his chuckles directed at these two, I asked, Master, why did we come back here? We've already left them, why start again what I ran away from? I said with a doubtful look, something is clearly wrong here, everything is easy. The master answered my questions, we wait until they get tired, then we will hit them. What? It sounds very funny, is he kidding me? Master, you are stronger than all of them combined. Master, you can easily defeat them at the moment when they have a normal condition, so why delay? I have a bad feeling about all this, don't think so much about it. The master answered me with a grimace, I'm still a demigod, this kind of constant struggle will only lower my standards. What is he talking about? Take this as an example, when you were in danger, I just gave you some important advice, but I never really fought for you. Your battle means only your victory, so be sure to remember. Turning to face me, he spoke sternly, when we're in danger, use only your head to solve your problem and don't rely on me. Now I understand what he's talking about. This is the only way I can improve. We decided to keep watching their battle. Their skills are completely different, as is the way of fighting. They are really bloodthirsty. The subhuman tore off the stone crab's claw with one hand. With my bare hands. I'm shocked. This is how strong he must be to do such a thing. But suddenly his whole body was covered with some kind of blackish smoke and stopped creating a red glow. I haven't seen anything like this yet. And the subhuman just mumbled something about it. The skill is over. Time limit. And so that's what it was. It was a skill. I wonder which one, and out of impotence, the monster collapsed. He really just fell, and in response, stone crabs flew at him, which almost completely climbed on him while managing to beat him with their claws. The subhuman is just quietly crying under them from despair. On the other side of the carnage, the lion howled with indignation and fatigue. You're a fool. He was shouting at the subhuman. Why did you just drag me into this story with these crazy stone crabs? At that moment, one of the crabs hit him on the hind leg, after which the lion could not stand it and fell to the ground. Break his legs. Crabs were screaming. Don't let him escape from us. That's how the situation changed in this battle. Those who at first seem to be losers are going to win. Well, I didn't expect this at all. I spoke out loud out of emotion. Exactly. An amazing outcome. And now is the time to go and get their bodies. Finishing the last sentence, he looked at me strangely. No, not that. I don't want to go down. I don't want. This I show with all my appearance. By sight and speech, I start arguing with a man. Let me remind you that with a better look from below, you can see five crabs. And as you remember, I could barely cope with even one of them, so how can I cope with five at once? But then the man abruptly interrupts me. I can feel his leg, don't I think? At this moment, the master kicks me in the back with all his strength, thereby throwing me down to the monsters. Stop complaining like a puny newbie. Your master orders you to come down. So do it. So now I'm lying down with my face pressed into the ground. Damn it. I hate him. Immediately I hear him shouting. Do not be sad. It's also a good chance to practice. Use your brain, I'm here so you have nothing to be afraid of. You're a complete fool, I don't understand. You told me yourself not to rely on you. And now you're saying the exact opposite. It's not fun at all. And such a sharp change of atmosphere pisses me off a little. The owner is too cruel. So I need to figure out how I can safely take what I need. I decided to sit pathetically on one ledge and started talking. Hey crabs, give me the body of these two and I'll invite you to eat fish. What do you think about it? According to the crab, it was not clear whether they did not understand what I said or were surprised by my offer, so they just stared at me for a while. They just turned away and thought I was a fool. Don't pay attention to his idiocy. Let's get on with it. How dare they? You bastards. I shouted, pointing at them with my finger. Who you just called a jerk. I'm very smart compared to you. They are terribly infuriating. So they also ignore me. Well, nothing. Soon they will get their own from me. What would you understand? When I was a human, my IQ was definitely higher than all of you. So I turned around and went into the woods for something interesting. While wailing. You fucking crabs, you'll regret everything. Moving a little further from the clearing with crabs into the forest, I did something. How hard it is to carry it. The weight even leaves very deep footprints in the ground when walking. Finally, I came out of the forest with a huge piece of stone on my shoulders. Right now we're going to have fun. Well, I begin to speak, breaking the awkward silence. I can't fight all of you, but this stone will knock the worst out of you. So one of you is the first. The best battle begins with jokes. The crabs start talking to each other. Let's kill him already. And they're really figuring out who's going to fight with me. You go first one crab shouts. But there is one very intelligent crab from the whole pack. Let's get out of here. It's better not to mess with this guy. Yes, he is absolutely right. Go away and the issue will be resolved. It's good that they thought about it all. 
I thought, putting a huge piece of stone on the ground. And it turns out that you are still a little smart. It's not as bad as I thought. Listen and think once you have a brain. A weak hero is afraid of a strong one. A strong one is afraid of an even stronger one. And an even stronger one is afraid of those who don't care about their lives. And to fight with me, it's better to train for another hundred years or even more. And it turns out the subhuman is still alive. More precisely, it was. He had just uttered his last sentence. Ruhua, you're so beautiful that I'm afraid you'll be taken away after my death. God, even now he's thinking about that monster. But then he finally dies, as does his fellow soldier, Leo. But strange stones come out of them, as well as from other corpses lying nearby crabs. Then I hear the master's voice from behind me. Using these magic crystals, you can create a fairly powerful array. So the master pulls his hand towards these magic crystals and, as it were, binds them. And they are attracted to him. What kind of crystals are these? While they were flying, I looked at them a little. And these are unremarkable stones. A little strength comes from them. But I still don't understand why we need them. Pulling all the fallen stones, the master carefully flew down from the top of the hill. I wish he'd let me down the same way, and not shove me. Well okay. So the stones flew straight into his hands, so he took out without much effort. If you need to ask about these stones, then I seriously don't understand why they are needed, but maybe they have some important meaning. Master, I called out, drawing his attention. And what are these precious stones? The teacher said one thing. These are magic crystals. That's it. I figured it out anyway. Some colorful pebbles. He continued to speak. Magic crystals are used everywhere. In weapons, potions, magic arrays. It is also used as a currency, so it does not depend on cities since its value is higher than that of gold. However, with all the wide application, they are very rare. So it means a rarely seen object. But we got these crystals from magical beasts. So there is a similar crystal in my head, am I right? I said to the master, pointing to my head. Sure, the teachers answered me by pointing their fingers at my head, where I had recently pointed. All animals have this crystal, so you need to be always on guard, as someone may try to kill you to take it away. Then I remembered some moment from the past, where I saw a similar pebble, and it looks like it was a similar crystal. Yeah, it's a little clearer now. Pancake. I thought about it, replaying that moment in my thoughts. I do not know, or rather I am not sure about it. Maybe this stone is too big to be a crystal, since all the stones that I saw in the master's hand were much smaller than that. But the teacher interrupts my thoughts by calling me to him. Jin Lang let's go. Why are you standing in one place? Well, we will solve this issue later. Moreover, I need to go back to the base to get it. I have to show this stone to the master later. The main thing is not to forget about it. I stopped standing just like that and turned around and ran towards the master. Master, wait for me. I shouted his back. As soon as I reached the master, we went together somewhere in the forest in search of a temporary shelter. The sun is completely gone, and the moon returned to the firmament, but unfortunately, without stars. For some reason, they are not visible at all today, although the sky is cloudless, and the temperature of the air from the cozy daytime has become colder. The master and I decided to have a snack on the very fish that attacked me earlier, having fried it on a bonfire. It tastes very good. It's a pity that there are no spices to add salt or pepper to it. But in such conditions, one should be glad that there is food at all. And the master sits and does something. He picks at some magic crystals that we took out with his reduced staff. What for? Good question. When he finished poking around, the master slightly removed the crystal, looking at it at arm's length and then looking quite close to it. He's doing something weird. After biting off a piece of fish, I continued to consider the actions of the teacher. But in the end I decided to ask about what was happening. Master what are you doing? You have been picking at these little stones with your staff for some time, and then you study them so closely. Pulling away from the subjects, the teacher answered my question. I carved the runes. It was at this moment that I carved the rune of becoming or formation. I haven't done this for quite some time, so I lost some of my skills. Therefore, I need to do everything more carefully, checking every stroke. A lot of concentration is needed here. Why is he so critical of military skills? He's trying so hard. It's impossible not to see it. Master why do you talk about yourself like that? You're doing great, you can't even say that you haven't done this for a long time. Your concentration is very striking. I wouldn't be able to sit for a long time and strain my eyes like that. Plus, you need tremendous patience here, expressed his opinion, having chewed the fried fish to the end. The owner was pleased with such praise, so the mood improved a little. Of course I'm good at it. It was my idea to carve runes, so this education was created by me. But I've lost my skills a bit anyway. Now even cutting out a low-level magic array to collect information is difficult. It's a pity that I have a special rune for this. With some annoyance, he said, sending the stones somewhere in the air. It turns out that magic stones with runes carved on them fell to the ground, thereby causing some kind of glow. And after that, in place of this bright burst of magic, a circle with inscriptions was formed, are these runic circles. 
After all this, we walked to him, and the master stopped and uttered a short phrase. Just sit inside it all. Um, okay, I don't think it's anything dangerous. The main thing is not to be afraid. I will tell you everything you need. What we're doing won't do you any harm. The main thing is don't move so now I'll give you a cultivation method. Good master, I just have to agree with everything that the owner tells me. It is he who is monitoring the situation here. Immediately, as soon as I agreed, the master put his palm on my head and gave me something. I felt it. When the glow stopped, he pulled away and uttered a short phrase. Use the spiritual method I gave you. And so that's what it was. Good. I need to concentrate and direct the force in the right direction. But then I decided to open my eyes and I saw something strange. At first I didn't notice it, but now everything is blurring before my eyes because of these strange fireflies. Master what are these multicolored lights? There are so many of them, and they are constantly moving without stopping. This is the color of the elements. Each element has its own. Red is fire. Golden is the wind. Brown earth. Green tree. Blue water. And black is darkness. Everything is logical. And white is light. Let's say magic meditation. It will help to collect magical essence. After the master's explanation about the colors of the elements, I began to immerse my consciousness. I need to clearly direct my strength for cultivation and meditation should help in this. Purification of thoughts will be needed here. For a while, many essences unconsciously flew around me, as if interested, but coming into contact. Later, fireflies with red color flew closer, but disappeared, and then the green ones. But suddenly the green magic crystal shone brightly for some unknown reason. I hope the so-called cultivation has occurred. Together with the crystal, a strange sensation appeared for a second, but only for a while and completely disappeared. So I decided to check it out by opening my eyes and taking a good look around. Suddenly there was some information that needed to be read or something happened to the essences. As I expected, the information was highlighted. In this case, this is information about the level increase. I moved from the fourth level to the sixth. That's what I didn't expect, it really worked. The so-called cultivation worked. The effect of this magic array is very powerful. I was able to raise two levels at once at a time. Getting up from the circle and looking around, I noticed something strange. There was only one crystal with a strange pattern, so I hurried to pick it up. All the stones except for him were completely broken. There was practically nothing left of them. I hope this is how it should be. It's terribly strange. Suddenly the master appears out of nowhere, reacting to the words I said. These crystals were broken specifically for you to make such progress. Without them, you wouldn't have raised as many as two levels at once. This procedure is very useful, so if you have enough resources in the future, then you should do this every day. This is strange. Isn't it just a waste of precious time? You can also raise the levels in another way and it may be more convenient than all this. The master didn't seem to hear me and continued talking. Do you need a training room to test your abilities, which can be used around the clock? In general, it would be fine. Do you really have anything like that? I'm even surprised. Unfortunately, there is no such thing. The master muttered with a thoughtful face. If you think about it well, it's something like a treasure of cultivation. It can store excess magic back in the crystal so that you don't waste it, so to speak. This is the easiest way. So why don't we just create something like this? Don't you think at all that it will take? The initial investment will be comparable to using this formation many times. And that's a lot, believe me, a dozen times. I'm surprised. Just, if we are talking about money, then we can earn the amount we need in a couple of days so you can rest a little during this time. God, the master says with a smile. I didn't expect you to be so smart. I'm very surprised. Of course he's one. I'll do all the work. However, we will then need a combination of several formations. We'll probably be able to use Hu Long Kai as a base. So you'll need to set up a couple of auxiliary arrays. During this dialogue, the master begins to look for something in himself. It looks like this crystal. To do this, we will also need a lot of resources and space. But immediately the master stretches out his hand and shows the crystal in the open palm. Here, in addition to hundreds of first-order crystals, there are ten second-order crystals. I take the crystal with some surprise. Wow, that's actually a lot. Don't worry about it, the master said, turning his back on me. These magic crystals can be purchased for a gold coin, which you can easily earn by the way. So then I need to have time to get everything ready for the right moment, so I'll just leave it here for you. As soon as he finished the sentence, he jumped up and flew somewhere in the direction of the base or about somewhere there. He raised too much dust. And now not only is nothing visible and it's hard to breathe, it looks like he's very busy since he rode away so quickly. But he left me all alone. Is this really a good idea? Something bad always happens to me. He could make this action much calmer. But to hell with it, it's too late to think about it. I need to decide what to do all this time. It's just a so-so idea to hang around here. So we will fight. To start a battle with someone, I need a normal enemy. So we need to arrange a search. That's what we'll do. 
having arranged a check. I did not find anything that might interest me. And this is very sad. I need to find the enemy to start the battle. And there's nothing here. Maybe all the magical evil beasts in this forest sleep at night. I was thinking while walking between the trees and making my way through the bushes. But there was actually one monster standing behind me. And I didn't notice anything at all. Probably for various reasons. Perhaps because it was a dark night. And we are in a forest that has a lot of shadows so I could just not see it. Or maybe I just didn't pay attention. But then he just noticed me, even before I noticed him. As usual, I need to test my skills, so I probably need a defensive type of magical beast, as it will take me some time to defeat it, so this is the best option. Well, as usual, a magical beast stabs me in the back. Nothing in life changes. So I, thinking about something, did not notice the frog flying towards me. But it's a little strange that before the jump it was under the snail shell. This won't happen to me anymore. If earlier someone could get to me through my back without diligence, now a lot has changed. I thought, glaring at the monster behind me, and then I suddenly removed the monster coming at me with a part of my body. Well, I said after making one strong blow in the middle of the head, you really took the initiative on your own and came to your doom. Having found the most necessary thing for me in his head, I abruptly took my hand out of the already lifeless body, and a green crystal appeared in my hand. This is very pleasing. Well, here's the first stone and soon I will have a lot of them. But still, I'm bored with the advantage compared to them. And then suddenly I will also be attacked from behind. It will be somehow uncomfortable. You can jump on trees. Exactly. That's a good enough idea. This makes it easier for me to find animals and it will be safer for me if I encounter, for example, a stronger opponent. So I changed my position in space and jumped onto a tree branch. It all took me at most two seconds. So in the following moments I acted very carefully jumping from one branch to another thus jumping to other trees and moving further and further through the forest. The next moment, suddenly we see a girl running through the forest. This is exactly the girl who supposedly stole the dragon's blood. A whole group of mercenaries is running after her. Someone is armed to the teeth, fully dressed in armor, and someone is completely light, so it's easier to live. Faster they shout, we need to hurry so as not to miss this woman. M. yes, this group of mercenaries did not seem to be going to lag behind her. And I wanted to just get out of here, but apparently it won't work. While the beautiful stranger was thinking about her possibilities and assuming an approximate plan for survival, one of the mercenaries suddenly appeared from the forest from the side and was going to attack me. Damn, and there is no end to these guys. The one who recently jumped out of the treatment shoots something at her, but she safely manages to dodge, thereby avoiding the scar on her body. She needs to knock all these guys off her tail or kill them all. Unfortunately, there are not so many options. Immediately, the girl abruptly turns half a turn, thereby facing the enemy and uses the dragon claw skill. So instead of her hand, a black clawed paw appears and with it she points at the guy chasing her. After you've been running after me for so long, I probably should take you seriously, but I don't want to. Making a dash in his direction and waving her hand, she says, but you should give up the fight with me if you want to live. Thank you but no beautiful beauty, said the guy completely hidden in the clothes. You can't fool me. I won't fall for your sweet talk. So he decided to resist me after all. This is his worst decision in his life, and also his last. What a pity. Although no, I'm not sorry at all. So I decided to attack first. I swung and caught his side with my hand, thereby tearing off several parts from him. The guy was obviously not ready for this. What? How can this be? By the time the girl finished with the guy, a group of mercenaries attacked her. The short one still managed to reach her. Guys surround her. And it looks like the commander shouted. A, and she thought that she would just quietly run away, without any failures, and here is such a setup. What a pity. But what to do is a battle, it means a battle. Guys, I shout, attracting all their attention. Yes, much more attention from them. They stare at me intently, not missing a single slightest movement. I don't want to do this, you understand me. Stop talking, the leader of the group shouted, standing in a stance, preparing for battle in advance. It doesn't make any sense, so just give me what you stole. The guy squinted contemptuously. And of course you're coming with us. She is surprised by such zeal. But what can they do? It's not that they don't agree with her. They're not even going to listen to her, as if deliberately ignoring a very good offer. But I tried. Please don't blame me. I warned you as much as I could. At one point, the girl makes one quick jerk and grabs the sword that the guy put in front of her, thinking that he could defend himself. Taking his black dragon hand by the blade, she easily broke it in half, while managing to bend her arm and plunging one of the parts remaining in her palm into the guy's neck. He was very scared and didn't understand anything at all, so he didn't realize that he was dead. It's very sad. I didn't want to do it, but I had to. I warned them. I'll tell you guys something. There is one rule in battle and it must be remembered, otherwise your fate will be sadly fast. Whoever moves first always wins the battle. Solemnly, with a smile, I tell them before the swing. 
although you don't need this knowledge anymore. The girl made a blow injuring all the people at once. A serious fight started. For them, and for me it was quite a performance. There's more pressure every second. It's amazing. Distracted by the main group, consisting of knights and archers and only occasionally magicians, I missed something someone might be behind me. I heard the chanting of spells, turning around. I saw a wizard, clearly not an entry level. Damn, I need to get to her before she finishes her spell. Spirits responsible for the magic of water. She keeps whispering the spell. Damn, now a guy completely dressed in armor is preventing me from getting to her, who confidently grabbed my leg, clearly not going to let me go. He decided to make himself a victim. Damn, this guy is too annoying. Get away from me. How infuriating. Who I told. Get away from me. Did you hear me badly? Instead of solving the issue with the magician, I'm dealing with you now. The girl continues to recite the spell. You are welcome. Give me the strength to calm my anger and destroy the wicked in front of you. Damn, I didn't have time. The girl raises her staff to the sky and shouts out the last words. An ice storm. Looks like she's not as strong as I thought. A huge cloud of dust rose from this spell. It will help me make a surprise attack. Damn, they're all tired. She even ruined all my clothes. This is my favorite kit. The girl began to rejoice at my death, but when she saw my face through the fog and was horrified, her face took on a funny expression, completely filled with amazement. Ice Storm is the most powerful magic in the third level. She started whispering to herself, and she hit you right in the forehead directly, but you're still alive and without even one injury. Who are you? You're a dumb girl. I jerked up to her, grabbing her by the throat with a dragon hand. It wasn't very noble. I said, turning around and looking at the man who was holding my leg. But now there was only a mess left of him. Banya's comrades were still alive, but you cast the spell without hesitation. You have to pay for this. So I started slowly squeezing her throat, gradually cutting off her oxygen. But she was still able to speak. You are welcome. She asked me for help. I was wrong. I am aware of this. It's all empty talk. How infuriating it is. The girl squeezes her opponent's throat a little harder, and she begins to choke. And if I squeeze a little more and easily break her neck, but I won't do that. The girl let go of her even before she suffocated, relented, so to speak. You'd better go and talk to your comrades. I spoke to her in a tired voice. I'm not up to her right now. We need to leave quickly. A little away from the battle, the girl noticed an open wound in the abdomen. This is very bad, very bad. The blood began to spread more and more over the tissue, trying to stop the blood. I started to hold the wound with my hand, but in this case it won't work because the wound is much bigger than I thought. It's all because of communicating with some people that I've become like this. Damn, it hurts so much. I lost a lot of blood and overexerted myself, even too much. My eyes are closing. I can't keep them open. Damn, so the girl fell to the ground, completely exhausted. We are transported back to our ant. A lone lizard, similar to a monitor lizard, skillfully hides in the bushes, watching its prey, which looks like a white rabbit. Probably this is it, just a beast. Having caught its delicious prey at one point, the lizard jerks the hair, almost completely sticking out its tongue from the meat that comes to life. After killing the rabbit beast, the lizard begins to slowly eat it. But noticing some strange swarming stopped. In fact, I was looking at it all, waiting for the right moment to attack. And it looks like he felt it. Then I found the perfect moment to attack. The lizard turned away, exposing its back to me. And I decided not to delay. Jumping down from a tree and falling like a stone on a lizard. I hit her neck with all my strength with my foot. And he passes out. After searching a little more, I finally got a magic crystal out of the head of this huge lizard. Yeah, I sighed loudly out loud. I came across a crystal of the first order again. I need something higher. Then you need to look for stronger enemies. While I was thinking about where to look for stronger enemies, I was swimming in my thoughts. But then I smelled a strange smell and magic, turning in the direction from which this power comes. I saw a huge amount of smoke. I immediately had questions about where and why. Why is there smoke coming from that part of the forest? And I decided to check it out. And suddenly there is a fire then there will be no forest. And if it's something serious, then maybe I can get magic crystals, since people usually don't come here. So I headed in that direction, trying to find the epicenter of all the problems. He spent relatively little time on the whole journey. He had to leave the forest and head to the center through a small clearing. That's how I got to all of this. This must be the place, I said, peeking out from behind the bushes. And I saw something terrifying. Lots of people's bodies. Too much. All beaten, bathed in blood. In the middle lies a knight. All dressed in iron armor, all terribly beaten and dented. And there is some kind of smoke coming out of it, which I saw from afar. And almost all of them have magic ice crystals sticking out, so that's where the magic comes from. After watching the clearing, I realized that everyone lying here was dead, so I decided to go out and look around more carefully. Who cut them up like that? What kind of beast were they fighting? I passed several corpses, having examined them all well. 
But then I saw that there was some kind of bag lying near one of the knights. It looks very suspicious. He's just lying there. Well, it's always necessary to check. So I bent down and stretched out my hand towards this bag. I calmly picked it up. I would not say that it is too light, since it definitely has a weight and is quite good. I decided to open it, and I was very surprised to find it. There are a huge number of magic crystals, and at the same time different levels. I'm completely amazed. It was necessary for me to get there and find this back. There are so many of them here, I don't even know how many of them there are. I quickly scanned the area again and didn't notice anyone alive. Hell, everyone's dead, so I don't know who to return it to, and I don't think anyone might need it. But after a little thought, I realized and said to myself, I do not know if there are other people here, but if I find someone alive who will be the owner of these crystals, then I will return them to him. At this moment, behind him, the same girl who had a terrible wound on her stomach began to get up from the ground. Then she noticed something moving, immediately realizing that it was a living object, even like someone similar to a person, only with a tail. Barely waking up again, she opened her eyes, rising on her elbows. Trying not to disturb the deep wound on her stomach, the girl saw who was sitting in front of her. She realized that it was his acquaintance, Lord Dragon Ant. But what is he doing here? This is the territory of the forest with evil monsters, especially in this clearing, strewn with corpses. The ant did not notice the swarming from behind, because during the examination of the corpses on some important items, he was talking to himself, trying to pass his time like that. After I take out the things I have to bury them, this is accurate and mandatory. Still, it's not polite to just mock the bodies, so I'll bring them peace. In time for this, the girl found the strength to stand on her feet, but not completely standing on them. It's hard to keep your balance when you've lost so much blood. So I, slowly, talking to myself, alternately checked all the bodies lying in this clearing. A long search is very difficult, so you have to carry yourself away with something. I should always check everything, in case I find something very important. Searching the next body of a knight in armor, I found a bra on him. What? Why does he need a woman's bra? You're a very strange man, I said, looking in his direction, as if waiting for an answer from the dead body. Suddenly I heard something strange behind my back. It was as if someone had fallen to the ground with all his strength. I was even scared with all my might. I was not ready for this as much as possible, so we must immediately take the victim's position. I need to immediately bow down and beg for forgiveness. It may not save my life, but it may surprise my enemy a little. Brother or sister, please forgive me. I didn't mean anything by robbing your colleagues. I'm just surviving as best I can. Understand me. I shouted, falling on my knees on the hard ground and starting to bow. But something is wrong. Absolutely nothing is hurt. Is this person a ghost? I'm afraid to open my eyes. Suddenly they'll kill me right away. But when I decided to open my eyes, I noticed familiar clothes and facial features. Oh, this is that girl. More precisely, this is a thief being chased by the director. What is she doing here? Especially with all these torn clothes and completely unconscious. Was she the one who fought with all these people? This is another question. Nothing is clear, and it probably won't work to ask her, since she is completely unconscious. At this moment we see a completely different clearing. I, as I promised myself, I'm going to bury all these people, as befits. So I found the right place and at the same time moved the girl to the tree. Taking a good sword from one of the corpses, I started digging holes for them. Of course, it's not very convenient to do this with a sword, but this is the best option for all of them. I can't dig everything with my hand. At some point I had to go down into the dug hole and keep digging there. Having dug a hole about 2 meters deep, I stopped. That's enough. With such thoughts, I slowly climbed to the surface. Why is it so difficult just a horror? Is this really the life of those who dig graves and take care of the wounded? At the end of the phrase, looking at the girl with a glance, it's very tiring. But what to do with this wounded girl? But here's the question. Immediately I took a thoughtful pose, digging into my thoughts. Why am I worried about her? In fact, if I think about it carefully, I could just pick up the things she stole while she was unconscious. So at the same time, my goal has been achieved. I have collected a large number of magic crystals, and I can just leave after burying the bodies, leaving her alone. I need to search her. Only here's the problem. Where exactly to start? Well, I don't even know. I'm a little embarrassed by the fact that her clothes are very thin and reveal some revealing places. These collarbones are cut out. And cute knees. I am very embarrassed. I do not know how to behave in such situations, but I need to search her. And like an idiot, I stand and am confused, not knowing where to start. Well, I'm not going to paw her, but I'll check for the presence of any things. Damn, I need to hold on. I must not fall from the seduction of my own thoughts. We need to hold on and not give up. Well, I won't do anything wrong and plus she's unconscious. I do not know what to do. I am overwhelmed with all sorts of thoughts, both completely bad and not so bad. It's like an angel and a demon are sitting on my shoulders and whispering something in my ears. I can't stand it anymore. 
We need to decide something already. Otherwise I'm just standing over her. So I decided to search her. Just search it. I'm just looking for the things she stole. I don't have any bad thoughts at all. At all. I say out loud. Trying to at least convince myself of the opposite. But you can see from my face that I'm not very good at it. Here I try to reach with my shaking hand to the place where the stolen can lie. That's what I told myself. In fact, I was just reaching for her bust. I can't do anything about it. My hand moves by itself. Not having time to do what I wanted or didn't want. It's impossible not to get confused. And then I heard some kind of whispering. Barely audible and distinguishable. She was whispering the same thing. Dragon ant. Dragon ant. And I jumped up from fright. Shit. Damn. She doesn't wake up, does she? I didn't do anything at all. But I was already scared. Quickly turning around. I pretended that I had not done anything near her body recently. Awkwardly whistling some melody. After waiting some more time. I realized that she didn't seem to be going to wake up and it was just a sleepy delirium. She just decided to suddenly talk in her sleep, and I almost had a heart attack. After watching her condition a little more, I didn't notice any changes. Her face also did not express any emotions. She doesn't move at all so she just stayed down the same way she was lying before. Yeah, it looks like you're just talking in your dreams. After all, I said it out loud, and I was already wildly worried. What are you doing? In fact, I assume that if she wakes up, she will definitely kill me. Well, at least I'm sure of it. Uh, yes, to hell with these worries. If she wakes up and turns out to be stronger than me, then she can easily kill me and I won't be able to stop her. It's been a long time. Very much so. I managed to dig more and more graves. And at the same time I made a small rest stop to rest. During this time I checked the wound that I healed on the girl's stomach. And then I went to dig up the bodies again and put the bodies of the murdered people there. During this time, the girl slept a little, having managed to replenish some of her strength. Therefore, he began to slowly come to his senses, and suddenly she woke up abruptly, opening her eyes wide. Her face stretched out very much, as if she was afraid of something. She must have dreamed something not very good. She screamed and bent down a little, saying my name, the Lord of the Dragon Ant. Immediately, due to the fact that she jerked out of sleep, she accidentally strained her stomach. But she was surprised, because she was ready to feel a lot of pain, but this did not happen. After checking her torso well, she realized that her wound had healed. Did the deep wound heal so quickly? It's just unbelievable. This is simply impossible just like that. Therefore, it becomes clear that she was cured. And only he could do that. This ant. This. Strange. And very nice of him. I didn't even think he was capable of such a thing. Recovering from this amazing incident, I hurriedly looked around in search of an ant. And I found an unusual picture. Huge graves have been dug in the middle of the clearing. And in several of them the bodies of people are already lying. It really struck her. It looks like some benevolent adventurer stumbled upon these bodies and decided to dig graves for them. Looks like he's going to bury them. The girl decided to get up. If there is no wound, then she will be able to stand on her feet quite tolerably. Once again, after looking around more carefully, she confirmed her guesses. There's no one here. It looks like I just dreamed that I saw the Lord Dragon Ant. That's all I was thinking about while I was trying to find a balance. But suddenly she saw something. Something incredible. What is it? I saw the Ant Dragon Lord. Oh my god, I was very surprised. He carefully carried the body of the dead knight in the direction where the graves were. Did he really bury them while I was unconscious? I didn't expect this at all. This is Lord Dragon Ant. I shouted, covering my face with my palm. My face changed from surprise. Eyebrows ridiculously raised and eyes widened to an impossible size. I thought about it. How many years has it been since the Dragon Ant was born? Probably more than a hundred, if not more. And due to the revival of the Dragon Ant clan, his bloodline was revived. It's just amazing. Then I heard a familiar girlish voice from behind me. This very young knight seems to belong to the first or second category. It surprised me. It turns out that she was already awake. And I didn't even notice it while I was doing my business. After talking a little, I still decided to put this corpse where I was going to carry it. So I asked her to wait or she could safely come with me. She said that she would be next to me and her appearance showed that she was absolutely not going to leave me. Very strange. Having reached the pit carefully, I calmly laid the body down. And I finally delivered everything. God, I'm tired. I said, looking at my work done. But after thinking a little, I bitterly exhaled from frustration. In the end, I couldn't find the dragon's blood. It's a little sad. Well, it shows that she is friendly towards me. So I'm not afraid that she will kill me. So I can basically continue the search. My face suddenly took on a dreamy look. But this pair of big breasts is very suspicious. So I have to focus my research on them. This simply cannot be ignored. And then they say yes to me. Good. Good. Be sure to do research. I can't wait. But I didn't really understand it. Full realization didn't come to me. But this is no good. No one should. No, I really don't mind. Really, right for real. And then I realized what had just happened. Yes, I really want it. 
She really started moving towards me, almost touching me with her bust. I don't believe she seriously allowed me to do this, but it's too late to refuse so I can offend her. So in a panic, I agreed. God, I didn't think so. She's real. God forgive me. You're awake. I said, turning to face her. What should I do? Then I heard a strange question. Why aren't you doing anything? Didn't you want to poke dragon blood here? At the end of the sentence, the girl said pointing to her bust. I can't do that. Immediately I started waving my hands away. There's no need for that. I was just kidding. But then I was suddenly grabbed and shoved into something soft. Oh my god. 